Welcome everybody, my name is John Kepalukas, also known as Fallout, and I'll be your host for the first ever Asus PC DIY Day. I'm a professional gamer, well, former professional gamer, esports commentator and content creator, honored and privileged to be hosting today and bringing you along for the action. It's gonna be a great day. Thank you for joining us in this celebration of 31 years of PC building with Asus. Since launching the first Asus motherboard in 1989 called the ISA 386C, used in IBM and ALR PCs, Asus has shipped over half a billion motherboards globally. That's enough to circle the globe four times over, which is actually insane. Throughout the decades, Asus has been at the pinnacle of innovation, introducing so many firsts to the PC DIY industry thanks to a focus on design and innovation. Today, Asus is leading ecosystem of PC DIY components, from motherboards and graphics cards to monitors, peripherals, and much more are all built to deliver high performance, dependable operation and user-friendly experiences, all the way from the hardware itself to the software that controls it. If you've been paying attention to the scene, you know that Asus has launched some awesome products recently. Their latest motherboards like the B550, Z490, and X570 series come with innovative AI cooling and overclocking features. They've even broken several world records in overclocking performance with the Z490 ROG Maximus 12 Apex motherboard. We've also seen the launch of the all new ROG and Tough gaming graphics cards, most recently including the latest AMD Radeon 6000 series, as well as NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series. No build is complete without a lightning display and of course a router. One of ASUS's latest monitors, the ROG Swift PG259QN, has an up to 360 hertz refresh, which is actually insane. And the new ASUS RTAX86U router offers blazingly fast Wi-Fi 6 connections to make gaming smoother than ever. And any hardcore PC DIY enthusiasts and experienced builders looking for cutting edge technology need not look further. ASUS has won thousands of prestigious awards in this exact category in 2019 alone, an average of 11 awards per day, which is crazy to me, and continues to be an innovator in the PC DIY industry and the PC industry as a whole. On that note, the PC DIY industry in general has seen so much growth over the last year. While the world adjusts to the reality of working from home and learning from home in 2020, we've witnessed an 89% growth in the PC DIY industry as people are adjusting to learning, being productive, working, and of course, gaming from home. Asus has also been inspired by this resurgence in PC DIY culture, and that's why they've invested so much in all sorts of things, infrastructure really, to provide and everyone with the tools they need to build their next PC. Building a PC is as easy as one, two, three, so make sure to visit Asus's website to get some tips and tricks and learn how you can build your next PC. We also might have some Easter eggs for you, maybe some giveaways, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Go check it out, some awesome things to come if you wanna go check out Asus's website and learn a little bit more about building your own PC. I know, I, listen, I'm not gonna lie. I know I personally would love some Asus hidden Easter eggs, giveaways, whatever it might be, I'm excited. On to our agenda for PC DIY Day. Kicking off today's celebration, we've got content from your favorite builders like Mods by Ben, Jay-Z Two Cents, Juan Jose Guerrero, also known as JJ from Asus, you might know him that way, and of course, the editorial team from PC Gamer. Later today, we're also gonna be hosting the Beat the Clock Challenge, which is something I'm personally really, really excited about. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We've put together an incredible challenge where we're gonna have a variety of competitors, Noisy Butters, Aru, Alan Owens, and Rowdy Rogan, who are gonna show you fundamental steps in building a PC with a three-part challenge and a timed build challenge from some content creators that some of which have never built a PC before. It's gonna be awesome. 
Asus really built this challenge to show how easy it is for novice builders, really people that have not built PCs, to actually do it. Do it yourself. Build a PC. So it's going to be really cool to see how they do it. Maybe they'll struggle along the way a little bit, but I think they're going to get through. I'm excited to see how that all shakes out. Let's not forget about the finals of the Asus Elite Games, where 20 competitors will be competing in a Minecraft build challenge for an opportunity to secure the ultimate grand prize and, of course, bragging rights. We have so much more planned today, so make sure to stay tuned to, of course, all social channels to really learn more about building a PC. You're going to learn a lot throughout the day, and also maybe you'll win some prizes along the way. Ultimately, you're going to learn some tips about building your own PC with three easy steps. Prep, build, and play. That's the most fun part, the playing part. You're not that building a PC isn't fun, but I think you get it. And make sure you join the PC DIY Facebook group to stay connected with Asus's latest PC DIY developments, products, and all, all sorts of upcoming events. Really cool things happening in our Facebook group. As a community, especially right now, we all got to find creative ways to stick together. And I think gaming has been a multi-generational favorite. I can personally attest. My brother, a completely different generation than me, a lot older than me, my cousin, a couple years older than me. I normally would see them six to eight times in a year. Haven't seen them all year. Gaming has personally kept us so close and has helped us stay in touch in these tough times. On top of that, of course, I'm very blessed to be an eSports shoutcaster. Well, now I can do it from home. I, you know, any Apex Legends, Fortnite broadcast, Halo, Gears of War. I love the fact that I can do those from home. And, you know, before I had to travel around the world, which is just really difficult to do, you know, every week. So really, really blessed. And at the end of the day, there's some things to be positive about. And hey, we got some time to play more video games in 2020. I can't complain about that. Around the world, people are making dates to play video games online, to create content online, and it's fostering the sense of community around the world, which is amazing. You know, I just shared my personal story, but on top of that, I know you all have your own stories as well. So you know, it's great that gaming is the great equalizer, and it's great that gaming has kept us close together, kept us connected during some pretty tough times this year. And by the way, this is why Asus PC DIY Day doesn't just end today. It's going to be an ongoing thing, a consistent thing, and we're going to continue to support the community, novice builders, expert builders, and helping you build your next PC because, yeah, gaming's not going anywhere. So don't worry. We at Asus, we got your back. We also want to take some time to share some appreciation for our supporting partners and, of course, the community. Thank you so much for your dedication and support of Asus PC DIY Day over the years. PC DIY is a personal passion for so many of us at Asus. And of course, we're proud to continue to develop and share the latest designs and innovations with you. We appreciate you from the bottom of our hearts and the opportunity to work alongside you to, to build some great products for you and with you. We appreciate the feedback along the way. With that, we're officially ready to kick off our show. So many great things planned. Join in on the conversation all day long by using hashtag Asus PC DIY. Make sure to tweet at me at Fallout with two T's. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And of course, at our content creators throughout the day at Asus. R-O-G-N-A on Twitter. And of course, keep up with all things social. For me, the best thing about DIY PC building is having the freedom to build exactly what you need at a price that you can afford. The first server that we edited our videos off of wasn't actually a server at all. It was a basic tower PC made of a mishmash of hand-me-down components, including a fractal design case, LSI RAID card, and of course, an ASUS ROG gaming motherboard. I didn't need, or at least I couldn't afford, fancy server features like redundant power supplies, but I still needed something reliable, and it served us very well, pun intended of course, until our budget expanded. Since then, nearly every Linus Tech Tips video you've ever watched has been edited on an ASUS motherboard, and I've got no plans to change that. Guys, building a PC is as easy as one, two, and three. It's true. It's one of the most fulfilling things you could do in your life. From the moment the CPU sits on the socket to when you first press the power button, it is magical to say the least. You have created something that brings happiness and joy. Okay, so remember when I made that video on my SIM rig and I shut off the PC that I was using? Well, a bunch of you kind of gave me a hard time for not already having a thread ripper. And it kind of got me thinking, you're right, a $20,000 Intel rig from Main Gear in 2020 just isn't gonna cut it. So today, I'm gonna build my first ever computer. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? $30,000 worth of parts, I'm even gonna make my own custom water loop with these things. <laughs> Custom loops out of pet G. <laughs> That's right, my pet's a G. So before I got started, don't worry, I did a bunch of research and I made sure I watched the best videos on YouTube to learn from all the pros. Yeah, this ain't gonna work. All right. 
way. Especially the famous one done by The Verge. And I have learned so much. Actually, side note, the commentary that was done on that video is absolutely entertaining. Definitely worth a watch. So, to start the build, ASUS was kind enough to send over this ROG Strix Helios White Limited Edition case. Now, personally, I'm excited about this case because I think it actually looks super sleek. The brushed, shiny aluminum, whatever this stuff is, it looks way better than an all black box, in my opinion. Which, by the way, do you see that tag? It's like a tag you find on clothing. I also happen to like the fact that it kind of matches my dogs. Dogs, that's right. <laughs> because Andy got a sister. Meet Abby. This is Andy's little sister. So you're gonna get a chance to see Abby in some future videos too. But again, like I was saying, the reason why I like this case so much is because their dog hair is not gonna show up as much. I'm still gonna have to blow it out with a leaf blower every once in a while, but it won't be nearly as bad as that main gear rig. Oh, and don't forget the giveaway. You still have time to enter. The link is down below, so definitely go check it out. Also, when I stream my race this week, I will say another code word for you to enter some additional entries. So make sure you tune in. So for the motherboard, I'm using the ASUS Zenith 2 Extreme Alpha. So when I got this box, I thought, wait a second. They must have put in some extra parts because, woo, I could do some bicep curls with this thing. But that was not the case. This motherboard is so beefy, and I love the way it looks. So for the brain of this PC, I had to satisfy all you AMD fanboys. So I am using the top of the line 3990X Threadripper CPU. 64 cores of processing power to run? Minesweeper! Just kidding. Actually, even the most demanding sim racing games won't even utilize 64 cores, but like I said, we are going all out. So technically, I'm building the most powerful sim rig PC in the world, assuming it works, of course. And to keep this CPU nice and cool, I'm gonna be using the Quantum Momentum made specifically for this motherboard from EK Waterblock. This Waterblock even replaces the MOSFET fans up top. This is gonna look real nice. And because of all the silver on the motherboard, the case, some of the water cooling parts, I decided to go with the Trident Z Royal Ram. I know, I know, this has been very overused in a lot of PC builds this year, but this is new to me and I decided to go with 256 gigabytes. And honestly, I think it's quite gorgeous. When I first opened this box, I thought, woo, are those real diamonds? until I got a little closer and realized, nope, just plastic crystal motif. Either way, it's gonna look real good in that case. Now, because I'm gonna be using this as my sim racing and streaming rig, I'm using two eight terabyte Gen 3 M.2 SSDs booting in the DIM.2 slot. And amazingly, this TRX40 motherboard from ASUS has three additional M.2 slots. I'm gonna fill those slots with two terabyte Gen 4 M.2 SSDs. So this is kind of crazy. Before I even install any other hard drives to this motherboard, there's already 22 terabytes of storage. Anyway, enough with that. Let's just get to the build.
fun. What do you think? You can you can be honest. Comment down below. But I happen to love it. It just totally makes me smile. Do you see all the colors? I mean, how could you not smile looking at this thing? I've always been a Mac girl, and I currently edit on Final Cut Pro. But after building this, I realized how fun it actually is to customize your computer exactly how you want it. So maybe I should learn to edit on Adobe Premiere. We'll have to see. But nonetheless, this computer makes me super happy and I can't wait to use it while I'm sim racing. So I noticed ASUS created this LED design on the front glass panel. And I really wanted to preserve that, so I left the ROG fans that were attached to the white bracket and created a push-pull system by sandwiching a 420 millimeter radiator from EK and attached the 140 millimeter QL fans from Corsair. So without that system, you wouldn't really be able to appreciate this LED design. And the top fans, 120 millimeter on a 240 millimeter radiator. A 360 millimeter radiator did fit up top, but it almost left me no room for tubing, so that's why I went with the smaller one. I also managed to fit a 140 millimeter fan in the back. So airflow wise, the front is pull in, the top and back are push out. So does that make sense? I hope so. And if I am totally wrong, please, can you let me know? Leave a comment down below. The last thing I want to do is start a house fire. I need to protect my little my little nuggets. Now the inside is RGB galore. Although I actually have additional RGB strips. So, you know, maybe if you want to get a little crazy one night, we can install these too. We'll see. Maybe check out the stream and, and I'll show you if I upgrade it. Actually, I was probably the most nervous when taking apart the Titan RTXs because I think I had that feeling of, all right, I've reached the point of no return. Especially when it came to mounting the EK water block, I did not want to mess that up. After looking back, probably that wasn't the hardest part. The hardest part was actually just separating the Titan at the beginning. After you take off a zillion screws, that thing is so sturdy. I thought I was gonna snap it in half when I was trying to separate it. I think it actually took me almost 30 minutes. But once I got it apart, you know, and gave myself a pep talk, it was pretty smooth sailing. So don't let that part intimidate you. So overall, it took me about a whole day to do the motherboard, CPU, the two graphics cards. So next time around, when I build my second computer, I anticipate this to go much faster. That is unless I'm filming with 500 cameras, because that, that slows it down a tad. So spec-wise, you already know it's got the 3990X Threadripper, and it's fantastic. The only thing that is not is the smell of this box. I have no idea what the heck is in here, but it, oof, it does not smell good. Wow. Along with those beautiful rock candies. That's right, the Trident Z Royale RAM from G-Skill. 256 gigabytes at 3200 megahertz. They just look delicious. I want to take a bite out of them. I don't know if it's because maybe I'm a little overtired and famished because I've, you know, maybe been working a little bit longer than I thought on this, but they are definitely one of my favorite pieces in this computer. And all of the water cooling parts are EK along with the 16 millimeter PET G tubing. Now when it comes to fitting, some are EK, some are other brands, but I really feel like there needs to be more design options out there, especially when it comes to making your own custom loops. I mean, you can really go crazy. Now, I was definitely a little bit more conservative. I had some grandiose ideas in my mind, much harder to execute. Now when I look at some pre-made builds like my main gear rig, I can see why most of the tubing is straight and the fittings are used around the bends, which is much easier. I personally would rather have more tubing, less fittings, and I would love to make some crazy loop-de-loop. -loop. I'm just not there yet. It's a whole different skill set, but I have confidence I can get there. And if anyone watching can do that kind of stuff and you want to work together and make a pretty sick video, well, let's do it. Let me know. Contact me. Now, because I had two low points in the radiator, I made two drains, one here and one there. So here's how the loop works. It leaves the pump, goes to the radiator, shoots to the CPU, leaves the CPU water block, then up to the top radiator, and then down to the graphics cards. And voila, you got a water-cooled system. And I think everyone should consider building their own PC because the money you save, you can use that towards better components. And don't be intimidated by the process, even if something takes a little bit longer than you thought, because at the end, when you flick on that switch and everything lights up, whoo, 
Woo! It feels incredible. And maybe I was just over the moon ecstatic because I was on a time constraint and I was filming and trying to get it all done quick. But honestly, to do this on the side, I think would be very therapeutic, especially bending those tubes. I love bending tubes. You should try it. You really should try it. Now, you don't have to use clear tubes. You can use metal tubes, whatever you want. But I like seeing purple. It makes me quite happy. And I'll see you next time. Bye. My name is Zach. I'm super excited to share with you guys the first social giveaway tips and tricks. And you guys have a chance to win a $1,500 Easy Store gift card. Yes, $1,500 Easy Store gift card. You heard me right here. You get a chance to get some PC parts and, you know, make your PC a little bit better, right? Uh, so, with that being said, all you have to do is go over to the Easy Use landing page, PC DIY landing page. And there you will find the social giveaway call out. All you have to do is click that button, head over to social media, share with us your best tips and tricks for PC DIY building that you know of, and use the hashtag Asus PC DIY, tag an Asus account, and that's really all you need to do. It could be a video, it could be an image, uh, it could be a long paragraph. It's pretty simple, if, if you ask me myself. Uh, got some examples for you, some examples of some entries that have you know, come through already. The Smiling Fox says, PC DIY pro tip, do not put on the case panel while PC is on. Trust me when I say this, your finger is closer to the fans than you think, and that is true. Uh, and then Tetra says, please kids, please, please, please remember to peel off the peel before using a sticker on your CPU cooler, please. So, some good tips, some good tricks. Let me hear your guys' tips and tricks as well. Again, just head over to the landing page, and I look forward to seeing what you guys have next. So everybody, welcome back to the first ever Asus PC DIY day. That's right, you gotta do it yourself. You gotta build your PCs yourself, my friends. And guess what? Today, we're about to begin our Beat the Clock Challenge, where four talented and diverse PC builders, also known as influencers in the gaming world, are gonna be building a PC from scratch. However, it's a race. Who's gonna finish first? We'll find out. Here's how the game's gonna work. Asus has sent some components and parts to each influencer to have them participate in three challenges. The first challenge is you gotta install the motherboard. The second challenge, you gotta install the cooler. And the third challenge, you gotta install the GPU. First one to finish is gonna win. They'll be your champion of the inaugural Asus do-it-yourself PC build challenge. Today, I am so incredibly excited to be joined by the one and only the myth you may have heard of him if you haven't heard of him you're crazy because he's awesome rowdy rogan the youngest question mark influencer in gaming i think it might be the case he's joined alongside his dad rogan how you doing today man good good that's awesome and harry how you doing i'm doing great how about you doing fantastic man and you know while you might only be in elementary school rogan i know you've already graduated the big leagues in competitive esports i know uh, i don't like going back to school well I like being on Zoom. You're, you're enjoying, like, you're enjoying the whole COVID thing, playing video games, getting to do this whole influencer thing. How are you liking that? Good. I just try and play Cold War Zombies because I want to beat my high school. It's like 70, like, nine or 79? something. 79? That's amazing. <laughs> and of course, joining us today, we got none other than the Shorty Award winner, the Call of Duty Phenomena. We got the one and only, the Phenomenal. The amazing Noisy Butters. Pleasure hey. to have you joining me. How are you doing today? Man, you are gassing me up. Thank you. I appreciate that. You Thank you. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You're a big deal. Just hit one mil on YouTube. You know, you're just no big deal. Brush your shoulders off real quick. You're crushing it. It's great to have you joining us. Thanks so much for taking Thank the you. time. Uh, you're, you obviously killed in Call of Duty. You're a member of the Atlanta phase. I think at this point, what don't you do? And you, <laughs> and you're, you you graduated with a, with a major in IT. So you're about to crush this, yeah. I feel like. I wouldn't say crush it. I'm here to have fun. I'm here to build a PC. That's my well, goal. <laughs> right. And she's Miss Humble on top of that. Like what, again, what doesn't she do? Awesome stuff. I, I like the humility. I respect it. All right. I want to take a moment to introduce our competitor, Aru, a content creator across Twitch and my favorite TikTok. Her TikTok videos are hilarious. Any esports ones have a special place in my heart. Shout out to Aru. She, of course, is going to be joining us. We're very blessed and thankful to have her in her time. 
Hi, my name is Aru. I have never built a PC before. I've installed a graphics card, but even that was just a little bit difficult for me. So this may be a disaster, it may not be. I'm excited to start building though, and I want to see how much I can get done here. So, yes. <laughs> I got the one and only, the legendary Alan Owens. You might know him from YouTube. You might know him from streaming. You might know him from TikTok. You name it. This guy's absolutely everywhere. He's been crushing it. He's a member of Luminosity Gaming. He plays a variety of games, but is uh, obviously known for his FPS skill. Everything, man. You do it all. What, what don't you oh. do, bro? Build PCs. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing he doesn't do. That's the one right. thing I don't do. I love it. Hey, that's the fun in all this. Yeah, I mean... That's the fun in all this. We are, honestly, that's the coolest thing is realizing that anyone can build a PC. I mean, even Alan Owens, even John Kefalukas. I, literally, I said before this show started, my one and only goal is just to make it through the build. That's literally <laughs> my only goal. I just, I want to make sure the parts actually get in and I actually survive. I put out that's an funny. Instagram post saying that I'm probably going to my funeral because I'm not making this. That's hilarious. Thanks for the intro. Glad you guys are doing great. We're here for a purpose, Rogan. Have you ever built a PC before? Or is this your first time? Uh, this is my first time, actually. No way. Are you excited? Are you nervous at all? I know this. I want to win, though. <laughs> I like that. He's competitive. All right, we're going to get the clock started here, and we're going to get started with challenge number one, installing the motherboard. You already have it in front of you, in your hands. Rogan, are you ready to win this competition? Yes. Cool. Let's get to it, then. Let's get started with challenge number one. All right, Noisy Butters, Rowdy Rogan, Alan Owens, and Aru. Are you ready? Let's start round one. Ready, set, go. All right, let's do this. Um, so I guess I have to start taking this off. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it, okay? I'm not gonna be <laughs> nervous. I'm just gonna. You seem like you're, you're fantastic. You seem like um... you're a PC building pro. Well, that's very kind of you to say, but that's not the case here. Here with this. There we go. It does. Okay. When you take this off, put it to the side in a safe place. Nice. Yep. Normally, I put that further behind me, but I'm kind of tethered to my microphone right now, so I can't go too far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sense. Next up, we're going to do motherboard. We're going to take out the motherboard. I think, yeah. Let me move this over a little bit. You're, you're, you're crushing it, but you're only like five seconds in, but you're crushing it. You put you put the do-it-yourself in Asus PC do-it-yourself day. So you built this entire lab yourself behind you? Uh, my dad did a lot of it. He uh, soundproofed the walls. He what? built, um, oh, I know, it's crazy. My dad's just, he's an expert at everything. He can do anything at all. Runs in the family. <laughs> I guess so. We have to like. So we got to get this put inside the PC, correct? So. Uh, we have to get these, look it, so there's one, two, three, four, five, there's six holes right. that we're gonna have to put the bolts. I like the, uh, the white look. All right, what are you looking for now, screws? Oh, where'd I put my screwdriver? Oh, you're just a wreck right now. You're not doing it, it could be worse. Take your time. And for those that are maybe just watching, just tuning in, this is the right. Asus PC DIY day, that's right. Do I have to unscrew these, right? Yeah, I have to unscrew these. Okay, you read the instructions? Nope, I'm not reading anything. You're nuts. <laughs> no, just going with the flow. Going with the flow, all right. Well, what's your bow? Absolutely no idea what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take out the motherboard right now. Um, I, I'm assuming you have to start with a motherboard because of the name. It just seems like... <laughs> this is how you're building your PC based on naming conventions? Yes. <laughs> it's like saying, I assume Dave Matthews Band is a band because of the name, which actually is logical. So continue, you're doing great. What about, um, I put like this, like, the, like the all plugs behind. Here, so you, you see can... this one right here? Uh-huh. This screw? Mm-hmm. Can you take that out? Yep. Go ahead, grab the tool. Oh, you this? Probably get by hand, yeah. What way? To the left. To the left? Uh, there you go. Now it's loose enough, you can probably just grab your fingers and spin uh -huh. it out. We have the CPU already on here, that's cool. Motherboard, don't know if you guys are interested. I'm just, I'm having a good time. I should probably that is a, that is a, a cute, I never thought a motherboard could be so good looking. It is. Pretty. I like the aesthetic of it a lot. I'm going to put this into the case. I hope that you guys can see this okay. We can see it, and especially right. with your with your GoPro on your forehead. That kind of helps. Right. Yes, that's right. Just want to make sure I have these 
Okay, these are already, I need to take these out. Before I mount this in, I gotta take the screws out. That would make sense. Okay, I'm gonna try putting this in and sort of lining it up here. Um, oh man, I feel like. You got this, you really got this, I believe. There's some cords here, get those out of the way. And we're just gonna, okay, so we're just gonna line this up here. And we're gonna line this up here. So my goal here is, is this is the water temple and I'm just sort of figuring things out. It might be difficult at first, but once I get it, it should be, we should be good to did go. You, did you just drop a Zelda reference as you're building a PC? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. That's the best thing I've heard all day. And I've heard some great things today. So here, oh. I'm gonna do something. All right. So I'll get the screws started and then you kind of finish it and get it tightened, okay? All right. Deal? Uh-huh. Perfect. Be careful not to drop it. You gotta have steady hands like a surgeon. What's that game called? Uh, Operation. Operation. You remember that game, Rogan? What? Where it's like the little guy laying on the table and you're the doctor and you have those little tweezers and you gotta pick up like the little bones and stuff. No. And if you touch it, it buzzes. Rogan's like, Dad, that game's for old people, all right? He knows, he's played it. I haven't played it. You haven't played it? No. I think Faze played it. No, it's like a little board game kind of deal. Oh. Yeah, it's not a video game, it's, a, it's like a board game, which, you know, you, your dad and I played that game when we were kids, but you guys got cooler games to play now. <laughs> I bet you I have it in the closet. Do you? That's awesome. You gotta you play that tonight. It. All right, so here, go ahead and tighten that one. I want a Rowdy Rogue in Operation Live Stream. Right to the right? Yeah, to uh, the right. Uh, oh, oh, on the two? Oh, okay. you see it? When I built my first PC, I think I got most of my parts on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, I also did get, oh, actually I got quite a few at Fry's Electronics because I had that employee discount. Yeah, so. discount's nice. That yeah, discount. it was nice. It was nice at the time, that's I'm for sure. sure. Get, sure yeah, they're stocked with ASUS stuff at Fry's. I've been there. That, that they are. I could actually use a bigger screwdriver here. Let's do that. So Is that better? Process-wise, we're halfway through installing the motherboard. Yep, we are. We are just screwing in everything. Cool. And, uh... It's fascinating, really. Magnetic <laughs> tips are a godsend. I'll tell you that much. Go. Go in. What okay. tips do you have for someone that's building their first PC for the very first time, not technical, does not have a major in IT? Can they do mm -hmm. anything? Is it pretty easy? Absolutely. I think um, a lot of people are very scared of PC building just because I get, and I understand completely. I started out the same way where I started with really expensive components and I thought I'm gonna break this and I'm gonna lose a lot of money and I'm gonna be sad. But You'd be surprised, and I will confess this on camera, I don't mind. Um, every single PC that I have built, I have dropped every single CPU. And guess what? <laughs> they all work. <laughs> wow, how about them apples? How about that? The only time that I accidentally heard a component was way back in 2014, when I accidentally zapped that one You zapped the motherboard. That was the, only, the only time, first and last. And that was, I learned a very valuable lesson, not to put motherboards on top of the uh, anti-static bags. Which honestly, nowadays they're not even conductive anymore, so you're probably still fine. But I'm, it's still in my mind, you know. Just one of those things that you retain. They make them d dummy proof. Exactly. Exactly though. Not, exactly. not that I'm calling you a dummy back then. No, I would, no, I would no, have done no, the same no. thing. Of course not. I would have done the exact same thing. Let's be yep. very clear. So, I, all right. So I, what's the next step? I think I got the. Wait, are you guys done installing the motherboard? Uh, I mean, we might be missing one screw, but it's okay. As long as three screws are in, I feel like you're in a good spot. Yeah, then we're done then. We are done! With the motherboard. Rowdy Rogan officially done with round one first. Nice job, ma'am. All right, now let me check on Aru. I think, honestly, let me see. This might be okay, actually. This seems pretty stable. Okay. Walk me through your thought process. What's going on right now? So I have this in the mind of Aru. I have it in place. I have the screws in. Now I just have to plug in the... Um, Plug in this stuff, the cords in here, into the right places. So I think this goes here. This blue one matches up with this one. It's like a puzzle. I just need to put the shapes with the shapes. I've done this before. You got this. Yeah, you got this. Okay. Okay. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. All right. You did it. Installing the motherboard. I did. Motherboard <laughs> installed, complete, 100% done. My first motherboard that I ever installed. Wow. Congrats. Feels good. Some 
You still got some work to do, though. We got two more uh -huh. two more parts to go. Okay. All right. That looks like a. Hold on. Let me. Can based you on see? my calculations. Of, nice. It looks Everything's like a nice, connected. It does. That looks like a motherboard. All right. It looks like a nice motherboard. Fantastic. Well done. Okay. All righty. Let's go see how Alan Owens is doing. Is building a PC nature to you? Out to me. About to be. <laughs> He's like, I'm making it my nature <laughs> right now. I, I've never read an instruction manual. Boom. Maybe I don't say never a couple years. Right, you done? We're chilling. You done? We're you chilling done? Yeah. There's only there's only. I'll be honest, guys. There's one screw I don't have in. I think it's okay. Yeah. So that's that's step number one. Give me like a big officially. Like, are you done? Let me see. Hold up the PC. Let me see it. Put the camera a little more. Okay. Careful. That thing. All right. That looks pretty into me. Looking nice and pretty. I'm done, yo. Let's get it. All right. Step number one. Nice job, my man, Alan Owens. And coming in last for round number one, surprisingly, given her experience, is Noisy Butters. We're in. We're in, ladies and gentlemen. We're in. Is that, that it? Hot Motherboard. That, that will happen. Sometimes the screws won't work with you, but they work. So we're good. That's a good lesson to learn, though. So you are complete with number segment number one, installing the motherboards. Is, is mm -hmm. in this, it's in this, let me see. Hold it up, please. Four, yes, four. of course. Absolutely. Allow me to show you. This is a nice little of the camera, the one that I yes. can see you with. Yes, of course. Please. Thank you very much. Your lighting is the one thing in this lab that could be improved. I agree. I am in full agreement, but there she is. There she is. Looking pretty. Looking she good. Did. All right. I approve. Officially. You are done with challenge number one, installing the motherboard into the system. Congratulations. You didn't do it as fast Thank as you. I thought you would. Yeah, those here. dang screws, man, I'm telling you. Those screws, they get you sometimes, but sometimes. You, you have two more challenges to catch up on speed here. I feel good about it. I feel good about it too. I got this. This from here, easy. Easy peasy. Congratulations to my man, Rowdy Rogan. You did it. You are the winner of this challenge. Asus, as a result, is going to hook you up with some swag, some merch to give away on your Twitter feed for your fans. If you want to win, a chance to you know get some swag, get some merch, make sure to follow at Rowdy Rogan on Twitter, and you'll uh, see if you have a chance to win. Then, of course, we have challenge number two. You got to install the cooler onto the motherboard. The cooler is important for many reasons, but as you can imagine, it keeps the PC cool, keeps it at an optimal temperature so you can keep performing at high power. You can overclock. You can do all those good things that you know uh, are important if you're a gamer. All righty, Noisy Butters, Rowdy Rogan, Alan Owens, and Aru, are you ready? Let's start round two. Ready, set, go. Segment number two, installing the cooler. Yeah, are you a cooler champion? Um, when it comes to Intel, yes. <laughs> I've never installed an AMD one, so. Ah, you're an Intel cooler gal. Got I it. I am, I am. Okay. So what I'm gonna be doing here, I wish I could show the camera properly, but I got a little GoPro, so that's fine. I'm gonna be taking off the back panel here. So, I see it takes two screws, so. Yeah. All right, let me see how Alan Owens is doing. This is the hardest part. It's not too difficult, don't over, don't, don't get worried, but you gotta like put this paste thing on, you look the thermal thing. Do, I don't have to, it's just, how do I clip it off? Ah, there we go. <laughs> how do I clip it off? You clip it off, Alan, that's what you do. You, you clip it off. So we have a new gen, so I have to do the back plate. We got to put the brackets. Yeah, I got the bracket. Ooh, it's very pokey and yeah, I like it. It's pokey and you like it? Mm -hmm. So if you were to hold this up, which mm -hmm. side is the flat side? Uh, this is the flat side. Yeah, perfect. All right, so look. So we're going to put these right here Oh, all right. with the flat sides facing out. Exactly. What do you have there? What you know? What, you, you have the cooler, obviously, oh. or installed. I have a bracket here. Sometimes um, these are this, this bracket goes on the back of the PC, um, on the back of the motherboard here. Uh, sometimes they'll be different depending on if it's an Intel or AMD um, CPU. I don't see another bracket, so I'm going to assume this is Intel. If I wanted to make sure, I would read the instructions, which I might actually do super quick just to double check. I believe it's Intel, but better safe than sorry, right? Smart, smart. I like that. You're always about better safe than sorry. I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm very. Gentle, I guess. I, I'd much rather take my time and make sure I do it right than rush and accident. Measure, yes, measure twice, right. cut yes. once. Ex exactly, exactly. Your dad, your I dad like taught that you that. No, I, I've never heard that saying. Never heard that one. Measure twice, cut once. Yeah. For those that are just tuning in or just watching, first off, welcome. Second off, welcome to the ASUS PC DIY Day. This is the beginning. Happy ASUS PC DIY Day. DIY, of course, standing for do-it-yourself. My man Alan Owens right now is doing it all himself. 
He's building himself a PC for the very first time, has never done it before, has no expertise, and is doing a pretty good job, if I do say so myself. Alan, how you feeling? A lot better. Good. Uh, That's awesome. I'm impressed so far. From what you've experienced, you're about, a, uh, I'd say about halfway through. Is this difficult, easy? Could anyone do it? Um, I'll answer that once I finish. <laughs> That's good to hear. I mean, the fact that you're doing it, I think anyone could do it at this point. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, brother, I, I actually don't. I don't disagree with you. One bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding, brother. You know, I got love for you. You're doing a good job, man. I'm impressed. I think the long side goes down because it's the only side that fits through the hole. Mm, might be what? What about we? Pick While we wait for these competitors to work on their builds, we have some trivia questions to ask. On top. Hey, Rogan, I want you to pick your favorite animal of these four. Okay, ready? The question is. The first Asus Tough Motherboard, which is the name of a motherboard that Asus makes, was named after which prehistoric animal? Do you know what a prehistoric animal is, Rogan? Like animals that came before, like dinosaurs and stuff? Uh, no. Are you a fan of dinosaurs? Uh, my name is, I know all about dinosaurs, so. Do you know any dinosaurs? Can you name any? T-Rex. There you go, all right, cool. So. There you go. You know a couple dinosaurs. All right, so. Then, um, Lycosaurus, I think you call it. Rhinoceros? Uh, Rhinoceros. You're doing great, man. My nephew loves loves dinosaurs. So, all right, you're going to pick your favorite animal of the four prehistoric animals I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share. Ready? The first Asus Tough Motherboard was named after what prehistoric animal? Was it the woolly mammoth, the saber-toothed tiger, a raptor, or a mastodon? I I think tiger. You got it. You did it. <laughs> oh, shit. No one's got that right. It. You're amazing. You're amazing. I like it. So the first, let me just add, let me read you the answer here. Okay, the correct answer is is indeed it's B. The first tough motherboard was the saber tooth 55i, named after the saber tooth tiger. It was based on the Intel P55 chipset. It was developed to provide military grade reliability. You know what the military is? Like the army and the navy? Yeah. Like, where the army fights. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it protects, like, our company and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, you know your stuff. So that's what the first mother, the, the first tough motherboard was made. So the military, like the army, could use computers while they're at war and just in general. And it is, it, that's why it's called the yeah, tough. Like, download stuff like a kaboom or something, like a nuke. You gotta download nukes. Exactly, that's exactly right. If you're in war and you gotta download things and, 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 and you know fire missiles, you gotta do that from a computer. And ASUS provides the tough motherboard called the Saber Tooth, which is meant to provide military grade reliability. It's set a standard that has been the hallmark of all tough hardware since then. Each tough motherboard undergoes extreme temperature tests. So imagine really hot temperature, really cold temperature to make sure that it could it could survive anything. Cause in, in war, you know, for, for military, you gotta be able to survive anything. Does that make sense? So, uh-huh. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Does that make you like Asus more or less? More. Yeah, definitely. That's pretty cool. All right, let me see how Alan Owens is doing. I don't know exactly where you're at, but have you placed the pla have you placed the plastic standoffs on each of the four corners of the back plating? Is that? Uh oh, maybe you're not there yet. Plastic standoffs are little plastic things to keep them in place. Is that gonna? Let's see. Put this through here. Oh wait, do I have to take this off? Is that okay? Can I take this off? Yes, you can. Yep, that's what you have to do. Is that cheating? I just cheat? No, I didn't cheat. I'm, giving <laughs> I'm helping you. Teamwork makes the dream work. Here. Yes, that's true. Actually, you know, it does make the dream work. They say that. They do say that. Tell people. A couple, you know, very people, people that say just very generic adages like that. Okay. Hi, right, you're, you're doing good so far. Okay. I think I might have. Where are you, where are you, where are you at now? Um, I think I have to put these bolts on here so that they this actually stays. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna put these bolts here. Try to screw them on as best as I can. Um, 
I think it's these ones if I wanna, if I'm correct, I wanna say I'm doing the right thing. But then again, who knows? <laughs> you gotta believe in yourself. I believe in you, Aru. You know, that's very, okay. Something happened, something fell. I think I was not doing it right correctly, actually. Um, okay, we're gonna lift this up. We're going back to part one here, okay? Back to the basics. Yes, yes. Sometimes you gotta take two steps backwards to take three steps forward. Okay, we push this in. We push this in, okay? Um, should I go ahead and plug in? Nah, I'm gonna wait on that actually. Sometimes it's good to plug in the power cables first um, before you start installing other things because there might be clearance issues. But honestly, I should be fine. Um, you got some good space, board. nice and spatial. I should be good. And I wonder if this will have thermal paste on it. Hmm, hmm. I should probably also put the fan on. It's probably a good idea. And then of course, just like I said, for those just tuning in, like I said, welcome to Asus PC DIY day. Also, this is the build competition. More importantly, it's the beat the clock challenge. So each of our influencers are against the clock. They're racing to try and be the first ones to finish building their own PC. Three challenges, three parts sent by Asus. You got the motherboard, you got the cooler, and you got the GPU. Of course, uh, we already, already installed the ROG Strix Z490A gaming motherboard. Now working on the cooler, and then we'll be moving on to the Asus GeForce RTX 3070 OC edition. I can actually put this on after I install it. I think I might do that. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Instead of doing the fans onto this first, usually I do AIOs, which you do put the fan on before you put on the, before you actually mount it on the CPU. But I think for now, I will go ahead and put the cooler onto the CPU. All right, and and as you're doing that, mm -hmm. are you ready for some trivia? I'm ready for some trivia. You got it. What year did Asus launch the first graphics card with a PCI port, which is a game changer, by the way? Was it A, 1996, B, 1976, C, 1986, or D, the most likely option, again, 1596. I Honestly, I was thinking it was gonna be close to the 2000s, so I'm gonna go with 96. Ding, 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 that is correct. Right. You are right. 1996 yes. was the year that Asus launched the first graphics card with a PCI port. That was a game changer, right? I mean, PCI. For sure, for Ooh. sure. Talk about, yeah, I thought that was way in the 2000s myself, first. Yeah, I also thought that. I was gonna think like mid 2000s maybe. At the latest, at the latest. Same, Asus is ahead of the game, 19 Yeah, how about that? Also, by the way, I put on some thermal paste in the size of a pea. Um, some people will uh, spread the thermal paste. I don't feel like it's necessary to do that. You can just do this and it'll just you smoosh it down. In the size of a pea. Mm -hmm. And just the size of a pea. That's, That's all you all need. You, That's all you need. Speaking of a pea, I've noticed your green screen back there. Sorry, your green lab, not your green room back there. I got yes. green. We're, we're like two peas in a pod we're here. Two peas in a pod, 100%. dude, you're so punny. I'm sorry, I heard Pete, I got excited, and all of a sudden I look up and I see green everywhere, and I just had to crack the dad joke. You had to let him know, I get it. I would have done the same thing. Would you, you promised? Absolutely. I, I, I saw exactly where you were going before you said it. You said it, I noticed the, the speaking of Pete, you know, I see the green in the background, I'm like, oh, I and knew you're it the, the same whole time. Wavelength. That makes me feel so much better about yep. myself. I'm so yep. glad. Yeah, okay, so I'll let you focus on applying that cooler though. Yeah, I don't want to, I didn't really line this up too well. That, that pun was just too good. Yeah, but thank you. I, 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 I aim to impress with my dad jokes. If you would have said it, would it, would it have made it a mom joke or is it still a dad joke? Uh, I say it'd probably still be a dad joke. Technically. It's all dad joke. Okay, dad jokes so. are just too, synonymous with like just being yeah, corny. For just being corny, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. I think that's, that would be accurate. Let's go take a little look at Rowdy Rogan. Let's see how Rowdy Rogan and his dad are doing. Let's take a look at his build. It's like literally like a dab. A like yeah. a pea. You ever have green peas yeah. before, Rogan? Like a green pea. Who is that? But you're gonna put just a little dot right there. You got this, Rogan. <laughs> Not too much, just a little dot. Oh. There. Right? And Get don't forget, here. when you're done installing the cooler, you're done with the second challenge. You have one more challenge after this. So once you're done installing the cooler, I want you to say, I'm done. Sounds good, Rogan? Yeah. So now you just have to put the fans in. You gotta put the GPU and the, 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 the graphics card in after yeah, that. Yeah, then you're done, right? Yeah, then you're done. So this is this is the second challenge. Can you ask me a question? Sorry. Well, one a question for you, real quick. I'll ask you a, a, not, a, not a trivia question. We'll get you another trivia question. You like those, huh? Uh, how's the phase, phase five challenge going? And I know you made the top 100. It is. I made the top 100. I might make the top 100. Are you excited? 
Do you love FaZe Clan? Yep. What would you do to join? If you join, if you join FaZe Clan, if you made the FaZe 5, what would you do? Uh, I would get some a PS5. <laughs> and an Xbox? No, don't, don't like Xbox. Though. Rogan. If you guys haven't kept up with Rogan and who he is and what he's all about, he right. is 100% the biggest troll you'll ever know. <laughs> Rogan's trolling me in real life here. This is great. All right, all right. Let's go ahead and check out my girl Aru. Let's see how she's doing. Um, now I gotta gotta put this cooler in. Um, let me see if it lines up here. Looks like it does. I think I can just. I don't even think I need a screwdriver for this part. Just try to get that in there. I can't tell if it's lined up or not, but seems like it is. Oh yeah, it definitely is. And so now, I think the cooler's in there. And then I gotta put these in right here. Okay, okay, let's go see how Alan Owens is doing. You know, he was on the struggle bus a little earlier. Let's see if he's doing better. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> don't forget, don't forget, when you wrap up, when the cooler, is installed you got to hold it up and say i'm done let, let, us, let us know you're completed because i can't see what's in your in your box right now okay yeah. how are you feeling the cooler how's it, how's it is look? installed well it's almost installed i gotta Let's plug go. it in but it's pretty would, much installed. would it be unsafe for you to lift it up now or uh, once i plug in this one cable i will be completed we're done done we're, done. we're done nice job part number two challenge number two completed great work hannah nice job thank you it's actually quite aesthetic, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so now, hold it right here. Perfect. I'm just gonna lock this into place. Okay, we done. We done. I think we gotta plug the fan in. Oh, all right. Jump the gun there, Rogan, you got me excited. I thought you were done. One more step? Right here. What's the last step, Rogan? What are you doing right now? Plugging uh, the fan in. Playing the fan in. Say it low. Plugging the fan in right now, so. Why do you think you have to plug a fan into the computer? What's that? What's that for? Cause it can go, so it won't get that hot. Yeah, exactly. It's, that's why you gotta keep it cool, so it doesn't get hot and overheat. That's smart. You done? We all done now. It's not even going. Yeah, so. all done. All yeah. done. Nice job, Rogan. It's not going because it's not plugged in yet. But once you plug it in, it'll be going. Don't worry. Nice job, man. All done, completed with challenge number two, which is installing the cooler onto the motherboard. Congratulations, guys. All right, now let me check on Aru. So the fan is being inserted, you're plugging it in. Yeah, okay, I I think I'm done, I think I'm done. That's it? Yeah. You, 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 impressive, I'm impressed. Can you take a looky? Yeah, all right, that looks good. Motherboard's in, cooler's in, fan is attached, done -zo. Congratulations, you are complete. Challenge number two, installing the cooler to keep that, that bad boy or girl cool. <laughs> All right, done. Let's go. You did it. Yeah. You did it. I'm going to show you all this dude. little magnificent put together so job of mine. Oh, look. Oh, uh, look. See, that thing, that, that thing is beautiful, though, that whole case, man. Great. Even better on the inside. There it is. Does it feel good? You're seeing it all, everything come together? Oh, I, I feel like my back's. <laughs> but you're killing it. That's what matters. Awesome, man. All right, cool. Congratulations, Noisy Butters. You are the winner of this challenge. As a result, Asus is going to hook you up with some ROG PC DIY merch. So you can give that away to your fans on your Twitter feed. You in the stream can, of course, win that by checking out at Noisy Butters on Twitter to see if maybe, just maybe, you get lucky and you get a chance to win some merch. And then we got challenge number three, the most important part for many gamers. It's the graphics card. We, of course, have to install the graphics card to the motherboard as well. And then you are complete, fiend, done, deliosa. This is the last challenge. We, of course, will have the Asus GeForce RTX 3070 OC edition, which contains NVIDIA Amper streaming multiprocessors. These are the building blocks for the world's fastest, most efficient GPU. The all new Amper SM brings two times the FP32 throughput and improved power efficiency. Why is a GPU important? Well, it allows for enhanced video and graphics performance, extremely important when it comes to gaming or video editing. You know, our competitors today do some video editing. There's a little bit on the side for YouTube or the like. It's kind of important for that for all of the above. 
All right, Noisy Butters, Rowdy Rogan, Alan Owens, and Aru, are you ready? Let's go ahead and start round three. Ready, set, go. Yo, guys, we are starting the graphics card right here, so. Step three, install the graphics card. Let's go. Let's go. This is the easiest part, is what I've heard. The Whoa. question is, can you finish as fast as you've started? Best of luck, my friends. I'm gonna move this mic over a little bit. Sorry if you hear a little bit of rustling. Cool, cool. Alrighty. Da -na -na -na. It's like a Zelda sound effect. <laughs> you open a chest? Yep. Oh, it feels like it. I just found a treasure, let me tell you. <laughs> That's awesome. Quite the reward in the chest box here. Yes. RTX 3070, are you kidding me? Is it Asus branded? It is, yep. That is beautiful. I'll show you here closer up here in a moment. Um, yeah, it is packaged so oddly. I haven't seen a, it, has un, it even has unpacking steps on it. Oh my gosh, thinking ahead. Yeah, my room's a mess, that makes <laughs> Again, packaging on fleek. Uh, packaging is beautiful, look at this. It is, man, it really is. That's awesome. Nice hardware. Honestly, I'm kind of worried that this isn't gonna fit in the computer to show you. I think it's gonna fit. Are we sure? Pretty sure. You know, we've done a few of these in terms of building PCs before. I've built the P you know, I think oh it looks a little looks a little beefy, but wait till the packaging comes off. Are you feeling better now? Um yeah, I kind of just want to complete this just to say that I did it. You know, I don't care if I win at this point, but I'm glad. I mean, hold on though. You could win this part, by the way. I mean, listen, each segment is timed. So you could be the fastest installer of the GPU in the history of the world. Okay, where's the plastic? You got to pull these little covers out of the HDMI input. You got it. Nice. One more, perfect. And then there's this little thing right here. This whole black piece, that whole mm -hmm. thing slides off. Pull that off. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Almost there. Nice. All right, perfect. So you want to take the stickers off real quick? I know yep. how you are. So far, so good. I got to say yep. you're, you're keeping up solid pace. Yeah, I'm just taking off the plastic wrapping because it's, it's quite satisfying. Well, it's satisfying if you do it right. Ready, 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 ready. You're welcome. You're, You're welcome, welcome, audience. <laughs> the whole stream, all right? Hope you enjoyed it. Yep, that's it. You can go home now. We get some Wait. thank yous. Some thank yous in the chat. Uh, what's your What's your like great? Do you have a grateful like a gratitude emote? Um, do I? Um, I have. Um, have you played Modern Warfare 2019? You probably no. I haven't actually. No. No, there is a kill streak named Wilson. It's like with the name Wilson, but Wilson. He's a little mini tank and you can drive him around. He's the cutest thing. I had an emote made of him where he's just a little Wilson smiling. Whenever I raid anybody on Twitch, um, we always say, get the friendly Wilsons ready to roll out. And then they go into chats and they just spam them and it's the best thing ever. Okay. Yeah, get the friendly oh. Wilsons. That's great. Yes, right, yeah. exactly. Walk me through this. Play by play. Play by play. Okay, play by play. Yep. This is the graphics card. We're going to be putting this into the top slot here. And it's going to take two slots here. There's already two of the back plates removed. So we're just going to. So really what you're doing here, it's not too complicated. It's a lot of kind of nope. plugging in and inserting and yep. being, being a little careful along the way, mm -hmm. but it's it's hard to break. Like, should you be worried it's, that you're going to break something? No. See, if you hear like clanging around, it's fine. It's totally fine. Actually, though, it's fine. I would like to move this though. So the ports, the port is unlocked. Um, I just got to line this up right here and try to I just gotta line it up if I line it up it should fall in place here I think I got it I want to say I got it okay all right you got the bad boy open up look at that thing man Whew. That's powerful. I can just tell. It just feels, but does it feel powerful in your hands? Does this not come with screws? This has to come with screws, right? 
Jeez, what do you, what do you see in the box there? Uh, oh, yeah. No. There you go. Oh. You know, so this uh, is the easiest part. You place the GPU into the PCIe 16 slot. Make sure the back panel's removed. If you haven't removed the back panel yet of the case, you screw in the GPU on the panel side, and you plug in the two 16-pin connectors. Easiest part. All right, let's do this. Last segment, last challenge, last opportunity for Alan to get some time back here. Installing the graphics card. We got to place the GPU in the PCIe slot. My oh, man's off to the races here. Yeah, he feel he feels he. I can just tell there's a level of confidence here that you haven't really had today. You feeling good? I can't hear you. Yep, yep, there yep, you. yep, yep. This is it right here. <laughs> this is this is literally my moment. <laughs> it's your time to shine. You're gonna catch some time up. Yeah, like this is the moment that like all been waiting for. We've all been waiting for, huh? Okay, so there's something that I'm not doing right here. You know what it was? Look, look at this. Look, everybody laugh. I didn't take off the parts I needed to. Oh man. I think we're good womp, right now. Womp, womp, <laughs> you know, that makes a lot of sense to me right now. It does make sense. I had a it feeling fit. something like that. It fit. Oh, wait. It Let's fit. try that again. Look how easier to do it. It fit. Oh, it's in. Crazy how that works, Aru. You just gotta take off the parts. Yeah. I would have thought. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, listen, happens to the best of us. So Rook is getting all the brand new stickers off and he's almost done. I think he's got it. One more. Ooh, that looks pretty sweet, huh? Isn't that, yeah. Doesn't it look cool, Rogan? Like the inside of the PC and everything? Doesn't it look really cool? How cool does this graphics card look? It says, it says Asus GeForce RTX. And that's good. That's cool. All right, cut. So now it's time to install it. So it's really easy. You wanna see? How? So literally, like you see this little thing right here? Uh-huh. So we wanna line these up. What are these called? PCIe port, PCI. All right, so we gotta take this, Rogan. Mm -hmm. You see this? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna plug it into this PCIe port oh, right here. Oh, okay, okay. So so it's gonna go down like that. Can you see where it's at? Yeah. Hold on. I, I think I got it. I think you got it. Yeah, I got it. Let me make sure of this part. Okay. That down. Let me try to help you line it up and I'll tell you when to push, okay? Push. Perfect. All right. Now we got it. Now we done. We got to plug in all the ports for it. Oh, thank this. So look. Almost done. Final stretch here, Rogan. Okay. We're almost done here. Okay, if I could drop, not drop the screws, that'd be great. Alrighty, let's go see how Alan Owens is doing. Is the GPU installed onto the motherboard? Yeah. Are you done? No, there's, there has to, there's no way this is all you do. The two there's cables, just... you gotta plug in the two cables. Oh okay. yeah, yep. wait. These are two cables? Wait, these, oh yeah, these go in here, right? Yep, that's it. Final, this is the final stretch, final go lap. Up. So if it doesn't fit there, it probably isn't supposed to go there. So it's that, okay, that, that's a nice, simple, easy rule of thumb that is kind of, Foolproof, right? Look at that. Look how easy that was. That's great. Boom, plugged in. Because I'm not smart. I'll be honest. With you. I'm, I'm, I'm an IT, but I can't build a PC. I'm Literally, not smart. It's a giant puzzle. It's all you're, it is. It's a puzzle. It's all it is. That's cool. Yeah. So you're saying I could do it? Yes, you could. Absolutely. I think anybody can do it, which I think is a wonderful thing. Let me let me realign myself here. Mom, spaghetti. Da -na -na. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, last one. Are you ready? Oh my goodness, I'm ready. I'm so excited. I've never been more ready in my life. Okay. That didn't work. Hold on. Will Aru be the first person to finish round three installing the GPU? Dun, da, da, dun, 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 dun. Oops, what am I dropping? Okay. Okay, I'm done. Nailed it? Yeah. There it is. 
I found my screws. Why are you just saying I'm done? You should be excited. You completely you built a PC. <laughs> I did it. That's what matters the most. Are... I don't know if you can see my hands, but they're shaking. <laughs> it was, it seemed a little, a little bit tough that last part right there, but doesn't it feel good to have overcome that obstacle? Yeah, I feel, I feel like I just beat the water temple. Put <laughs> <laughs> it this way. Put it that way. You want me to get the big one and you can do the small one? Yeah. Okay. It'd actually be easier probably if we cut those zip ties while we're so close. And done. Okay, there it is. So there's just one last one right here, okay? Uh, 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 and you're gonna plug it in right there in those last spots. Do you want to reach or do we need to cut that zip tie? What zip tie? This little tie that's preventing you from pulling on it more. You want to cut that? Or do you think you got it? Oh, uh, cut it, cut it. Huh. Almost done, almost done! As soon as you get it, got it. Look at the camera and say, "All done." All done. All done now. We all done. Finally. We got the graphics card in. Yep. We got the motherboard in. We got the cooling unit in. It's got the memory cards in. We all done now. This PC is built. And she's in. We're done. Done. Completed. Completed. PC is built. All three steps. What I did wrong? Okay, okay, okay. I know what to do now. I know what to do now. We, we got this. Alan owns. Can't build, can't plug in cables, but can build a PC from scratch with, with his bare hands. You just need to line it up. You just need to line it's it up. the last pin. You just need to line it up. Nice and aligned. Nice and easy. Here we go. Last one. Can you just get in there, please? <laughs> Don't force it. I'm not forcing. I just. <laughs> this is actual comedy. It's not comedy, man. Kind of is. You built the whole thing and you can't plug in the cables at the Let's end. Let's go. Dunzos? Let's go. We're done. Congratulations. Look at this. Chat, chat, chat. Look at this. Oh my God. This thing's heavier. I feel like I have to put them back in. The chat. Give, a look. Give us a look. Uh -huh. Boom. Give it a hug. Give it a nice hug. Give it like a, oh yeah, there it is. There it is. Congratulations to Aru. You are the winner of this challenge. As a result, Asus is going to hook you up with some Asus PC DIY Day merch for you to give away on your Twitter feed to your fans. If you in the stream want a chance to win, make sure to follow at Deputy Aru. That's Deputy, like spelled like Deputy, A-R-U-U-U -U -U on Twitter. A big, big thank you to all of our contestants today. Aru, Noisy Butters, Rowdy Rogan, and of course, Alan Owens. You guys absolutely crushed it. Thank you so much for having some fun with us today. You're all winners in my book. And of course, make sure to tune in for what's coming next. Aru and Noisy Butters are going to be joined by Deb from Andy the Lab for an incredible conversation about PC DIY and their experiences. Make sure to stay tuned. We're back again with the second social giveaway. This time around, this is aesthetics. And... All you guys have to do again is go over to the Asus DIY landing page and you look for the aesthetics tab, click that button, go over to social media, and then you post an image of your aesthetic build. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, super simple. Use the hashtag Asus PC DIY, also tag one of the Asus accounts, and you'll have a chance to win a $1,500 Asus store gift card. Hopefully you win and you trick out your build a little bit more. Uh, with that being said though, uh, we're gonna show off one of our aesthetic uh, one of the ones that we really like from one of our influencers actually, Vinny B. And uh, you can see here, he's got the G -G GT35 uh, <laughs> with a bunch of our uh, peripheral sets, all with using the Aurora Sync. So, super cool, looks very clean, but we're super excited to see what you guys come up with, what you guys share with us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next segment. <laughs> Are you eating that? <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to the Women Who Build panel discussion. I'm Deb, this is Andy, Abby, and together we're Andy the Lab. Came up with that name well before Abby existed, so maybe we need to uh, work on changing that. 
I'm an automotive journalist and together we lab test vehicles. I connected with ASUS because I needed a powerful computer to process all that 4K footage and they helped me with my epic Threadripper build, which was my first ever PC DIY. And speaking of PC DIY, all right, I'm gonna let you go play while I introduce our special guests. We have two special guests joining this panel, so I would like to welcome the legendary Call of Duty superstar, Noisy Butters, who actually hey. Up hit a million subscribers Yay, uh, thank on you. YouTube and who happens to have the nicest castle I've ever seen for a pet snake and I'm very yes. happy I can see it behind her. It's and magical. Pro streamer express model Aru. Hello. <laughs> put yogurt on her steak. I recently learned that which by the way I think that sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. So welcome ladies. Hello. <laughs> thank you. Hello. Super excited to have this conversation and get to know you two better. I know you already know each other a little bit more than <laughs> we're buddies. <laughs> um, oh goodness, how long have we known each other, Aru? Two I, years? Two, I want to say two years. Yeah. I say two years, probably. Yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. That's yeah. nice. That's awesome. Um, so, Hannah, I do have to ask: Is this like a custom build, or was this a DIY project for your pet snake? Uh, it was a DIY. Uh, my dad bought, what do they call them? The, uh, it's like an armoire thing. You know what we used to put like the box TVs in yeah. back in the day? It's yeah. one of those, but he took the, the doors off and then he put a tank in there and then boom, castle or oh, shrine. Hey. He is, uh, he was born July 2015. So about, about five years, yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Aw, he's getting old, look at him. <laughs> I don't even know like the lifespan of a snake. Like it depends. Um, I know ball pythons can live for 15, 20 years. So. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm stuck with that little worm. He's so cute. <laughs> it's my pride and joy. And and uh, Alanya, you also have a dog, don't you? Um, yeah, I have a, a Klikai. Her name is Nala, and she looks like an Arctic fox. She's very, very cute. She is cute. I've seen photos of her. <laughs> I, when I I like looked up the the breed name because I had never heard of like an Alaskan clay cat, mm -hmm. um, and I thought of you because it reminds me of um, King Kai from Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was just like interesting. <laughs> yeah, that, that is interesting. It does it does sound similar. Does your pup ever make an appearance in your videos or your stream? Um, usually, yeah, like sometimes she'll just walk around back here. She'll sleep near me when I'm streaming or, or sometimes she'll speak in the corner. If she needs something. So people really love her. I love her. I think she's a great addition to the stream. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. That's awesome. <laughs> well, again, thanks for, you know, taking the time to, to have this discussion today. Um, you know, being that this is PC DIY day. Um, there's been this, this year in general has been a very interesting year for many. Um, but like every year, I feel ASUS just kills it with products and has really come out with some really fun and good looking stuff. So Hannah, I was curious, um, if you have a favorite product that you want to kind of talk about. I mean, I've been using ASUS products for years on years on years. Been using the RG Strix Flare keyboard. I've got my monitors, PG24 8Q. Pretty sure that's the number. But also, so funny that you mentioned ASUS ROG products because I just so happen <laughs> to have on standby, of course. Um, it's not even pre-planned or anything. I am going to be working on a new build. And I just so happen to have this beauty next to me. Good old RTX 3080. There you go. Which I'm super excited yeah. about. Yep. I pulled it out of the box and oh my gosh, it's a chunk. I was not expecting it to be so thick. But uh, yeah, it looks powerful and I'm really excited to use it and uh, see what I can do with it. But at first got to get the other parts. So we'll get yeah. there. But step yeah. one, man, step one. Hey, yeah, it's pretty got, good. You got, the, you got the unit, that's what matters. Exactly, <laughs> I got the pride and joy, the, <laughs> the masterpiece right here. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've been Enjoying, I just love ASUS products in general. I've used them for years on years on years, so. And what about you, Alanya? What would you say one of your favorites are? 
I guess, um, currently, um, like Hannah said, I've been using Asus products for years. I've always, um, they've always been my main monitors. And I think my favorite product right now, especially with the PS5 coming out, is XG27UQ. It's a 4K monitor and, uh, it looks absolutely incredible. I just played Demon Souls last night and it looks amazing. I love it. I love it so much. I'm sure that's a great addition to mm -hmm. your setup. And you just, you said, I think the other day when we spoke, you kind of just put together a whole new workstation, mm -hmm. desk and... Yeah, no, I did. I have I have three monitors at my desk now, which I've always, I've always sort of had one monitor because I, I've always been sort of like, uh, I, I never thought that I needed to, but now that I have three monitors, it's kind of crazy. I have a vertical one right in front of me, and then I have two horizontal ones. It looks like, um, I look like a hacker man. If you come into my room and there's <laughs> monitors everywhere. <laughs> a wall of monitors. How do you yeah. feel? Do you, do you feel almighty and powerful? I do. I do. Yes. It really changes the dynamic of my room. <laughs> for sure. For sure. I felt the same way too when I got mine. Just like a wall. I'm like... <laughs> This is this is my throne. This yes, is where exactly. <laughs> so I I would say my one of my favorite products is as simple as this headset, the Strix Go. I think it's Go 2.4 headset. Um, this is I've tried other headsets on, and it's honestly super. There's just it's so soft. You can it feels like a pillow. Um, but the one thing I love about it when I'm streaming is that it doesn't get hot on my head. And I don't, I mean, when you are like sim racing, you sweat like as if you're working out. So this is like a huge, this has been a huge plus. And also the battery life on this is 25 hours, I think they say. So there, you know, there's days where if I practice, I forget to plug it in. Like I don't have to worry if I'm, you know, the next day racing that I'm going to lose connection or, you know, because the thing is, as soon as these go dead and you don't hear your your sounds in the background when you're driving, it's like you can't even drive. It's the weirdest mm -hmm. thing ever. Um, so this is like a really, a really great addition. Um, and there, and it's got like the electro punk pink on the inside. I feel like they could have done a little bit more though, like added more pink on here. <laughs> more pink, yeah, more color. There's nothing wrong with pink. <laughs> so speaking of Asus products, um, and that this is PC DIY day, um, let's maybe talk about some of our actual builds. So Hannah, I know you've built, I've kind of gone through some of your videos, you've built a handful of PCs. Um, I have. Yeah, I have. how many have you built? Uh, video wise, I believe I've built three, three, three. Wow. Three. Yep, three PCs and hopefully another one coming up soon. For me, I have never even imagined building my own PC. Really? Um, you should do it. No, I, I have. I mean, okay. sorry, I'm but like. <laughs> okay, good. I was gonna say, please tell me you have. <laughs> I never thought about it. I mean, I, I just, you know, I, I, my husband, when I met him, I remember seeing this crazy lit up computer and was like, what the heck is that? Like, I didn't, I was afraid to even touch it. Um, and so actually that, Threadripper roof over here. This white, big white Helios case um, is was my first build. I decided to just, I guess, try to make it as challenging as, and as possible. And the th yeah. the Threadripper. That's your first build. Yes, it was my first build. I actually have a video of it on my channel. Um, so you did a Threadripper for your first build. That is I a know, power was, move. Wow. Was, oh I, yeah. my god. Yeah, it was. Uh, um, it was a lot of fun, but part of the fun for me is I focus a lot on um, cinematic filming. And so right. I'm used to filming big vehicles. And so to actually have smaller PC components, it was, that was a very creative outlet and fun opportunity for me to try to put the camera, the, the lens in a really unique spot and really sure. capture the thermal pace as you're, you know. Yeah mushing it on to the CPU. Um, I'll bet that was a really fun uh, translation from filming cars to filming PCs. I bet that was, no wonder you did a Threadripper for your first build. It, like, you gotta go, you gotta gives, start it, with a exactly, bang. It gives you a lot more, the, the more, the crazier, just like in, like an automobile, the more kit out it is, the more fun it is and interesting yes. to film in a way. For sure. Um, so that was kind of 
part of the, also the, the idea behind that. Um, I actually just completed um, a mini ITX build and I have a, I just wanted to like show the difference between just like the motherboard. Does this like ring a bell oh the gosh. size of this cute? I mean, I'm, oh, cute. I'm sure like tech people don't want to hear cute, but, but when I is. opened up the box and saw this thing, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like my puppy. And then <laughs> here, I have an extra one I have to show you. This is like the big motherboard. Oh wow. <laughs> And he so here awesome. said I actually have an extra one of that I used in that red oh brick build. So look at the difference. I, I didn't notice how severe of a difference it was until now seeing this. I know. Outside. Like this is like the cute isn't this such a cute little thing? Oh, he means well. He, he's small, but he's mighty, you know? Exactly. exactly. And that's the that's the crazy thing is you can build these mini PCs and be super powerful. And right now, actually for uh, PC DIY day. I built a mini ITX uh, specifically for today. That that video is on my channel now, but that is powering my sim racing um, setup. So talk about powerful and fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Alanya, you also changed out some components in your current PC, right? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not trying to impress, but. But I did install my first graphics card. It was the ROG Strix RTX 2070 Super. It was quite the experience because I've never even opened up a PC before. So I, uh, I was confused, but I figured it out. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. Um, and I mean, one day I would like to build, um, I would like to build a PC, but baby steps because I got it. I got to take those baby steps. I'll be like Hannah one day. Trust me. I'll get there. <laughs> I'm so hey, proud I mean, of you. Thank you. you. you came, but you still swapped out a graphics card. And I did. Not, the average person doesn't do that. <laughs> well, it's that's true. true. Yeah. I mean, I, I did it. And, and I mean, I might have, I might have had to make a few calls to, to, to get through it. But at the end of the day, I figured it out. And I think, I think I could do it again. Um, maybe faster, maybe not. We'll see in the future, yeah. but <laughs> we're working there. We're getting there. <laughs> so what's been like the biggest difference now that you swapped out that graphics card that you've noticed? Um, I think the frames is the biggest difference. I'm not like used to such high frames or anything because i was on I'm, I'm on console mainly um but whenever i play on pc i'm i have to like adjust because everything's so quick paced it feels like and i really enjoy it. i mean everything on the pc looks looks incredible and i really want to play like like high quality minecraft with like the the shaders and, and the mods and everything so ray tracing yes yes <laughs> yes the power well, good for you. I'm like happy for you that you like you did that. And, Thank um, you. I think like a lot of people who, um, you know, maybe are have thought about building but are nervous and, and they don't know where to start. And mm -hmm. that, that's the beauty of PCs is that you can customize them and that it truly is a form of DIY. You do it yourself. You mm -hmm. can replace the graphics card. You can put in a CPU. You can use a different cooler. And my cat is playing with my hair. I am so sorry. <laughs> I have to put you down. You're so cute. I'm trying to explain something. Please. Her name? Her name's Krista. Krista. Mm -hmm. She's a cutie. She also likes to uh, jump on top of my PC and turn it off while I'm streaming, don't you? We love that. Love to do that. You we are so sweet. Cats, cats. Don't you? What's that? You have two cats? I do. I don't know where the other one is right now, but this one's going to go on the floor. I'm sorry. You're adorable. <laughs> say say hi to the podcast. No? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, that's fine. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. My cat distracted me. Um, no, the beauty of like a PC DIY, yes, you can swap out parts and, you know, replace things. And also it's a form of pride too. Like I, I love to look at the PCs that I've built and I'm like, man, I did that. Mm -hmm. I designed you. I put that part in. I put that part in I too. I named you. I created you. Yeah. I created you. I brought you into this world. Exactly. Exactly. But also, it's... they become like a piece of artwork. I think that to me yes. is so attractive is, is that it's it's not this ugly box. I mean, you really can make it become a custom. I mean, Ben over at 
uh, mods by Ben Q. I don't know if you've seen his work, but like he makes gorgeous stuff. It's just absolutely stunning. And stunning, right? It's like, it's, it's a talking piece. It's like, okay, you have a beautiful wood desk. Let's get a beautiful case and, and components to match that, um, you know? Exactly. I also mm -hmm. think that uh, PC building as well, uh, I think PC gaming is becoming very prevalent. Um, consoles are cool, but I think a lot of people are uh, gearing more towards PC gaming for the higher frame rates, mm -hmm. um, exclusives, and I want to say exclusives, just more games, uh, indie games, all of that. And um, it, it's it's so weird growing up because when I was younger, you know, I was in cheerleading, I was in gymnastics. I didn't really like invest, like if there was any money that my family was investing, into a hobby of mine, it was going to be sports. Nowadays, esports is a thing too. So even these families are investing money for their kids to have a really nice PC setup. You know, mm -hmm. it's becoming more accessible for a younger audience for that reason. And I don't know. I just want to throw that out there. I think that's like something really sweet, and it's kind of bringing PC building as well, kind of to a more um, I don't know, a, a more common practice than, than we would think. So PC DIY is uh, becoming more and more um, common every day, I would say. And it's fun. It's super fun. <laughs> I look at I look at my PC all the time. I'm like, how can I make you prettier? You need a tune up? You wanna go outside? You want me to, you want me to dust you off? What you want? <laughs> you, the two of you alone are a huge inspiration to so many people that watch your content. Um, and you know, I hope that that inspires others to be like, hey, you know what? What is like? Let me give this a try. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious. Um, who inspires you? Do you have someone, Hannah, that really kind of, or Alanya, either or can go first? Who who inspires you? Um. Well, I guess the. You know, the the reason I started making content and streaming, I never I never thought it could actually, you know, like be a career or anything. So I just started making um like content and, and streaming because my my brothers, I used to play games with them all the time, but then they got busy and then my sister got too busy. So I'm like, how am I gonna find, you know, people to play games with? So I just started streaming one day just to find people to play with and I did and, and I've met some really, really incredible people. Um, but one of the most incredible people I've ever met is Butters. She is, um, she is a big inspiration of mine. I think she's absolutely <laughs> incredible. I'm sorry, Butters, I'm really putting you <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm so honored. Oh my God. But Butters inspires me a lot. It's still kind of crazy for me to think about. Like, I, I'm talking to her right now, but even like in the back of my head, I'm like, whoa, you know, <laughs> she, she's, she's so great. And she's just, she's so professional and, and, She's so great at what she does. I mean, she really, really um, inspires a lot of people, including me. And um, I can't believe you're here. Hi. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy that we get to do this podcast together. This is so adorable. And I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> and how nice, like, that you actually can be friends and, and meet one another, you know? We don't yeah. always get to meet the people that inspire us. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Aru needs protecting at all times. <laughs> That's like my philosophy is like Aru needs protecting at all times. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, how am I supposed to follow that up? I don't know how to follow that up. <laughs> um, well, who inspires me? Man, I, I, I find a lot of my inspiration from when I first started, I started just recording Call of Duty gameplay uh, on my Xbox 360. So I um, was inspired by Call of Duty YouTubers, uh, specifically at the time, uh, Midnight. Um, she now is the head of content for Minnesota Rocker, which is the professional Call of Duty team in Minnesota. And uh, she's also my friend too. So it's like, you know, it's all come mm -hmm. full circle. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. But I say it's probably who inspired me the most at the time. And, um, yeah, I, I honestly get a lot of inspiration nowadays from my friends and seeing my friends grow and do big things like like mm -hmm. little Aru. Wait, you so just hit a million subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Wait a minute. <laughs> Has it sunk in? Has it sunk in yet? Uh, no, it hasn't. <laughs> Not at all. I uploaded my million, uh, my one million video, and I still, to this day, I'm still like, did that really happen? <laughs> really? Like, I don't know. It's 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 hard to believe, but 
You're amazing. That's you're amazing. that's you're amazing. No, you're amazing, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> well, it's an awesome achievement. Like honestly, very few get get to have that. So thank you, <laughs> thank you. I'm I'm very very lucky. <laughs> I would say for me, because I'm trying to push myself as more of like a filmmaker. Um, I don't know. Have you girls heard of Daniel Schiffer? He's also a YouTuber. Um, the name, yeah. He Definitely. is like, he puts content on YouTube, but he also like does professional um, shooting for commercials and, and clients like that. But um, he's the one, he's the type of person that when I watch his videos, he uses a camera and he edits in such unique ways that you can watch a six minute commercial uh, video on a commercially shot, you know, behind the scenes type video. and. You just are like, oh my God, I gotta go out and start filming. It's just, you're mm -hmm. always inspired. It's always so fresh. There's always, you know, just like an interesting way to like, have you think about what you're filming and how you can film it in a, in a different, more creative way. And for me, like I didn't go to college for film. Um, I learned everything through YouTube. Mm -hmm. So do you ladies, like, do you have anything fun planned uh, coming up the pipeline before the end of the year? Um, I'm personally going to be uh, planning out my next build for sure. Uh, I got to put this this RTX 3080 to use, you know? <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know, I'm going to be playing video games and I'm going to be making content and streaming and just seeing what happens, I guess. That's just what's on my plate. Mm -hmm. Um, I think right now my next my next big project is to actually make a streaming rig for myself um, that's just dedicated towards streaming so that way I could have a gaming one and a streaming one. See, look at me, I'm getting spoiled, but that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for you. Are you going to build a streaming rig? I think I am. I think I am. Yes, um, yes, you are. Yes, I am. Thank you, Butters. That's very yes, encouraging. <laughs> I'm going yes. to. It's going to be great. Okay, we're going to take baby steps. You know, if I if I need help, I know who to call. Butters, you know, keep me on speed. I'll keep you on there speed you dial. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> By all means, do it. You can call means. me too. I'll help. Oh yeah, of course, of course. I don't want to bother. I, I don't want to bother everybody. <laughs> it's always good to get second opinions and third opinions and fourth opinions. Can't get too many opinions. That's important. Yeah. And the problem is, I'm more active at night. So when I want to build something or do something, it's like in the middle of the night. So I always feel bad like texting people in the middle of the night because I'm like, I really need help on this, but it's like. 4 a.m. But like my sleep schedule is so messed up and I'm I'm a night owl, so I'm way more like my brain's way more active at night. And yeah. I just it's so it's so annoying. <laughs> it's the I most like be, I think you'd be surprised if you might still be up at that time. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Especially with time zones and stuff, and a lot yeah. of other people are night owls. Mm -hmm. Like me. I'm also a night owl, so and prime like the middle of the night is prime time, like philosophical hours and yes like, yeah that's where you make like game changing moves it's yes you make, like life changing moves <laughs> you're out you just everything just flows better in the yeah the exactly i don't exactly. know what it is it's it's crazy do you have any plans uh any upcoming plans as well yeah i'm also gonna um definitely plan to make another pc um and film it again like try to do like really cool like epic cinematic sequences of the build mm. like i I think there's a, a few things like one, like make it so that if you actually were building, you could be like, oh, okay, how, like, what is the step? Like, how did you do that? But then also really tie in those really cool shots. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You know, like if there's like dust on this, I want you to see the dust. Like, yeah, super yeah. Close. Like not that there would be dust in my, <laughs> like it's the dog hair on here that I'm like, <laughs> like having to blow off, but you know what right. I mean? For sure. Really for sure. like get into it. Um, so I am gonna. I'm doing a Ryzen 5000 series um, with the 6000 series GPUs. Um, so I'm very pumped about that. Um, that's super mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah, yeah that's so, so cool. So both of you are partners with ASUS and part of the ROG Stream team. So what is what is that like? So being part of the ROG Stream team, um, honestly, is kind of kind of still shocking to me. Um, not only am I, you know, uh, on the same team as, as Hannah, but I'm also, you know, um, 
on a team of a company that I've always supported and, and used their products. So it's sort of like I'm still sort of in disbelief about it. Um, and to, to be completely transparent and honest, I could never really afford a, a gaming rig. Um, I, I, I didn't grow up super wealthy. So, you know, consoles were the way to go for me because it was affordable and I could play with all my siblings. And um, my brother had a gaming laptop and I would play on that once in a while. But, um, you know, me having a gaming rig now is, is sort of unbelievable. And I realize now how much I've been missing out on. I've I've learned how to hook up monitors and, and put them on stands now. I've learned how to install a graphics card, like things that I, I never imagined I would be able to do or have. Um, and so I, I'm still sort of like, again, I, I know I'm being a little bit repetitive here, but I'm still sort of in disbelief. I feel like just being on the on the stream team, I've grown a lot as a um, a person and, and a content creator. So it's great. <laughs> it's a great team. I, yeah. I have to agree with you on that. I'm also in a bit of disbelief uh, being partnered with such a great company because <laughs> not only does the team have so many cool content creators on it that I'm honored to be a part of that roster, um, but any sort of um, equipment or anything that I need for my streams and my content in general, um, Aces or RG's got my back. Anything I need. I, I literally told them, I said, I got to travel. Uh, I need to edit. I'll do all my editing beforehand. They said, no, no, no. We'll just, we got you with the laptop. Here you go. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, oh, really? The, yeah, take a laptop. Go. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are actually the best. Yeah. And when the new graphics cars came out with the, uh, the uh, 2080, um, I thought, man, that's a really cool looking graphics card. I said, hey, one's coming in the mail. Enjoy. Make that content. I'm like, you got it. <laughs> RTX 3080, same thing as well. Um, Asus just really has my back in, in, uh, in all realms of all my content. And also I'm going to be working on my VR lab as well. And uh, they're working with me very closely to help uh, kit me out and make sure that I am really set up for that as well. So, but literally I am surrounded by a wall of Asus ROG products. And mm -hmm. it's it's truly an honor to be able to say that I'm partnered with such a great company. And another thing that I love and something that I did recently was help raise money for gamers outreach where mm -hmm. um, they are getting um, uh, gaming equipment into uh, health facilities for kids. Uh, and as somebody who's been in the hospital multiple times for jaw surgery, for all kinds of surgeries, um, it, to be able to game and have something that makes me feel so comfortable, mm -hmm. uh, that would have been so important for me as a kid. And to be able to participate in something like that um, nowadays and to help provide equipment for that and through ASUS ROG as well, that just, that made me so happy. And I don't know, that's... Yeah, I mean, to yeah. be able to that opportunity to give back like that i mean that's like mm -hmm. to me like that's the ultimate goal it's not yes. really you know it's like not necessarily creating a name for myself but like creating a platform that you can then pay it forward more and yes pay it forward ahead. yeah like so pay it forward you couldn't have said it any better yeah yeah but um anyway it's just been like super fun to talk to you and um for everyone watching, I encourage you to check out Noisy Butters and Aru on Thank you. YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, any other platforms? Uh, is there another one? I don't know. I, I, there's the social media yeah. is a thing. Social, yeah. Yeah. social media. <laughs> That's a thing, you know, <laughs> we're out there on it. <laughs> there you go. And I hope that this inspires you whoever's listening if you are thinking about building your own pc to like go out and just go for it mm -hmm. just not? just do it if i can just, just throw it. out something really quick um i've only built like a handful of pcs in my life and before i started building my first pcs i was mortified and really scared because i thought what if i break something mm -hmm. something's gonna show up and it's not gonna work oh my gosh yeah I, I want I want to let the world know right now, and I will confess this. I will confess this on camera. <laughs> Every PC that I have built, <laughs> I've dropped the CPU. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. You can build a PC, believe it or not. It's just a giant puzzle. It's yeah. not as scary as it looks. It's gotten way easier over the years. There's so many tutorials on YouTube. Yeah. Trust me. PC mm -hmm. DIY is possible. All right. Well. 
girls, I look forward to seeing your future build. Thank you again for hanging out and talking today. And everyone watching, make sure to follow and subscribe to Aru and Noisy Butters. Look them up on social media. They're everywhere. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to uh, having another talk one day. Mm -hmm. Or call me up. And, yes. And the hours of the night if you need help. With <laughs> I, I might hit you up on that too. For that, for that hard tubing, I might have to be like, help. <laughs> Well, I'll just make a group chat after this. I got perfect. you. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Awesome. But thank you for having us and for this yeah, chat today. Yeah, thank I you so it. much. Thank you. Bye, girls. Bye. All right, guys, we got the final social giveaway. It's the Aurora Sync giveaway. Again, all you guys got to do is head over to the Asus PC DIY landing page, find the giveaway tab, look for Aurora Sync, click that button, head over to social media. Post an image of your Aurora Sync build in full use and use the hashtag ASUSPCDIY and tag an ASUS account for a chance to win a $1,500 ASUS Store gift card to trick out your next PC build. And that's going on from now until December 30th for a chance to enter to win. Uh, so we want to show you guys Doty Rukin coming in with all the RGB in his PCDIY setup. And we've got our very own Drixie from the RG Stream team rocking his build, showing off a classy, you know, a little bit classier, not too much RGB, but just enough RGB in his build. But with that being said, we want to see what you guys come up with. Again, just go over to social media, post doing all those requirements, and you'll have a chance to be entered to win. So thank you guys so much. Enter any of the giveaways, if you can enter all three of them. And each and every one of them, you have a chance to win a $1,500 Easy Store gift card. So I'll see you guys later. Alright guys, I actually laid out some of the parts you need for water cooling. That's a very essential. You're always going to need a radiator to uh, cool some of the liquid as you're pulling cool air. It also helps on bring down temperature of the liquid. And then you're going to need your tubes, always tubes, uh, blocks. You're going to need a reservoir or a distribution block that will hold the liquid. And of course you need fans pulling cool air onto the radiators. And also it's fittings. Fittings are a must. So this fitting here is a 12 millimeter feeding. So you gotta make sure you get the right pipe for it or tube for it in order to fit. Cause there's 12 millimeter and there's 14 and 16 are kind of more of the standard size. Like here, this is a, one of the tubes. This is a brass tube that's nickel plated and it's actually a 12 millimeter that will fit actual to the actual fitting itself. All right guys, when you install the CPU block, they're gonna come with their own bracket. So it's and screwed from from behind. So let me. Sh so this here, I'm gonna actually screw in. So there's four screw ins where you gotta do in order to uh, get the CPU block installed. So let me do that real quick. Go and apply thermal paste. You don't need a lot of thermal paste at all for these little chips here. So just a dot will, do, will be just fine, just like that. Thermal paste is there. So here's, just gonna put it in. So the block's there, set. So now I'm just gonna put in the screws to, I guess you tighten it down. All right guys, so now the CPU is set, CPU block set. So I'm gonna actually go in and uh, install it into the case. So let me show you the case, what it is. So it's pretty cool.
All right, guys, for the case, we went with the Asus Strict ROG Helios. And what's pretty cool about this build is actually going to John Mayer. And John Mayer is a musician, songwriter, and record producer. So I'm pretty excited for this build. We're gonna actually make it more industrial to actually what he likes. So pretty excited for what we're gonna do with it. All right, guys, so the next up, I'm actually gonna install the radiator. And the way you install the radiator, you gotta find out what size radiator fits in your case. Like for example, for this Asus ROG Helios case, it fits a 360 radiator. So I'm gonna go ahead and install in a 360 radiator, which there are brackets on here. So you're just gonna actually just put it on top and screw your fans into the radiator. Then you can actually install it into your case. But also you gotta note as far as how you're gonna put your fans. So if I flip this over, these are the, the front face of the fans are gonna go on the outside of the case. So they're going outside. So cool air is gonna pull in and I'm gonna do some also on top they're gonna face outward. So the cool air is gonna pull in and then it's gonna pull back out. GPU finally came in guys, so which is our ROG 3080. So once I get the water block installed for this card, I'm gonna go ahead and in install it into the case. But also when you're selecting a water blocks, you gotta make sure that it's compatible with your card because every card's different, every water block's different as well. So let's go ahead and get started on that and let's get this. Finally, we got the air cooler off. So this is what it looks like, guys. It looks pretty awesome. So once the air cooler is off, we're gonna apply these thermal pads into the VRMs, and then we're gonna put the GPU block on top. So once that's set, we're ready to go. All right, guys, so I applied some of the thermal pads on there, but the way you know where to place them at, they give you diagrams here. They'll actually give you a diagram on where to place the actual thermal pads at. As you can see, the orange, that's where they actually place the thermal pads at. So just to give you an idea, it's pretty easy. It's very straightforward. Uh, this is by EK. Uh, EK makes it very easy to actually install a water block. So the GPU block is fully installed, as you can see here. See the water block and also the back plate. I put the back plate in. So the next step, I'm gonna actually gonna go in and install it into the actual case. All right guys, as you can see here, I have the GPU and the CPU block already installed. So all I have left is actual tubes. Everything's pretty much good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and start on that. But on the tubes, I'm gonna use some brass tubes which are nickel plated. Uh, you can get them 90 degree bend like this or they come straight, they come straight like, as well like this. But I decided to actually bend my own tube to give me more of that organic feel and the style that I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some of that and we're gonna go ahead and go from there, guys. All right guys, it's fully done. I'm pretty excited how everything turned out. So right now it's actually running a Z490 eGaming by ASUS ROG Strict motherboard. 
Uh, we also got the GPUs, which is a 3080 Strix, uh, which is a pretty awesome card. Water cool by EK, and also we have the Intel 10 700K, which it's, it's pretty good. It's gonna be awesome what he's gonna do with it. And 32 gigs of RAM by G Skill Trident Z Royal. I uh, love those things. They look pretty awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoy this journey as far as some of the tips or some of the stuff I do when I actually water cool these machines. So stay tuned for the next one, guys. Hello and welcome to a discussion with industry experts in a fine panel about PC building and modding. I am your host, moderator, George Jimenez from PCGamer.com. It's a website about PC gaming. Joined here with me is an illustrious group of veteran and expert PC builders and modders in no particular order. I wanna start with, you know him as Mods by Ben. I know him personally as just Ben. Ben, tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you do? And how do you make all your videos look so gorgeous? All right. <laughs> well, I kind of feel like I'm the new guy here. So <laughs> so what I actually do is I'm actually a uh, PC builder. So I actually mod these uh, computers. Uh, but the, the way I do my video, my background, I'm a professional photographer. So I have some knowledge on how to uh, photograph and video these products. Uh, but Besides that, you know, it's good to be here. So, yeah. yeah and thank you for being here also. And we, I love that your videos almost have this weird kind of like meditative state. You use really good music. I love the camera angles. It's like very, very cinematography focused. I, it, it's super cool. Right. Uh, next, uh, you, YouTube knows him really well. Uh, Jay's Two Cents. I, hey I don't know if I should introduce, I don't know what more to say about you. I want to let you kind of <laughs> fill in the gap for me. Uh, tell us, what do you do? Uh, you are a, I would say maybe an S tier rank uh, PC builder. You make some oh, really I don't cool know about stuff. That. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't, this is not a time to be humble. You are an expert. Uh, tell, 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 tell us all a little bit about yourself. What do you do and how we got here? Well, prior to YouTube, I was in uh, IT. I was an uh, advanced level IT support for our nationwide offices that we had for a uh, development company. And uh, yeah, so I did that for about 10 years. And then I started doing videos on the side just for fun, uh, just to kind of help some people out. And then it sort of turned into what it is now eight years later. So it's kind of a doing what I was already doing, but just having fun with it and it seemed to work. And, and congrats on the uh, almost 3 million subscribers. Thank uh, you. We, will, we will get there. We, I think together we'll, we'll cross that threshold. And, and, and finally, JJ, Juan Jose Guerrero from wow. Asus. I, I, I just, a, a, a dude with a really good Twitter. Uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself, your expertise. What, what do you do for Asus? And, and, and why are you here? Why should we consider you an expert? I know you're an expert, but why? Uh, all really good questions. Um, I first definitely want to thank both uh, Jay and Ben for being involved as well as yourself. It's fantastic to have you guys here on board to be able to celebrate PCDIY, which I think is something that all of us are appreciative about and uh, we all enjoy. From my, my perspective, right, I've been with the company now for more than a decade, so a pretty good chunk of time. i uh, been very close with our product management team, our product design team, as well as our marketing team. And so that works in a lot of different ways. At the end of the day, really, the goal is to try to be able to be, I think, a communicator uh, for what we're doing on the product and development side and ultimately be able to relay that information out to the community. And so that happens a lot of different ways. Uh, it's happened in the past by coordinating with media and uh, influencers and builders and modders, as well as also directly going into the community and helping uh, you know, our users better understand our products and how we can help to provide a better DIY experience. And while that's kind of evolved over the years, um, pretty much that is still the goal, right? Is to be able to hopefully uh, provide insight and understanding and hope that at the end of the day, if you decide to kind of approach PC DIY building, uh, we're giving you all kind of the nuts and bolts information to be able to get the, the best experience that you can out of it. Um, you know, regardless of whether you're going to be building a mini ITX box to something like Jay would have with a, a really big, awesome, you know, custom, uh, you know, water cooled setup right uh, across the board, right? Our goal is to try to just be able to provide you guys a, a great experience. And hopefully um, that's what I bring to the table, right? Is I think a nuts and bolts perspective of what the vendor is doing, um, Asus and a lot of really cool things that we've done to make maybe help to improve upon that DIY experience and also be receptive at collecting feedback from uh, you know, our users as well so that we can keep phasing that in into our products over time. 
Great. Uh, so the point of this whole panel is we got a we got together a group of experts to kind of take us on a journey on PC building, where to start, tips and tricks, uh, pitfalls, uh, highs and lows. So I, I want to start with just a, a question for everyone here uh, for their approach to be PC building. Let's just get right to it. What are we building lists? Do you, do you have a big whiteboard where just like your vision board of this is what I want to build? What, what's, the, what's the starting steps for you that you, that you could explain to us? Uh, let's start with uh, Jay. Uh, I think for me, it's CPU first. Uh, I mean, that, that controls so much of the platform. I mean, what CPU go with determines uh, how fast your graphics card should be. You know, it, that's, that's the main bottlenecks right there, right? And that's what I think most people try and avoid these days are the ideas of bottlenecks. Um, so I think once you find the, the CPU that you want to go with, and then the, the rest of the platform just kind of falls in place after that. And that's the way I approach it anyway. JJ? Jay makes definitely a good point there. Um, I think I also see it a little bit from aesthetics are really a big driving factor. And I know we're going to talk about this in a little bit, um, but I think a lot of users sometimes are kind of looking to a certain kind of inspiration or reference point. And so usually I think form factor for me is maybe that starting point along with what's the end goal in, in mind, right? So um, am I gaming on it? Am I, you know, doing some form of you know, professional workflow? Am I content creating on there? Once I kind of have those two pieces, um, I think that helps to kind of drive you down that conversation on, you know, what's the CPU to pick? What's the right uh, chassis to pick? What's the right type of setup? All those other kind of pieces will come in, a, come in line. And so I, I think that's the main thing is, you know, start to just get a sense of what you want your system to kind of look like and then have also a clear understanding, you know, write at least the top three things that you know you're going to be doing on that system day in and day out, because that'll kind of help to dictate everything else that comes along with the component selection. It also helps you dictate budget too. And Ben, what, what, how do you start your build? Uh, it, it all depends on the type of look I'm going for. I'm more into aesthetics, uh, so it all dictates on that. So if, say, there's a motherboard that I like, uh, and I like the aesthetics of it, uh, I go from there and choosing parts and stuff. Uh, but for me, it's at the end of the day, it's more on what I want my machine to look like. So I actually dictate on that, on how to pick parts. JJ, let me, uh, you're a pro. What do you think is the most important tool someone needs in their tool belt for building a PC. Let's say you've got everything you need. Where, where do you start? What's, is, is it just a good screwdriver? What is it? Oh, you know, that's a, that's a really interesting question because tool is almost a perceptual kind of term, right? There's mm -hmm. the physical kind of nuts and bolts point that you got up as far as something like a screwdriver. Um, but, you know, a tool can definitely be a community, right? It can be, you know, that's a tool to help you achieve your ultimate resource, right? And I think many builders will definitely say that, um, you know, the physical elements are, are important, right? But the community and the support and the information that you can be provided can be equally beneficial in that kind of perspective as a tool. But, you know, if I get down to definitely brass tacks, unquestionably a high quality uh, screwdriver, good quality tip is definitely, I think, worth its weight. Um, you know, you want to make sure that they're the actual right type uh, size so that you minimize, uh, you know, over torquing a screw, stripping a thread or anything like that. Um, I will probably say also, and I don't know, you know, Jay and Ben, if they kind of have similar, you know, perspectives, but I usually always do recommend actually two lengths. Um, so two different shank lengths. Um, so one is going to probably be probably closer to maybe six inches. And then the other one's probably in your more target quote unquote zone, which would probably be about maybe two to four inches. And the main reason being is that when you're inside of a chassis, if your actual your shank length is actually too short, you're going to get an obstruction. You'll end up kind of having this situation where your hand is going to kind of go up against part of a chassis, or you might be kind of obstructed or kind of be blocked. And so actually having a longer shank that's available to you makes it easier. Now you could go the opposite route. You could go with a much smaller screwdriver and kind of put your whole hand in there. Uh, me personally though, you know, I'm about six foot two. I've got big hands. <laughs> so I like to give myself more flexibility. So I think unquestionably there's tons of different things that you can get, you know, like a magnetizer, magnetic screw tray, um, a lot of really good stuff that you can add into the toolbox. But unquestionably, if you can get your, uh, invest in a good quality screwdriver, ideally of two lengths, I think that that is going to serve you really well in your build. Uh, Jay, you, you see a lot of builds. What's what's a common mistake you see from from just normal PC building that you just sort of go, I, I know exactly what this person did wrong. This is why it's not working. What, what is it? What is it that you see that you're just kind of like, you'll know this from experience. Don't worry, you'll get there. Um, I think when it comes to a new builder with a fresh build, though, um, I think more often than not, it's just... Um, 
they're not taking the time to really double check that certain things are plugged in or installed uh, properly in terms of cables and stuff. They might not, they might have forgotten them or plug something into the power supply and, you know, it's all plugged into the motherboard, but they may have missed like an EPS header pin or something like that. Um, and it, it's funny because as a new builder, I think there's a level of anxiety, you know, even the cheapest builds are still expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking hundreds of dollars or up to, you know, thousands of dollars. And, and if it's your first time and you've watched, you know, hundreds of hours of videos and, and you feel prepared and you're still nervous, right? Cause one slip and you break something and everyone feels like the parts are super delicate, you know, they sneeze <laughs> wrong. It's going to fall apart in their hands, you know? Um, and then I think when they hit that power button and something doesn't work right immediately, I think they become overwhelmed and, and anxious at that point. Um, but I think, I think if most people just took the time to step back and go, what are the basics that you need for a computer, right? Power supply, CPU, memory, motherboard, some form of graphics, remove the rest, make sure it turns on, you get some sort of a post and you realize 90% of the times you're there at that point. Uh, JJ, tell me about just a personal pain point for you for PC building. Like again, said you're an expert, but you know, even though sometimes experts go wrong or just there's always something we overlook, what is it for you? I think before I get to that, I did want to just follow up on Jay's point right there that I think um, in our personal experience, because we see, of course, more feedback than anybody else being a vendor, um, one of the most consistent items that actually ends up occurring many times for users that do run into a system power on issue is actually bent pins. Um, it happens on mm -hmm. both Intel and on AMD. And so we find actually even systems that are partially functioning. So maybe they somewhat are powering on or maybe they power on but aren't detecting a uh, ram many times users yeah. will go through troubleshooting everything and we ask them can you recheck the cpu and they'll actually find that one of the pins is actually slightly bent and that's actually what's causing the issue so same thing with a memory do... receipt too mm -hmm. yeah um so we really really stress um that when you go about that installation process take your time and um you know really just don't don't rush it and you know if you decide that you need to stop and then re go about the process that's entirely okay but just be cautionary in that process because both the intel sockets uh, as well as with the amd sockets proverbially it doesn't matter which one you do have that possibility you can affect that um, and this actually does get directly to your question as far as a personal pain point for me um, I tend to kind of just be a little bit of a sweater when it comes to my hands. Um, when I'm building, maybe it's just because I'm a kind of analytical person. I think a lot. And so I'm really trying to think about procedurally about how I'm doing things and my hands tend to sweat. So I find for me, what makes it easiest for me when I'm going about a build, I'll usually have a small like hand towel, um, or sometimes I'll make sure to kind of wash my hands with cold water right beforehand to kind of bring down the internal temperature of my hands a little bit. Or even if I, if I really am kind of concerned and it's a kind of complex build and maybe the materials a little bit, um, you know, slick, I might even do a little bit of kind of talcum powder on my hand. Um, because if not, sometimes something can slip, right? Or you kind of drop something or, you know, just something like that. So that for me is, you know, even though I've been building, you know, for uh, a really, really long time, it's still a consistent pain point for me. So I kind of always have to be conscious of that. That's awesome. And you know what, and if you weren't, and if you weren't anxious, that means you stop loving what you're doing. So you're, you're doing mm -hmm. just fine. Um, <laughs> so Let's get into let's get into upgrading itself. Uh, you know, with 2020 being what it is, aka the longest year in history, uh, I've noticed that more and more people have gotten the let's call it the upgrade itch, where they've got a little bit more free time. They start thinking about their existing build and start thinking, you know what, it, it could be faster. Yeah, I I definitely feel the itch though. Um, <laughs> Anytime something new comes out, I always tell myself like, yeah, I don't need to upgrade that right away. I don't need to. And then I always end up doing a personal build up update, right? Because it's just, I start, we start using it. And as much as I go, I don't need that. When we're giving, when we're doing early access, benchmarking and stuff, preparing for the reviews, and we get to be, you know, the first in the world to see how this stuff performs outside of the manufacturers, you just start going, man, that extra 20 FPS, man, that's, <laughs> a, that's a nice uptick in performance, you know? Yeah, and especially now that like 4K gaming now seems more feasible and more, more affordable than it was in the past. Where yeah, you're like, yeah, you're like maybe 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 I'll invest in a 4K monitor. And a, I try and, and convince out. people if you're still on like a 1080p 60 panel and you've got like a 1080, you know, or a 2080, 2060, whatever, consider maybe a panel upgrade before a system upgrade because a lot of times I don't think people the first the first panel I ever used that was above and beyond like the uh this basic 60 hertz you know 1080p panels um what was the model number jj it was the pg pg uh 
24Q, I think it was. It was the one of the first uh, non-G-Sync 144 hertz gaming 1080p panels, like 2013-ish. Probably the VG series, the VG like 24 series, uh, where we had like yeah. 120 and 144. There was a first like 3D vision. But I think to your yeah. point, you've nailed it. Um, upgrading is that don't discount the monitor. Upgrading is really resonant to all your kind of components. Yep. And just going to a monitor that has an adaptive sync technology, whether it's free sync or G-Sync, yeah, the whole kind of conversation on FPS can kind of be moved over a little bit because if your if your frame rate is adaptive, you're enjoying a great experience. What happened for me was I always told people I'm perfectly fine with 1080 60. I'm perfectly fine. And then the first time I experienced high refresh rate, then I experienced high refresh rate 1440 <laughs> when I had the uh, the first Swift panel that came out right. And it was just like, oh my gosh, I'm ruining myself because you start going down this rabbit hole of you try, you just go, okay, fine. You know, when it's time for panel upgrade, okay, I don't need all those specs. And then you look at a 60 Hertz panel, you're just like, oh my goodness, I don't remember looking this bad. You know, <laughs> and then I always told myself, I'm not gonna do 4K gaming until 4K 120 is at least a thing. And, and we're way past that now, right? In terms of capabilities of 4K panels. Um, yeah, I, I, we've done several videos explaining, hey, don't bottleneck your computer with your monitor because that's the that's the thing you're interacting with the most. And if your panel is not capable of delivering the experience that your components are, you can upgrade the components all you want. It's not going to get any better in terms of the end user experience. T touch there on that upgrade point, though. The other thing, too, that is important to kind of keep in mind is that uh, even when you are looking at the landscape of kind of upgrade performance metrics, it can be hard to extrapolate sometimes that upgrade metric resident to you as a user. Um, so when Jay's kind of doing a review, he's using the, the best hardware that's available, right? Because you're trying to minimize bottlenecks, but that might not be conditionally applicable to you. If let's say I have a Ryzen 3600X, it's a very solid processor. It doesn't mean you need to go out and get a 5800X to pair with a 3080. While I might not fully realize the peak absolute best performance of my 3080, um, if I still bought a 3080 and replaced, let's say, my 2060 that I had, I'm still going to get a sizable uplift in performance. Mm -hmm. So the perception of also bottlenecking has to be kind of kept in a respective kind of realistic scenario, right? Is that, yes, you might be limiting certain factors, um, but to say that the kind of the uplift isn't present, that's also not accurate, right? Because there will be a performance uplift. And I think also we don't want to limit just the upgrade narrative to be just about, let's say, core things like a CPU or graphics card. I mean, sometimes users, you just want to aesthetically upgrade your system. That might be maybe adding, you know, some RGB fans, some custom cables to your system, replacing the cooler, um, you know. Uh, we see users, I think that's the really cool thing about where you are now within PC DIY is that there's a lot of choice about how you approach kind of upgrading, right? And that's, I mean, every build of mine has RGB in it now, and most of them are static colors. But I like the fact that I could just change them on the fly, or I can go into, you know, Armory Crate and then, you know, start changing the colors, you know, LED by LED to make it something unique. And it doesn't have to be flashy and, and you know, cycling and, and all that. And I, and I feel like, like JJ was just saying, sometimes making your system perform great, but then also being proud of the way it looks and looking at it, that's kind of like the natural progression. Most people get into PC, they just care about, okay, here's how it performs, I'm happy, I don't wanna to touch it. And then they start looking at it going, well, I see all these great builds like, like Ben does and I want mine to look good too. And then they start getting bitten by the aesthetic bug. Uh, speaking of the aesthetic bug, Ben, uh, we're just, we just, just started talking about RGB. Kind of what is your kind of aesthetic influence when you're going into, when, when you're building your, when you're building your PCs, what, what are you going by? Like, you know, what's the mood of the room or it's just like, you just had a crazy fever dream and now you want to make an entirely purple system. What, kind of what's your, what's your aesthetic kind of inspirations when you're designing? That's a good question. Cause people ask me on like, do I model? Do I do a CAD drawing or something like that? And I always say it's like, it's, it's, for me, it's always, I don't know if you ever seen the, the TV show about the two guys who, I don't know if I can say it or not, but choppers, you've seen choppers. Yes. So there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a father and a son and the way the father works, he gets somebody to design it in 3D or in CAD or whatever. But the way the son works, he works very hands-on. He's like, give me the parts and I'll figure it out right there hands on and that's that's how i take it you know for me it's like i have the machine sitting here and i go as i'm building the machine it's more on this is how i feel i think this is how it should bend it's not necessarily so much a drawing or something like going based off it's it's almost like how i'm actually i don't know like this is how i feel you know and, on these machines, people are like, those are crazy. You know, it's like, that's that's who I am. You know, I love stuff that's very unique. So when I design, it's like, 
that's what comes out of me. You know, it's not necessarily so pre-planned, uh, but it's always like, just go with the flow, basically. You know, if something needs to be changed, I change it, you know. But even clients, you know, clients ask, it's like, hey, how come you don't do much RGB in your builds? You know, because I tend to stay away from RGB. But now I'm just like, I'm starting to go into more RGB, but not necessarily a rainbow color. But like Jay said, it's like picking your color, you know, that will fit into the actual theme or that will match with your cables or something like that. Just give it just an accent to it. Not so much like having RGB kind of overtake your build, but it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. I, and then I think what we, we often overlook is when you're building a PC, it's, it's your PC. So it's like anything you can do to kind of put your own personality, your own little like flavor onto it, like any little bit helps. I feel like an important message too, for people that might be new and listening to this is, is don't build a, your system to what you think the internet's going to like, because that's never going to work. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, make sure you build it to your standard and that you're happy with it. And you know, if you share it and you get people that you're going to, you're going to get people that like it yeah, and people absolutely. that hate it. But at the end of the day, who cares? Yeah, it is, a, it is a moment to be proud when your build is finally done and you hit power and everything boots up. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, especially when you said that's like, it took a while to build and you made, and you made some choices that like aren't popular or just more difficult to, to perform. Yep. And when it, when it all comes together, it like clicks and you're like, Oh, right. This is why, this is why I go through all this heartache. Uh, right. JJ, how about you? What's your, when you, when you're, what, what, what's your deal when you're designing a PC? What, what's the aesthetic choice? What's the influence come from? I think more important for me and maybe in this kind of general conversation is saying that, you know, don't overthink it and don't be afraid to do certain things like a contrast. Like we, we've spent a lot of time to produce white, take for instance, accessories, because it's become a very popular series of kind of alternate components outside of the monochrome that's out there in, ter in terms of kind of traditional black. Um, but doesn't mean everything has to be white in the build. You could actually have, you know, like a black graphics card with a white board and that creates an inherent contrast. It causes sometimes a more dynamic color play, right? Or having a white interior and then maybe having some other items, white is going to dynamically be more reflective, right? As opposed to black, it's going to absorb color. It's going to play things differently out. So, you know, don't be afraid to play out with those type of things. And, um, you know, I also say from, of course, a vendor perspective, we spend a lot of time to, I think, aesthetically give people comfort in that, you know, you can look at our kind of product ecosystems and pair things up so that if you don't want to kind of overthink about it too much, you can also have a really nice kind of unified experience. So if you want to get like a tough gaming board and tough gaming card and tough gaming chassis, it's all going to look well together. It's going to kind of be cohesive and it's going to physically work. And that's definitely something that ROG has had for years as well. Um, you know, my personal, I think aesthetic though, is I tend to kind of be a balance where I, I, I always want kind of functionality and I want to balance. So I think my endpoint will be GPUs. Take for instance, a lot of people like vertical GPUs. I don't want to say the majority because the majority is still a traditional horizontal installation. I don't like vertical GPUs because I feel it, it out the actual visual perspective of the bottom half of the motherboard. I like actually seeing a, a kind of more uh, almost three thirds kind of layer to my board, right? So if I've got a big graphics card right here, it's like I blocked this whole thing off and I, and I feel like I lost a little bit of that visual identity that, that board has. And so I prefer a horizontal design. Um, there's no right or wrong way, right? As long as physically everything works and it's stable, you know, go with what you, what you like, which I think what is Jay said, what Ben says is do what speaks to you in terms of the aesthetic and, you know, and, and you're going to probably be happier at the end of it. Right. But the great thing too, is it's DOI. You can change things up over yeah. time. No, then yeah. that's, and I think you make a really good point. It's just, you know, at the end of the day, it's still your build. So feel free to, don't feel like you're pot committed to anything. That's just like, if something's not working again, take a breath, you can find a way. Uh, so let, let's go back a little bit and talk about, uh, cause I got, I got some questions about upgrades and I know comes up every so often. I, I know a lot in like, kind of like the PC gamer forums and people are trying to figure out how to get a, you know, upgrade an existing system and maybe trying to get like the most performance out of it, but don't quite know where to go. Uh, so let's just start with a common question we get a lot is, uh, is about storage. With uh, the next gen consoles kind of already out and people maybe for the first time seeing SSD drives in action and fast load times. Now that we're seeing like Black Friday deals and people are ready to pull the trigger on certain components, you are seeing tons and tons of deals on SSD drives. Are, are, H, are hard drives dead? One of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that there's a big difference between a spinner being used for your OS and your games at the same time versus uh, a spinner drive being uh, used as a secondary drive that's not responsible for also driving the OS. Um, if you run a game off the same drive as your OS, the, the seek times are dramatically increased and you'll start seeing much lower 
loading times, both just with the OS loading, obviously, um, and then general responsiveness within the OS, especially if that drive is going to sleep. But with how cheap SSDs are getting now, and especially how cheap SATA drives are getting because of now the prevalence of M.2 and how uh, inexpensive the NAND is getting, I still tell people, if you can get a one terabyte SSD, go for it. Because although games are getting pretty massive <laughs> nowadays, if anyone's like me, I will only have two or three games at the most loaded on my computer any one time. Because I'm one of those people that I have to finish a game before I move to the next one. And if you're fortunate to have that kind of mindset, you don't need massive storage. Um, but if you if you also want to have your entire Steam library installed at the same time, you're either going to cough up your some fairly expensive two terabyte drives mm -hmm. and, and have several of them in your system. I've, you know, my systems only have uh, two two terabyte M.2s, and that handles everything: my backups, uh, several images, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I still tell people all the time: don't rule out a two terabyte spinning drive. Awesome. Uh, so another question here that comes up a lot is people dipping their toes into water cooling. So let me, let me ask you, Ben, if someone is even thinking about water cooling, what are kind of the, what, what are the pitfalls you can fall into if you are just sort of like, you know what, this is something I wanna try. Where, where, do we, where, where do we go and where can we go wrong here? Well, when I first started water cooling, what I was so confused about is actual finding the fittings to fit with extra tubes. Because I did research, but this isn't, there wasn't really much information. They would show you, it's like, yeah, use these fittings and these tubes, but no one ever, or at least I didn't come across as far as, okay, make sure if you're using 12 millimeter uh, tubes, make sure your fittings are 12 millimeter as well. Make sure it's the same size. So when I went to find that out, it's like, I was so confused because <laughs> there's so many different sizes. There's 16, 14, 12. 13 it's like it's now you've got you know 12 13 14 16 <laughs> and no a 13 and a 14 are not compatible a lot of people say well it's yeah. only one millimeter no that doesn't work it doesn't fit it's going to leak you know yeah absolutely not, not all tubes are equal you know you can no. get bits power tubing or another brand sometimes it will not work you know right. you're saying oh it's the same size but it might give you a little bit more give than actual using the actual yeah. brand it's and if you're doing it with can. rigid too, you, you might yeah. get a 10 by 13 tube and your, your 10 millimeter cord fits in one, but not the other in terms of bending. So there's a lot of, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's great because water cooling is so mainstream now, but I think the downside is so many companies are now doing it versus the main three or four, maybe 10 years ago is the fact that there's a lot of variance now in, in, in tolerance just between companies. So they might be listed as the same size, yeah. but they're just different enough to where sometimes it's a, it's a problem that, that a part doesn't fit or you got to shave this down or, or cut this or trim this and, and then you got to make it work. And that becomes a little frustrating at times. Yeah, I think, you know, the one thing I want to throw in here is that uh, both of them have made points in reference to, I think, Hardline. And while Hardline mm -hmm. has become, I think, the, the kind of the preferred method and for a lot of water coolings um mm -hmm. soft tubing works you have to really decide what your end yep. goal is with water cooling uh water cooling started i think first and foremost predominantly from a performance perspective and what i mean by performance is just people wanted lower temperatures to maybe be able to push their hardware further um there was always i think an element of also acoustics it could potentially be quieter but in most situations i would generally say it's easier to make a quieter system with a good quality air cooled setup than it would be to try yeah. to do the same thing with water cooling not that you can't have a very quiet water cooled system but well you're not going to have a very quiet water cooled system with the super low temperatures that you might want because yeah. you know more fans equal more noise you got to exactly. slow them down to make it quieter but now you're not getting the efficiency that you would with water cooling exactly so there's um, that balancing act of uh, of just hitting all those points and so i think Anybody going into water cooling, just keep in mind, what's your end goal? Are you doing it for aesthetics? Which, hey, if you want to do that, no, no problem. It's got a beautiful yep. aesthetic to it. It's got a very specific. Are you doing it for thermals? Um, you know, are you doing it for, you know, acoustics? Because you're going to be pushing your hardware so much that, as Jay noted, you want to be able to have such displacement in terms of the heat that you can keep things maybe cooler because you're going that route. I think once you kind of decide on those things, you can go that route. Um, and for me, if you're kind of just end goal is to do a little bit of all those things, I still think for years, you could have amazing, great quality soft tubing builds. They're easier to, to get yep. specced up. They're easier to maintain. They're easier to do every single thing. They're yep. cheaper. Um, so don't necessarily, and there's great kits, you know, from EK, 
from you know thermal take you know from many partners that have kits that are soft tubing and of course they're now hard tubing kits but well it's you know, the main reason it's the main reason too why our our 24 7 editing rig that we have here that phil uses is a soft tubing build because you know if if we need to change a cpu out or something and it's hard line you're going to waste a lot of time draining it taking yeah. out the tubes but when it's soft tubing you can just undo the the water block you know screws flex it out of the way change something and and we made that decision you know for the very reasons that you said it's easier to maintain and, and upkeep if, if something goes wrong with a component um, you'll never find a hard to build for a system around here. That's something that we rely on every single day because, you know, it, it's just not as practical. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that, you know, the last thing too, though, is that one cool thing for people that do make the investment in it is that hardware cooling does really benefit that um, while it can be a little bit more of a, an investment, it does have very long legs. In most situations, mm -hmm. you'll generally find that like an investment in a good quality block and a good rad and pump, they can easily last you multiple generations in a build because the cooling performance is gonna be generally higher than that of most other options. So, you know, you can take that same block and you can use it, you know, as long as it's compatible, right? Um, which in most situations, say for instance, Intel, right? You could use the same yeah. block for literally almost like five years straight um, and it wasn't an issue, right? You could literally have a 360, you know, rad, with you know um, your block and you would have been gone from generation to generation to generation. So that is a nice plus point is that, you know, it's not uh, something that you kind of have to worry about uh, always quote unquote upgrading. It'll be more kind of that balance of, do you know, do you want to tweak things like maybe the tubing or do you want to change out, you know, your fluid or things along those lines. Cool. So I've got a, a, another question for you. Uh, another one that comes up a lot in our community. Uh, we, we, you know, the collective, all of us here, we're in kind of in a privileged position where we have access to new goodies every other month where it seems like our upgrade cadence feels like every other week. Uh, what would you say for someone who isn't upgrading as frequently as we are or messing around with like so much new kit? What do you think is an upgrade that can give the most immediate performance boost that let's say isn't a GPU? I think awesome. we talked oh. about it, storage, right? Yeah, so. I was just gonna say SSDs if you're not running them. Especially, especially if you're running a, a spinning drive in a laptop, you not only gain the speed, you gain the, the durability. Yeah, yeah, I'd say storage unquestionably is your, your most immediate upgrade. And I think the secondary one is probably gonna be some form of cooling upgrade. And the, the reason why I say that is not so much about temperatures. Actually, I think Far too often people focus too much on temperatures, right? They think that this is too hot. Many of the components that are rated are rated to such a high level that you don't really have to be so critical about getting everything super, super low in terms of the temp. The lower, sure, the better, right? But um, the reason why I would say is an upgrade and that how it can benefit you, it would be the acoustics. Um, you know, depending on the type of cooling setup you might have, your system might be much more you know, uh, audibly noticeable, right? It's just gonna be louder. And so sometimes going to better quality fans or going to, you know, more robust cooling allows you to really get your system to the point where it's really, really quiet. And having a really quiet system is something that I really enjoy, you know, because when you're not gaming, you're just sitting there, you know, maybe just checking your email, watching a stream, you know, or just maybe chatting with some friends online, whatever it might be, having a really quiet system is nice. Yeah, if you live with someone having a very Mm -hmm. Quiet system is also very beneficial. Or, or if it's in a bedroom with a significant yes. other, <laughs> <laughs> they look over and it's like, "What do you? What? What is that? What? Why? Why if is there? If it's not the light, going? it's the noise. <laughs> <laughs> why is the keyboard clacking like that? Uh, let's uh, let's talk a bit about overclocking. It's a. It, what are your guys' thoughts on overclocking? Oh, Jay, I saw. I, oh man, I, the <laughs> excitement! I can't wait. Uh, okay, uh, the, uh, we know you guys overclock, but why? Why should someone consider overclocking? Um, I don't think no one, I don't, okay, first of all, no one should buy anything based on the idea that it might overclock well. So you're going to, you're going to see there's some, there's some products on the, on the market that are, that are generally known to overclock well, but that should never be a reason to buy something. First of all, overclocking is a completely unnecessary sport, if you will. <laughs> um, it's, I'm the kind of guy that has to modify and mess with everything I own. I don't care what it is. I mean, when I was a kid, it was lawnmowers and bikes. And, you know, now as an adult, you know, it's cars and computers and nothing I own goes untouched. It's just the way I am. I can't help it. I don't fight it. Um, I've been overclocking since, I mean, all the way back as far as I can remember. And we were talking like 286 era. I'm still in there <laughs> messing with stuff with my dad, you know, making the turbos go higher. Remember the turbo button, you know, seeing all that stuff. Um, 
And then now when you, when you get to the point to where your name's on the leaderboard, like on Port Royal or Time Spy or whatever, it, it sort of becomes like a, a little bit of an ego thing too, where you're like, I'm going to stay on that board. And if something, if someone knocks me down, I'm going to take that spot back. And it just becomes a, a, a real fun challenge to take these components and, and squeeze and wring every ounce of performance out of them. JJ, your thoughts on overclocking? On the yeah, blood so, sport um, of overclocking? <laughs> yeah, I think I look at them kind of entirely separate. Um, I think the competitive sport, I'm not even going to really speak to that at all. Um, Asus has a long history. We actually have the most accredited mm -hmm. history in terms of world record overclocking of any vendor. But to me, that is a, literally a sub 1% of the market. Or when we want to talk about, I think, overclocking, uh, how it applies to real users in a day in and day out perspective, I've actually put it under just the envelope of performance tuning. So this is going to be applicable to on Ryzen. Maybe I'm not overclocking, but maybe I'm manually setting things like what are called the PBO operating parameters. Um, Maybe it's actually the opposite. Maybe I'm not overclocking. Maybe I'm working within the envelope of whether the CPU has been designed, but I'm undervolting it to try to get better efficiency. Um, maybe I'm actually am overclocking it and I'm extending the CPU frequency or I'm extending the DRAM frequency. Um, I think again, what is the end goal? Traditionally, I think overclockers, if you look at the history, it was done because maybe they were on a limited budget and they couldn't afford the best hardware. So they were trying to get higher as a performance. And I still do think this is a very applicable scenario. Maybe you get somebody that is into you know, aggressive 4K gaming, or they're aggressively playing Warzone or Counter-Strike, and they are trying to kind of maybe increase some of their minimum frame rate or the average frame rate. So they're going to spend a little bit of time to try to get out more performance of their GPU. Maybe it's only going to be five frames or six frames, but if that takes them maybe from being in that minimum average of 25 to like 32, that is a little bit of a noticeable real world impact in terms of the experience. Um, and so I think that's one of the cool things about PCDIY though, is that you have knobs and switches that are available to you, right? So if you want to try to tune your system to get a little bit more performance, or if you want to tune it maybe specifically to benefit one program versus the other. Um, an example right now is Ryzen, where Ryzen tends to favor, I'd say, um, a more traditional all-core overclock if you're going to manually set it. That's going to be more beneficial if maybe you're doing content creation. You know, I don't want to have a system that is performing the best when it's going to be rendering or exporting. But where it's gaming, maybe it's actually better suited to leave it in the stock environment where the CPU is mm -hmm. going to be more dynamic and, and kind of benefiting from lighter loads and then heavier loads is going to adjust. Um, you know, our, our perspective as a vendor is I think what we try to make sure is put the tool set available to you, whether they're kind of turnkey options like our AIOC technologies that we build into boards or really rich deep UEFI options, and then hopefully give you the information so that, you know, you can watch a, you know, a guy that we'll have in our, you know, in our Facebook group or on our YouTube channel, or that we work with, you know, uh, you know, media like Jay on and say, Hey, this might be interesting things for, you know, to dive into and be able to give users more insight in. Right. Um, so I think at the end of the day, though, Jay's very first point is that it's not a requirement. Um, everything that you buy, you can get a great experience from your hardware, just at stock. And there's nothing wrong with running it stock. Right. Um, you know, but if you're looking to get a little bit more, that's the great thing about it is that, uh, you yeah. know, the more time that you spend into it, you can definitely help to kind of extend performance in a lot of different ways. What we find is it's, it's most people aren't even aware that XMP profile is an overclock, uh, and that it's not enabled by default. So most of the time we find that if, you know, when we start educating people on, on Ram, that uh, there's a lot of performance, especially with Ryzen on the table, if they are not enabling, you know, DOCP or XMP on Intel. And um, so it's, it's one of those things where um, sometimes just a little bit can, can give you a lot in terms of extra performance, but with how, with how fast things are progressing in terms of, you know, lateral with the CPU design with core count versus core clock, uh, it's just looking, it, I tell people all the time, I only overclock now because that's, I've been doing it so long. It's a, the type of overclocking that JJ described is definitely the gateway overclocking, I would call it, in that it's going to be your entry into the the bug, if you will. And if you start getting excited by it and pushing it farther and pushing it farther, then you start doing things like exotic cooling and then crazy mods and all that, which are, like he says, the sub 1%. And, 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 and just a few more minutes before we wind down, uh, Let's get to once your build is done, you you upgraded it. Your dream upgrade is there. You are happy. What is the first bit of software you are running? What is the first game you are playing that you instantly know? Yep, that's running way better than it did before. Even without looking at frames per, you know, even without looking at any numbers, uh, at least on the game wise. Like what what what's 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 the go to for you? See, I got so excited. I wanted to know what this was. <laughs> 
I'm curious as to what Ben would do because he's like he's he's an aesthetics guy. So mm-hmm. so what do you do? Well, since I'm a uh, photographer, so the first thing I always download is always Adobe. You know, and it's mm-hmm. like I don't like I don't really game. You know, I don't really have time to game because I had to do other things. Uh, I wish I did, but at, at this moment I cannot. <laughs> uh, but you know, I don't really install any other other than stuff I need as far as you know, video editing or uh, photo editing software stuff. So it's all fast, it's rendering, and then you're like, oh yeah, that's fast. Yeah. Well, I can tell you for me, my first indicator of a system and whether or not it's going to be a general upgrade in terms of the, the end user experience is just how fast does Windows take to install? Um, and then being a GPU guy like I am, the very first thing I have to run is 3D Mark. I, I run through all the 3D Marks because I've, I've got a master spreadsheet that has every GPU I've ever tested ever and what version <laughs> driver, what Windows version. Um, so I can see right away, where is it going to slot? You know, and, and that's, that's the exciting thing for me is because those, those are pretty linear benchmarks, right? They're, they're, just, they're just one metric to use to compare. They should never be taken, you know, stand alone as an indicator of what card's better than the other. It's just one metric. And, uh, but it's, it's nice to see where they're going to slot in. And then I can usually guess where they're going to be in terms of gaming performance from there. Phil, on the other hand, because he's a lot like Ben, uh, he's a content creator, he's, he's an editor. Um, he goes right to Geekbench and he goes right to his uh, test projects that he uses for Adobe to test things like warp stabilize, uh, you know, because that's single threaded performance. He then goes, does a, a 4K transcode to uh, see how long it's going to take to do that. And, and that's where he gets really excited. That's why he's sitting over there on that Threadripper you know, 3990X <laughs> over there, and or 30, I'm sorry, 3970X, and it's just, I, I every every now and then he'll go in there and he'll find some other little knob to play with, and he's like, I just got another, another 30 seconds off this render, and he gets super excited about it. So, <laughs> it's uh, we have two different, very completely different approaches on how we test our systems. The excitement of a video editor, I love it. Uh, JJ, yeah, what absolutely. do you what, what's your go to? Um, you know. I, my personal system and even actually any system that I put together, I think the, the first thing actually I do is maybe I'm just kind of really nuts and bolts is I, I put up our RG real bench. Um, so, you know, it's a community based program that we created a number of years ago. Um, it uses a lot of different stuff like handbrake and GIMP. Um, but the cool thing is it's a stress test and it's a benchmark. So it just allows me to first confirm that my system is stable and reliable, right? Um, I don't modify any UEFI values. I don't even actually set the XMP first. I just run straight mm-hmm. from full UEFI defaults. I want to make sure my system is working. I put it through that stress test and then I run the actual system score. It gives me a nice little dump out of all those information points. So I can actually see kind of how my CPU, my RAM and all those things. So then from there, after I've got my stress test, I already got a measurement for my temperatures under load. I have a good indicator as far as my system performance. And then if I do go and enable things like the DLCP or XMP for my RAM, or if I do any overclocking through AIOC or whatever other adjustments, I have a baseline because that's the other thing. Sometimes people jump into making modifications or knobs and switches and doing all these other things before they even have a baseline to compare and contrast. Um, and I do think that, you know, Jay, with something like 3D Mark, the great thing there is that 3D Mark, because it's a community based uh, benchmark, it does track actually not only performance, but temperature information, but it also has a mm-hmm. comparison function, which is nice right. because you can immediately see a result and then kind of go, hey, I'm in that same ballpark as everybody else, which helps you to just kind of feel sometimes a little bit more confident that everything is working, quote unquote, the way that it should, right? So um, I think anything that has kind of a collaborative measurement uh, marker that you can reference is always, a, is always an advantageous kind of option. But at the end of the day, it's about workflow and your games. You should run, I don't think a general recommendation by anybody, you should run what you really want to run on the system because yep. that's what you're going to be running on the system, right? That's why we tell people all the time, yeah, we run this entire you know, suite of, I think, 11 different titles right now and, and synthetics. But when they say, well, what should I do to make sure my system is, is totally stable? Is make sure it can do the things you do in your programs that you run without crashing. Just because you can run these programs without crashing, but you crash in this one, guess what? That, one, that first crash in that one program means you're not stable, at least not 100%. So you've got to make sure that it works in your workflows first, and then that's what matters most. And let's get a little conceptual here. Uh, ben, if, if you had limitless resources, what is your dream build? Just, just mo- money is no option. You've, you've got a team of people who can help you. you, you any material you want is available. What is, what, is, what is going on in that head of yours, I wonder? I wonder too. <laughs> I've, been, <laughs> I've been so busy. Uh, but I, 
I don't know. I, of course, there'll be a open air chassis. You know, I love machines that are not enclosed, uh, but it'll be more of structural as far as cra- it'll be crazy. Basically, it'll be just something like I don't know. It'll be something nuts. Uh, but but I do see I do see some uh, which is like some cars that are being modded, and I noticed on how they actually add like acrylic on their actual trunk so you can actually see through it and see actual the trunk through it or even the hood and it's something that that's always drawn i'm drawn to i love to see just the internal parts so it's always going to be a machine that you can see the internal parts you know not necessarily everything covered uh but it'll be something like that you know that's you know i don't know what kind of material will be uh, but i'm i'm I had to look like very futuristic, not, you know, so much uh, theme based, but just something that is like, oh man, it's something like, I don't know, out of, from, I don't know, 2030 or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I haven't really thought about, you know, as far as a dream machine for me, you know, it's eventually I will have to at some point, you know, cause I would like to do something just very so unique to me. And it's, you know, I'm sure I'll get to that point, you know, because it's, I'm starting to miss with a lot of materials that I really didn't have access because I only been building for about a year and a half ish, you know, not so long. So now it's like starting to pick up very quickly as far as uh, the type of vendors I'm getting connections with, you know, from from acrylic, you know, to different uh, sheet metal, and so it's 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 starting to broaden my my um, how do you say it my horizon expression <laughs> yeah my horizon but just my expression is like oh i never thought about using this type of material into a case you know it's 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 i don't know i see it like they always say like who you know what do you do and i i always say it's like i'm more of a sculptor you know it's i'm a modern sculptor you know i, I gather these parts and i create a sculpture that's that's more how i express my what i do you know because it's that's something that's you know, all of us here, you know, we're all putting stuff together, you know, but it's more of a modern approach now, you know, instead of just a clay, you know, but now mm-hmm. it's like we have materials that are made or stuff that's we have access to now. So it's, I don't know, I always say that I'm a modern, a modern sculpture, you know, putting these things together. It's, it's pretty strange how I came up with that conclusion, but it's, that's how I kind of identify myself as, you know, as a, as a builder. Awesome. I'm glad we, I'm like, I'm glad we got there. And like, I, I can already see the kind of the gears turning in your head and you're yeah. like, Oh yeah, let me, let me try that. <laughs> uh, Jay, what's your money is no option. You've got literally a team of people dedicated to helping you build whatever you want. What, what are we building? So given the fact that I'm a car guy as well, I feel like the chassis wouldn't have to be made out of forged carbon. Uh, forged carbon is an extremely uh, expensive process of forging carbon, but I feel like it would be obviously extremely lightweight, extremely strong. I think forged carbon mixed with uh, a tempered glass would just be a, an extremely exotic look and feel, um, kind of like your, you know, your, your McLarens and your Senna's and stuff like that. Um, I think that there would have to be, um, I would want glass water blocks. So we've done glass tubing. Uh, I've, I've worked with glass. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, there's a couple of glass blowers that actually follow me and they, they blow their own tubes, which is, which is crazy because they can do really crazy cool. designs and they make their own reservoirs and stuff out of blown glass. Um, but I've never seen anyone make a glass water block. Uh, I, I know where the inherent, you know, challenges would be with working with that material. Um, but I feel like just having the all glass, water blocks and distribution plates and all that sort of stuff would be uh, just uh, extremely elegant. It would never die. It would never fade. Um, it, it, on top of that, and the components, I think it's a, it's a lot like what a lot of these, these, these uh, modders do in terms of like the, the mod world challenge and stuff like that. It's less about the components and it's more about the build. So I feel like it would be, you know, obviously pretty, pretty basic stuff, you know, whatever the latest and greatest CPU and GPU is at the time. Uh, but I think the challenge and and that whole money is no object would be in the materials. A lot like Ben was saying. Awesome, JJ. What 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 a what a themed monster are we making with unlimited resources? 
you know, again, I, I'm going to see things from a little bit of a different perspective because I've been able to see what we've been able to do, right? So the thing is, if there was no limitation, I could tell you there's stuff that right now we could do, but we don't do it because of challenges in yield and production, right? Um, a great concept is, again, we go back to that like Maximus formula motherboard. That was years in terms of development because we had to work with the substrate material partners to be able to formulate the consistency of yield to be able to get the adidium metal mixed with the plastic in a consistent shroud that then had to be fire rated, that then had to be produced, hit an actual production target and do a lot of that. But let's say we could come up with one-off solutions. We've done this where in the past where like we had the Sobronco board where we had to have a limited run production by having a custom white PCB. Let's get crazier. We could use specialized fluorescent yeah. uh, trace material on the motherboard, right? You wanna talk about having a level of kind of reactivity of the board well, what happens if you had integrated cathode lighting with a UV reactive based trace material on the board? So literally as the actual board was processing signal path, you'd see that dynamically represented on the board, right? There's lots of really crazy things that are possible. And I think the exciting part as we move into the future is with our position in the industry and with, I think, the support of the enthusiast community and wanting to see more specialized hardware, which is, I think, really a, a strength for ASUS, right, is our R&D and our production ability is that we can keep scaling things out. So when you tell me about, like, what would I love to see, um, you know, we've shown stuff off, like the Project Utopia motherboard or the ROG Avalon concept for how stuff can fit in together. I mean, imagine having a motherboard with no physical headers, right? <laughs> we could remove every single header and go to a fiber optic terminal, and we could have a fiber optic terminal that runs into a chassis, and the chassis has every single connection actively fed into that built in. There's nothing that you need to connect here. It allows for a, a much cleaner um, you know, visual aesthetic. It's more foolproof. And even from a performance standpoint, we could eliminate things like resistance, right? Cabling causes resistance. So if we had, let's say like a pin pad contact where we had a terminal on the back of the motherboard where you could, you could actually plug this into the chassis and it's powered directly by being plugged into the back plane of the chassis, this is possible. It's not that it's not possible. It's that it would be proprietary. But the, the great thing is that I think we're in a situation where the evolution of DIY is now becoming more dynamic or more robust. And it's really exciting that we're in a position to offer these type of options. So while I can't say what, we're, what we are working on and you know, <laughs> what you might see, um, I, I tell users, push us, keep telling us what you want to be able to see, because I think what we've been able to show, um, you know, is quite impressive if you look at the kind of the scale of what has been able to be offered in terms of designs and features and functionality and um, you know we're excited about trying to do that you know for me from a build perspective um i love water you know i have one of my primary systems is a water cold system but i've also loved something about the simplicity and the mass of just big heat sinks so like i you know um if, if i probably had you know to keep it short i think if i could have realistic based option right now it would probably be something like some crazy multi-slot board that had pci substrate boards with integrated ribbons and i could have each individual component slot next to each other so i'd have the motherboard i'd have the graphics card i'd have my storage array right and they would all be in this kind of like horizontal chassis individually broken up so that i could actually almost see each each component individually not obstructed by another piece takes us very back itself. to the early days in computers and mother and daughter boards. It's very similar yeah. to how those were. Yeah, yeah some, something like that. I mean, of course, it would have to be how we'd figure out how, you know, I would tie in the, uh, the, the CPU because the CPU would still be on the board and it would probably have to have some type of like tubing out to, to cool that. And that would kind of go out like that. But I, I like maybe this, this thing of that. I don't like conventional design. Um, you know, I think... Um, that's one of the things I actually respect both about a lot of the work you guys done is you guys sometimes look at things and say, why does it have to be this way? I'm actually, from a vendor perspective, one of the things I'm so passionate about is saying, why do we have to continue to have this form factor? Why do we have to continue mm -hmm. to have this look and shape? Standardization is great. It's given us a lot of flexibility, but this is where I want the next 20 years of the community and the people that we work with to help the bash and saying, let's change the perspective. Let's change the dynamic and let's make it look different because the reality is none of this is, a requirement, right? There's a lot of flexibility here. And so um, hopefully it's going to get interesting. Uh, JJ, I you, think it already is interesting, right? Yeah. Uh, JJ, do you think at the end of the day, the responsibility falls onto the manufacturer to kind of, kind of be more, uh, 
not let's not say creative, but be a little bit more open-minded in their design to be like, you know, there's so much we can do if we just stuck away from the usual form factor and like the possibilities that could open up if we, you know, if someone was willing to change the shape and like maybe not always yeah. a square. Um, I'd say yes and no, because there is a, a hard actual level of feedback that's required from the user and even from, let's say, individuals like Jay, if you're in a review position, because let's say we go about breaking the convention. Let's say we were to give you an entirely different motherboard that had a lot of what I talked about. Mm -hmm. What would be the challenge? The challenge might be, well, it doesn't work with all these other items that are standardized in the market. So you're going to view that as being a critical or maybe a potential negative, even though it might have these other positives, right? So you have to hit this really balance of allowing that there has to be enough of adoption and recognition for progress to occur um, and not also stifle innovation. And I think we've been very mindful of that. I mean, things like aesthetic design, when we take a look at a motherboard, most motherboards for a long time looked like this. And now we've got boards that have shrouds. People think that it's not a big deal. We were the first vendor to actively design and develop that an aesthetic had to be 3D. It had to actually be Z axis. So vertical, not just flat. It wasn't just designing the physical board. It was, can we play around with the shape? Can we add shrouds? Can we add a different visual dynamic? And now this has become the industry trend, right? As far as what you would expect on an enthusiast product. Um, so I think our, our perspective, there's 100% an obligation and a commitment from us internally to be like, we want to innovate. We want to be progressive. We want to try things out. But it is also going to be, I think, limited to some degree by the demands and the wants from the community. And I think the community is getting more and more embracing of this right? Um, we see this, I think, in many other industries, the companies that sometimes are maybe very progressive in those spaces tend to be in closed ecosystems, right? They're not necessarily open ecosystems. Why? Because being closed allows for maybe the most agility at saying, I'm not going to pay attention to anything else. And, you know, we're going to try to design and develop things in this route. Um, for us, because we want to maintain open partnerships and, you know, of course, giving users the most choice, I think it's a balancing act of both. But, you know, we've got a big enough and deep enough uh, product portfolio that I think we can maybe do a little <laughs> bit of both. Uh, I hope we didn't give you too much work for CES coming up now that we came up with some ideas. Oh yeah, CES. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no worries. There's always good stuff to see from ACs when CES comes around. Mm -hmm. All right. As as we wind down, let's get one last question in for everyone here. Uh, just you know, you you know, Ben, you're fairly new. Everyone else has been doing it for a super long time, but I kind of want to hear what. Does, what does PC building mean for you? What is kind of this, this hobby turned career turned, you know, art form in Ben's, in Ben's case, what does it kind of mean to you at the end of the day? Like what kind of keeps you motivated to wake up and be like, you know what, let's, let's go to work. Let's, let's bend some metal. Let's fill this water cool with beer. Like what, what, what's the motive? What's the motivation for you guys? Well, my motivation is like, Basically, I'm my own boss. You know, I love I love to make decisions on a design aesthetic as far as if I'm building something, you know, it's something that I get joy, you know, I can actually make something. And at the end of the day, it's my decision to design this stuff. You know, that's 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 why I continue to do it, you know, because I enjoy creating. I enjoy creating whatever I get my hands on. You know, it's once you know that stops, like I stop doing it, you know, but it's I just love, I love the opportunity where I get these parts and it's like nothing, no one can tell me what to do. You know, I'm my own boss and I can actually put this together the way I want it. You know, it's sometimes people don't like it, you know, but at the end of the day, they're talking about it. You know, that's the whole point is people to talk about these machines. You know, it's sometimes people are like, oh, I don't like the aesthetic on what you did, you know, but it, that's fine. You know, that, that's what's cool about art. You know, we all have different opinions. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, I think it's great that we all have different opinions. You know, that's why we have stuff, what we have now, you know, because we all have different opinions, you know, but that's what drives me, you know, kind of just creating from nothing. You know, I, I just love, I love doing that. Well said. Uh, Jay? Uh, I've been asked this question a lot <laughs> in my career. And it's funny, my, my answer might seem a little bit, I don't, don't want to say cliche, but... What really keeps me going is I don't know who I'm talking to. I, when I, I'm looking into a lens that reaches millions of people, but I don't know the people on the other end. And with the amount of people that have reached out to me years later and have said, hey, I found your videos, you got me into computers, I'm now a developer for a really big firm, they went to school, um, got their degrees, and if it's finding my videos and getting them curious about something that led to their career is, is a really humbling message to receive. 
what I don't know is if I'm, if I'm not maybe talking to and, and putting a, planting a bug in someone's mind that might go on to cure cancer or do something crazy because they got into the world of tech through some silly video I created that 20 years down the road had a butterfly effect and something great came out of it. So it's really the way I try and, and approach what I do is that I'm just planting little, little seeds in people's brains of, you know, hey, be curious, uh, be inquisitive, go look, get out of your comfort zone, play with this stuff. You know, we get the very typical ans- uh, messages of you, you gave me the courage to build my first computer. And that's, to me, just the first step of what could be a lifelong passion that can turn into who knows what. It's a great answer. But yeah, like you said, courage to build a computer and then all of a sudden might give you the courage to do something else, which is exactly. just such a good sentiment. Exactly. Uh, JJ, how about you? Um, I think I'm actually really similar to, I think both Ben and Jay there. You know, um, I think the personal narrative is super important. And I think it's the most gra- one of the most gratifying things about doing PCDLY. And for me personally, and I think for ASUS, so a big thing for us is, you know, enabling our users to have a better experience, right? And being able to define one that they've done themselves, right? I think in an era where a lot of the technology and a lot of things that we utilize is heavily um, essentially prepackaged and processed and provided to us, there's not that many, I'd say, high technical products that you have the ability to define yourself, right? Um, for many kind of other things, when you buy it, for all intents and purposes, the way that you've bought it is the way that it exists. The, the kind of the current PC, you know, of, of however you decide to approach it, you know, whether it's a mini ITX, whether it's a micro ATX, um, you know, whether it's an ATX system, whether it's air-cooled or water-cooled, you can define it. You can define its performance, its upgradability, its aesthetic, you know, its form factor, a lot of different things. And um, I think that that, you know, curiosity point that Jay, you know, brought up is, is great because that just, it allows you to have a deeper understanding of a lot of the technology that exists in so many other things, right? Um, but in a hands-on way, in a kinesthetic way. Um, and then also, like I said, have that gratification that at the end of it, you've been able to do it yourself and it can grow with you, right? You can adapt it, you can change it and you can do different things with it. And once you've done everything with it, you can enjoy it in so many different ways. Maybe it's for gaming. Maybe it's because you're using it daily uh, as part of your livelihood, as, as part of your work or your profession. Um, or maybe it's kind of a balancing act bet- in, in between, right? Um, so um, I think that's for me, you know, what continues after so many years to still be super gratifying is to be able to see people, you know, uh, put together our amazing, you know, products in the ways that are personal to them and then be able to learn from them and grow from them. Awesome. Excellent answer, all three of you. Uh, just want to say, as we sign off, a very special thank you for Asus for getting us all together here. Uh, very special thanks to you, whoever's watching the show. And I uh, just wanted to uh, give everyone an opportunity to say goodbye. If you've got anything to plug, a YouTube, a Twitter, an Instagram, <laughs> please, by all means. Ben, let's start with you. Uh... My IG, uh, mostly on IG, so it's mods by Ben. Uh, YouTube as well as mods by Ben, and I'm starting to do a Twitch, uh, which is gonna be mods by Ben as well. Jay, let's let's get you to three million, man. Let's do it. <laughs> so close, we can feel it. Uh, <laughs> hopefully by the end of the year. But no, it's just Jay's two cents, uh, all spelled out with a Z. And uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, mostly YouTube. And JJ, where can we find you and all the other fine Asus products? Yeah, I mean, there's going to be links everywhere. You guys can, of course, check us out on all our respective social media channels. And if you guys have more questions about PCDIY, make sure to check us out on our PCDIY Facebook group. Uh, You can visit us at our PCDIY website, right, uh, where we've got content. And then we also have a great content website where we have guides and a lot more at edgeup.asus.com. Right. And I was George Jimenez. You can find me at PCGamer.com. There's also a magazine called PC Gamer Magazine, coincidentally. And it was an absolute pleasure being here with all y'all. And... uh, Goodbye and happy building. Take care. Thanks, everybody. See you guys.
What up everybody, Glacier from the New York Subliners here today. I'm gonna to show you how easy it is to build a PC and win a game of Warzone at the same time. Oh, we actually made it. Go hide in the gas station. <laughs> All right, boys, here we go. First things first, motherboard. It's a beast of a motherboard. I don't know, we try... I'm already dead. They did a terrible job of protecting me, man. There's no way that one person landed on the other side of the map like that. <laughs> Tom, he's gonna come back and lose composure. <laughs> Yo, let's get cash and buy him back real quick. Yeah, let's buy him back. Gotta get all the tape off. Yo, you guys suck. What happened? Dude, I'm in disbelief, bro. <laughs> we can't make it up. We yeah, it, we, you can't make this up, bro. Like, like we set a perimeter. We we locked down the area. I went to go loot a building, and next thing you know, a guy with a pistol just walks in and kills you, dude. Like, I don't know. Dude, I didn't even get the, the tape off the motherboard before I died. Like, what are you guys doing? We had a strategy. We just... That was literally just unfortunate. All right, I'm hiding on the top of this tower. So now we got the, the motherboard out. Probably first things first, probably install the processor onto it. Tom, keep an eye on the ladder, bro. <laughs> if they climb the ladder and kill him... It's looking pretty clear right now, bro. Yeah. Enemy team is tracking your position. Oh, we're being tracked. Oh, no. We got a, a Ryzen here. Ryzen 5 3600X. How's it going, guys? Help. <laughs> They're on us. There's one more. I full killed one. Oh, I'm getting sniped at. Should I just, you guys got me? I'm gonna keep I'm doing this, bro. The ladder. All right, bro, we're Gucci then. We're back. Thermal paste comes on the liquid cooling already, so we're good. Gonna install the processor chip now onto this motherboard. And we got the Ryzen chip here, like this. There you go. It's easy as that, man. Dude, they're still up on the roof. I can't look it up. First floor. Oh, one. Yeah, down the, I got one. Now. I haven't built the PC in quite a while, and that's how easy it is. It's literally just plug and play. Once you've done it once, you kind of know what you're doing the whole way around. We'll go RAM next. We'll go RAM next, and then probably hard drive. Of course, you got to have the RGB RAM. Uh, Trident Z RGB. Already got this bad boy opened up. Then you just kind of slot these bad boys in. You're going to have to make sure you open up all the tabs. Goes the other way. There you go. Tap it back in, and you just do that three more times. RAM's got to be like one of the easiest things to install, in my opinion. One for the chair, for some extra credit, but I don't know how they're gonna do it, and I think that's what's gonna be the most exciting thing. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm telling you, I mean, what's running through your brain? What do you think that maybe we might see coming out of some of these builders? You know, as a uh, professional Minecraft builder, no, I am oh. terrible at building. <laughs> I love me some Minecraft though, <laughs> trust. But um, no, I, I am so note, excited because- honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, you know, I think that we we can entertain. I don't think we're. That's why we're not judges. We're we're the the hosts. We're not the judges. But um, for me, I think some of the coolest stuff that comes out of Minecraft is the crazy builds that people can do in this thing, and how precise and accurate they are, and how the attention to detail that goes into this. And I I one hundred percent understand now why this is part of Ace's uh, the PC DIY event. Because there's a lot of prep and there's a lot of building and you're playing at the same time. So all three steps are covered in this. And uh, it's going to be so exciting. I, I remember specifically, I tried to build the dark portal from, from Warcraft. And uh, Ooh, man, it looked like a, good it looked like a, a five-year-old had built it. It was just so bad. <laughs> but I had a good time. It was fun trying to build it. And I think it's some of the coolest stuff that Minecraft brings to the table today. So does my base. Well, After 200 hours, it still looks like a five-year-old did it. And I still don't know how I was able to achieve that, but it's still one of my biggest achievements to date is that I spent that much time and it still looks like a hole in the ground with a couple torches on the wall. <laughs> I, you know, same way. I'm always just like one of those, like, let me just build my base on the side of a mountain. I feel like I'm in like Lord of the Rings or something, right? Like, let me just exactly. dwell in my cave and we'll, we'll call it good. But right. listen, like we said, we're not going to be the people judging these build todays. We have some awesome uh, judges coming in from the community. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and bring in our judges to be able to uh, show you who we got that is going to be, uh, you know, uh, judging our builds going on here today. Let's bring it all in. We have, of course, we'll start with that bottom left. We will have Simbi. You can see Asus ROG stream team member, Twitch streamer. Simbi, how you doing today? Hi, hi Simbi. Hi. 
Good. How are you guys? Up here. <laughs> oh, good. There you go. I was like, couldn't hear you for a second. I'm like, ah, okay, great. Yeah, we're uh, we're doing excellent. I'm excited to be here. Uh, what are you most looking forward to uh, for some of these builders? Um, so I'm looking forward to people just like showing me something I've never seen before. I I like watching Minecraft. I haven't honestly played it that much. Um, I played a lot of dungeons though, so I'm familiar with some things. Mm. But yeah, I can't wait to see what they come up with. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're gonna be looking forward to uh, seeing what our players can definitely come up with. Next up is Butter is Pro, another Twitch streamer, big fan of Survivor and uh, other games uh, like that as well. Butter, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Yeah, Thanks for I'm, asking. I hope everybody is doing well. What, of, well. Uh, what kind of, uh, you know, aspect of Minecraft are you most, uh, you know, familiar with? And do you think any of the, do you think any of that will give you a, a, a nice keen eye in our judging today? Um, I've been playing Minecraft since, oh man, for at least 10 years. I think I got Minecraft when it came out on the, on the 360. So I've seen like all the variations of the textures and the graphics. Uh, but one thing I'm really looking forward to in the building is that I, I know a lot of how blocks look and, for example, how stair placements could be formed into a corner and stuff and how uh, being able to use redstone to create uh, lanterns and stuff. So being able to see what how they implement the game mechanics into their build is what I'm going to be looking for. And I'm really yeah, excited to see. Definitely. I think it's going to be insanely talented. I think you just mentioned a bunch of mechanics there that I think will be very intricate and uh, important going into the build. And last but not least... We do have Zach Buter, who is the brand marketing manager at Asus, but also more importantly, a Twitch streamer himself as well. Zach, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I, uh, you know, I'm looking excited to judging some of these amazing uh, builds here today. We appreciate everybody uh, tuning into the broadcast and checking out everything we have to offer for PC DIY Day here um, at Asus. And uh, we encourage you guys all to enter all those giveaways and you know, stay tuned for some more action. Awesome. Well, yeah. I mean, we're we're doing uh, well, we're doing guys? great. So thank you for coming in. <laughs> For, uh, for being our judges. There's a little bit of an audio thing going on, so I'm trying to like time it just, just right. So bear with us for a little bit. But thank you. We're so uh, happy to have all of you here judging our event today. But it looks like we do have our builders are getting ready to start. So we'll check back in with you guys in here a little bit. But Excellion, Aquaman, and I, we're going to head in to the uh, plots of land that we have and uh, get ready to go. So I think that is what we are uh, going to head on over and do. So let's go ahead and pull up the game to be able to uh, to do that and get stuff running for you. Yeah, please, let's so jump little, right in. Uh, I'm curious. Oh, go ahead, Excelio. Story about Simbi and Butter. So Simbi uh, and Butter and I, we go back to the Mixer days, Rip Mixer. But um, we've been playing games with each other for a very long time now. And actually, Simbi and Butter, they were, they were the last people I played Minecraft with probably, I don't know, I'd say a little over a month ago we played Minecraft together and we were teaching Simbi the ropes of Minecraft. And uh, that was my last experience. And we had, like, they're so such awesome people. I, I encourage you guys to go check them out. Zach, also a buddy of mine, uh, go check out their streams. Check them out uh, when, you, when you get a second to go and um, give them some love. I really, uh, really encourage you to do that. Absolutely. Awesome. You and, and you right can see here. here. Yeah, go for it, Aquaman. Tell us about the prizes. Yeah, what is on the line today? First place, going to be getting a massive package from Asus ROG here, getting the Thor power supply, getting the Strix 3080 that you saw on display. Just that, you know, what what pretty much everyone on the planet is after, going to be on the line here today for first place. Uh, then we're going to have the Strix Z490E motherboard, the LC240 uh, gigabyte there, and then you got the entire merch pack. Uh, coming from Meta Threads on that and the gift card. And as you see there, it comes with a hoodie, shirt, mask, and hat. That entire package that you see on the right go in the first place. Second and third also going to be going home with that merch pack, though, from Meta Threads. So thank you to everyone for putting up uh, these prizes. And that's what's going to be on the line for the builders today that uh, mentioned it was going to be 14 builders. That has narrowed down to 12. So we're going to go from 12 to 6 from phase one to phase two today. Oh, dang. Oh, Getting dang. Narrow. Well, let's hop into it. We got some builds going on. We're here. And uh, I'm seeing some pretty amazing work so far. I mean, Whoa. you know, we that, had that what, theme. Look what at happened? Look at so fast. Of this. I, is this what I do with my logo? Is, stop that. <laughs> That's what, this is what I would have built in the 45 minutes. 
already. Oh yeah, yeah. Same. I want to take that a look. Pillar. Yeah, I want to take it this this desk right here. This is like a quintessential like gamer it's, desk it's that we're made. seeing already. We already did it. Lava wow. Man nine one three, and look at look at the speed. Look at the the pace wow. at which he is placing these blocks. Going to uh, absolutely Lava put Man. It what an this is already name. looking really nice. Wow, dude. Someone going all the way up like an Lama Empire Man. State Building over there. Right? Let's look at this one. Let's take a look over here. Oh, here we go. It already has the chair built. Look at this. All right. Uh, all right. All right. Hold Whoa. on. This guy's swagging out over here. If you, oh, it, how, did it take him five minutes to build that chair? Even, has, even, hey. even, even has the detail of the face on there already imprinted the into the dude. chair. It already has a logo. That's insanity right here. <laughs> can I get this chair commissioned? Are there any chair companies that can commission hey! this for me, please? <laughs> what's up, Tyler? There he is. Hey, what's up? Yeah, this is actually uh, Tyler Shanks, who is, you know, my actual, uh, you know, co-casting partner for a lot of Warzone events. And, uh, you know, is not casting today, so said, you know what, I'm going to sign up for this event and let's go. Made it through the qualifiers, is here now, and is uh, already looking pretty good with this chair hey, yes. and the he, desk. He came in. I'm looking. Uh, this is pretty crazy. What he is that down on the ground it, right there, the that, that red mind. block? Is that red block down there, right. a uh, like a foot switch or something? I don't know what that was. I, I don't know. I think it's... Missed a block in there. Do you see that? Oh, no. Oh, it's going to cost him some time. Oh, man. Yeah. That's a foul. Sure. Foul on the field. <laughs> and even... That's going to lose him the uh, final. Or maybe that's for the core. Mm. That's for the that's cable management right there. Yeah, that's the field. Oh, you're okay. right. Okay. I mean, I feel like, I feel like that'd be more like towards... Towards the back, you know, over here, yeah. right? I didn't say it was perfect yeah, cable management hole, but, you know, it was, <laughs> it was a hole nonetheless. Maybe, maybe like a phone cord or, or something just you can make it up through. Wait, a I'm phone cord? Mouse. Wait a minute. What <laughs> year is it? <laughs> Look, I meant like a phone charging cable. Yeah, oh, okay. dude's got a landline just sitting on the desk. Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. I still plug it in. Uh, plug it in. Ooh, plug let's in. take a look at this desk yeah, over here. This is looking. Oh, wait Ooh. a second. We're getting styled on. Ooh, loving the logo built in. Ooh. This is next level here. Engraving it. I do love that a lot of these guys are breaking away from the esports norm and going with the wood style desks here. I love it. Mm. This is like a table I would yeah. eat dinner at, honestly. The Asus dinner table? Is that, is there, are you telling yeah. us as an Ooh, insider that there's a new product line? What are these? What are these other lines he's doing here? Just for just Excellent for like them. detail. Maybe he's gonna do like a I don't know maybe like a around it or something. I don't know. Maybe just is laying maybe. some I down some pre block this up as he goes along. Mm. <laughs> Very way, just like really my weird. life. <laughs> make it up as it goes. <laughs> oh. All right, let's go to the this, next one. What next we, got we got plants on our tables now. Let's go. Yeah, we'll, we'll go check that one a little bit. I like this one that's going Whoa. on right now. Uh, I think this is mm. similar to that L shape that you were talking about earlier. But yeah. look at this uh, on the back here. I like this a lot. This little chain link this, kind of a little this action. A, this is a lot more modern looking. Yes. Over here. This is. This looks like a PUBG level, like a, like a point of interest in PUBG or something. I don't know why. Those vibes. <laughs> prison like it's just <laughs> yeah. that's what it is desk poi so there's a little <laughs> cut out in the corner it's like I, I can definitely see like a tower like a pc tower going yep. in that corner where there's a little uh cut out there for mm. sure i know in a couple of the well, l-shaped desks i've made like they are similar to this where you kind of you're going to have this top and maybe in this corner it'll kind of you know level out you know here in the corner just to kind of go straight across. I want to see a mini fridge in there with, with individual drinks. I was just going to see that! I want to see, I was literally gonna I wanna say see that! I want to see that much detail in that corner. Okay, so all I did was put myself in that position and be like, what would I want there? A nice yes. a, a nice cold beverage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. Let's go over here to the tiny mini fridge, though. Let's check out this plant. <laughs> Look at that plant. That's clean. Daddy Mo. Nature. Oh, rocking the Christmas skin, too? Is this we Mr. Miyagi's desk with the like the bonsai tree? Wax on, wax it off. It could be. I kind of like it though. I don't know what 
I don't know what this That's is. Nice. Is this going to be another uh, another planter? This is a, uh, food, a food processor. We're going to put your food in and... Oh, man. oh no, I think this is a coffee cup. That's a, a, it's a coffee cup. Yep, it's a cup. Whoa, that's clean. That is a huge it's coffee mug, dude. That's like a it coffee It went from a mug to... <laughs> that's, that that is the coffee pot. Uh, <laughs> I mean, freaking let's humongous. be honest. It's, it's as big as the pot, the plant. <laughs> Maybe it's a really small plant. Maybe it's not a Maybe big it's a mug, really it's small a small table. plant. Maybe. Perception he's making some right. adjustments. What are the Ooh, colors he's putting a? on there right there? Oh, oh he's making a it for, even bigger. <laughs> a for Asus. Is it a, is it a hospital mug? That looks oh, yeah, like, it looks ooh, like an H also. <laughs> that looks like, yeah. <laughs> is it like one Probably of those giant hospital. mugs you get at the hospital to drink water out of? Is that, that's exactly what it is! <laughs> it's a, he put water in it. It's he's got to make it dirty water, a? though. Let's go. Wait, okay, now I'm lost. Yeah, we'll, we'll, is that a we'll Danny Mo there to is it a figure it out. Is let's it a straw? Over, let's why, go over here. Why would you need a straw in a, in a cup? I don't even know. I don't know, man. Oh, Gamers this are is weird. All right, let's go to this alien. <laughs> Who is this? Hey, it's Vinny. Vinny b -b 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 Look at him doing some, some twerking over there. I love it. <laughs> Vinny B is the, the little brother of Zach, one of the judges. So, uh... Conflict of interest, maybe? I'm just kidding. Ooh, no, 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 no. Or, or <laughs> definite bias. For that later on. <laughs> yeah, Zach, if you vote for your brother, it's, you know, we, don't, we already know. <laughs> we got that kidding. red flag Honestly. on the field ready to throw, let me tell you. This desk like is like this, a though. very like, like Ikea yeah. build, right? It's like that, that yeah. classical Ikea, like you get the two, two drawers, and then you just put this. This is like the equivalent of like a... Uh, a kitchen desk like on the top you know or like a kitchen table on the top that's there he's got the, he's got the uh, whole it's kind of the, the classic twitch streamer setup you know that you hear everybody talk about when you talk about desks um so i kind of so like it's border kinda, more modern the red border kind of gives me like hospital stretcher vibes for some reason i don't know why i just feel like this is like a stretcher oh, no, you would put sure. an injured person onto <laughs> Yeah, if I if I look at it from this angle, it's it's a hundred percent it's a hospital stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, I want to know who out here is doing the real streamer setup and has the ten dollar fold out table <laughs> with a computer on it. That's what that's like what I want to see. Table. <laughs> yeah, somebody program a button to unfold the table and then just there you go. There's your setup. Meanwhile, over here we I got thought, I think, this is this is like a crazy build going yeah. on still. Oh, Look you know what? Layers. Is this yeah, going to be one of those one of those desks that has the PC inside of it, and like there's a glass top, maybe? Uh, Ooh, maybe. Yeah. Imagine. Ooh. So he's carving it out. I, I thought it was a piano for a it. second. I thought it was a piano the entire time too. <laughs> yeah, the whole time. We were what if it was there. a piano desk? Ooh. Uh, I do enjoy this. That, this is, that, uh, that red came out of nowhere. What are what do we got going on here? Those are our colors, though. That is true. You see our judges kind Let's of scrolling around. There's Zach Butera. Yep, they're going, what are they doing as well? I'm pretty sure they have the same question as we do. What and why? <laughs> Look at this one. I like this desk a, a lot. This is a big one. This is the desk for uh, Shaquille O'Neal. This is his special desk. This was someone who took it literally. <laughs> he's like, I, 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 he's like I'm, I'm going to build a desk, a very big desk that looks good. That's that that towers above all the rest. No 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 plants, no chairs. It said like it said it. to build a desk. We're going with a desk, baby, and going all out here with the big one. I like it. I like it. It's yeah. it's very the I mean, the. I mean, I'm not a judge or anything, but it's very I, the I detail, the attention detail is very good. Yeah, yeah, I would for sure. I would. It looks sturdy. Look at that little bar on the bottom. That lets you know that that is a that's a sturdy one. And, he, and he's got the crossbar going here. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. like, you know this is like a desk made of steel. If I tripped and fell on that, I would get hurt. Not, not the desk. Let's be serious. Oh, look at look at the L desk over here. Look at the progress they made. Looks looking pretty Ooh, good. That does look good. Looking really clean with have. those. Uh, with those oh, I thought that was a thing. trash can right there at first, but I think that's the PC. What is that? That no, I think that's I the, think the, it is. That's exactly what a PC looks like on the inside. That's a no. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, colors and all, RGB. So, it's a bunch of I mean it's a bunch of shapes and colors and it works. Yeah, I mean as a reminder, a having a PC in here is is not part of the challenge actually for this round. So it is just something like a desk 
um, or an office desk and and a chair if you wanted. So we don't, they actually don't even have to. They won't get docked points for for not having a PC or anything. So it's it's actually going to be a little bit curious because if they spend a lot of time hmm. trying to build a PC as part of this round, that's time they didn't spend on making a desk, and so it's kind of almost futile. It's a little bit useless. Yeah. It, the, the PC would be a little bit superfluous to the build, you know. So that I just realized. The so question. there's so many. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say that that leads us to the question of still, what is that? <laughs> I still think it's trash. Him, but he, he, he left it as is. I'm going to say that's trash. some weird trash you got in there, sir. That is some weird trash. I want to know what oh what is like turquoise that goes into a trash can? You know, is it is the, the a Capri Sun? Oh notes? my gosh! Tell us the way. Look at that hot chocolate. Ooh. Look at the More steam coffee. coming off. It's the spider webs using That's the spider beautiful. webs for the steam. Really, this really smart ingenious. addition there. Yep. Love the creativity there. Is and even put in the uh, darker one that, that made it look like it had a nice little shadow to it. Yes. Nice. And That's the tree a rose has, has... Or, oh, he has or a, a sacrificed rose. heart of his conquered victims. <laughs> wow. either, either, either or could go on your desk is all I'm saying. <laughs> wow. Very nice. All what right. is he building? What's he building there? The blue and the what is that that's going on right here? Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's a, a laptop or or like a laptop stand, or like a cooling stand type thing, maybe on top of it. Hmm. Who knows? You can see here we have our our other uh, desk that's close by. Uh, yet again, the IKEA uh, specialty. But this one, I like this. Look at this little wow. nice little like. I believe this I is a mouse pad, probably chocolate. like an XL mouse pad that's right here. I also love the pattern of the wood. That's more of like a, a chop block mm. style of of, of, yeah. of multiple different types of wood being pieced together. That's that's really yeah. good attention to detail. I like that a lot. That's clean. that is quite amazing. And and there's our one block down there that I, I yeah. Am I messing up as a streamer because because I don't I, have a little button point, at my foot? Point of reference, like the point of reference or something it has to be because I've noticed that on a couple of these I think. That's like our tape as oh. as commentators. They're like, please don't, please don't move away from this piece of tape. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, right? All right. Ooh, I like this. Whoa, we're getting crazy this over is, here. This is coming out a little bit nice. Whoa. Wait, what do you put on that right there? Just a little Whatever shelf. Whatever you want, baby. <laughs> right? You put put your your. Uh, I don't know. You could put like a nice little speaker on there. You could put some books if you wanted to. Maybe a uh, can I put the heart of my victim on there? Oil? You can put your heart of your victim it looks like on it there. Could fit, it looks like it, you know what that 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 could fit on all three stages of of that desk right there. Really anywhere, one size fits all. <laughs> Any of it, you know? Who knows? But I do like it. And look, here we go. Here's that cable management that we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Very important. There it, it also is. Kind of looks like a face. There's from this angle there's still that one hole that's just kind of off and maybe maybe it'll all come together but kind of looks I like two know. eyes just staring into your soul <laughs> so i want to i want to point out though let's look at this is tyler shank's build over here and look at this look at this oh this is a little bit extra dang girl rog that's logo clean. baby the Republic Getting that logo in there. Really, really only doing this for the chance at some at some bonus points with the judges. That's the only reason. Oh, 100 percent So oh, uh, we got Simbi, who is a member good. of the stream team. Zach, who is the brand marketing manager for ROG. Like, I mean, come on. This is this is what it's all about. Getting some ROG in there. Beautifully executed insane. by Tyler there. It definitely has a little bit still to finish on the, the actual desk itself. You can see his. He's kind of mm -hmm. doing that on this right side. Still has to finish up the left side, but so as far as the actual desk construction goes, nothing too, uh, nothing too fancy. But I think I'm liking the addition of the chair, and then I think the logo oh, yeah. on the top will definitely help uh, solidify the the bonus creativity points for sure. Well, how much time do we have left on these builds? Uh, that's a I great question. We're... We'll get we'll get them uh, some time. From our uh, from our admins I we're here, pretty we'll, close to the halfway point here, and it's incredible what they've been able to build so far. And look at that, so, something forming on the on the second shelf, that really tall one. And I thought that was a that was a pool table for a second. 
I did too. Or an air I really table. did too. But <laughs> air hockey D and D table or things. Although an air <laughs> hockey <Major> table, <laughs> if you have an if you have a if you have a working air hockey table that can also second as a as a as a desk, then we might be on the something here. I. Maybe what? Yeah, like wait, maybe it's like one of those desks where like, you could flip it over. One side is your PC, the other side is an air hockey table, right? And like the cooling for the or like the air for the air hockey table is just the output cooling from your desk PC. I'm gonna make a read that that's what's happening here, and it's a bold move. We'll see if it pays off. It's probably it's probably <laughs> it's nothing to do with what he's building. Here. What they're building. I think this is all. probably another one of those uh, glass top like see into your desk type of yeah. builds because there's red in there. And some patterns in there, so obviously you're gonna need to be able to see in there. Otherwise, you know, what's what's the point of putting that in there? Very true. Let's come back over here to this monstrosity. I say monstrosity in a good term because this is just obviously the uh, well, maybe might be tied with this desk over here, but is uh, one of the tallest uh, that is here. But it's looking pretty pretty decent so far. Line in that backside, some cable management. We're seeing. I think we're, my, my most impressive thing that I'm going to be looking here is the types of blocks. I think knowing the different looks of, of a couple different types of blocks is going to be really important because you can do some nice cool stuff like right here with like this pane of glass and whatever this we got going on in here. Oh, is. interesting. It, like, it looks really nice. Is he going with the half block there? Or, ooh, that's only going to be visible from the one side. So again, all, all those little decisions with all these different textures. And as you saw, especially going back to that to, to that kind of wood block top, you know, all those different colors of, of, of woods and being used perfectly and how he was able to do it at such a big scale and as consistently, that's that's someone that knows what they're doing here. Absolutely. Let's take a look. Shaquille O'Neal would Some people pleased. were kind of away. Shaquille O'Neal would be great. I mean, hey, if Shaquille O'Neal, <laughs> you know, everybody's working from home now. You know, everybody needs their own, uh, right. their own, their own standing desk, and we got Shaquille O'Neal's desk, and we got Yao Ming's desk oh, over there on the other side. You know, just... what's that moving smoke? Wait a second. Ooh, oh. is that a human? A little fire dude. inside of it. It is a little fire. <laughs> Would you like to drink some fire, sir? <laughs> I think that is now oh, a a cup of coffee. Oh, absolutely. I'm more curious. What is this little red thing on the side? What do you think that is? I mean, that's a, is it just an exclamation point? Um, oh, yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a sword. Uh, 100%. <laughs> that's, that's, that's 100% yeah. a, a, a weapon to bludgeon his enemies. Like we were talking about earlier. That's, that's exactly what it right. is. <laughs> look at, uh, look I, at this tree as well. This tree is just also just <laughs> Gar, I love what we're seeing here, but also just like some of the scale. I think we need to work on scale unless, I don't know, maybe uh, Seismic is the type of person just to have, know, you know, a miniature uh, forest on their some desk. Trees are, some trees are kind of big. I've, I've seen them. They're out there. I've seen, I've seen the big, they're big trees. They're out there. I've I swear they're there. <laughs> I've seen them. Ooh. Do you, Look at this, do you too, think maybe? this tree would get in the way? Oh, this is, this is it's a sit-stand uh, rising desk. I'll, I don't even know if it's going to work, but... Maybe it will. I don't know. He's got some space in there. Maybe do some some, some wizardry, as Aquaman put it. Yeah. That's what I've been waiting to see. I want to see some red switches come out doing some crazy things that I haven't seen done yet. 6,000 YouTube videos later, and I still don't know half of what can be done in Minecraft. Oh, I'm, I'm right there with you. Let's take a look back over here. Oh, we have some, some definite uh, elements coming up over here. Here's that checkerboard. I like this. You got a very simple stool we have going on here. And then the rest of the desk going on. So that that uh, mat. But it looks like the rest of it is coming up pretty nice. It's looking That's very really sleek. This is this is like the CEO's desk over here. This is not just any old desk. This is the CEO's Listen, desk. Whoa, look at the, look what we got on the back side uh, here. By the way, with with how many different woods are are on that table, you bet, Danjo. There's there's Brazilian walnut. We got everything's on there. <laughs> Brazilian walnut, nice. I love how you just know that. Fantastic. When you look like Ron Swanson, you kind of have to. True, yeah, <laughs> you kind of got to know everything. <laughs> got to play the part. Let's take a look at this other one that is over here. This is the desk, of course, with the, uh, <laughs> the heart. Yeah, I mean, maybe that, that's a pretty big pencil, too. Is, 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 is that I, a, I feel is like that this that might a be a okay. desk brand. Dude. It's a big dude. I, 
right? This feels like when you're in a when you're in like preschool or kindergarten, right? And you kind of have like the really small chair, but everything's real big around you on your desk and everything. That's this is this is for our kindergarten gamers out there, you know? <laughs> Who have yeah, the slain so. victim the slain victim's hearts on their desk? Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. I also like. I'm trying to figure out what flower that could be. You know, we can sit here and guess rose, but I'm, I'm trying to look at it from multiple angles and see. Either way, beautiful addition to this I, desk. It has and to I, be, and, right? and I love the different ways that they're able to capture similar things here from the from the builders. You know, of capturing a cup and potentially a hot cup of of, of Joe or a, you know hot chocolate here uh, as it gets colder, and be able to capture the smoke in different ways and utilizing the cobwebs versus the actual smokes and setting a fire. Uh, I like it. All those little subtle differences in trying to capture something similar. Yeah, I think that I don't know if that's a cup of of like hot chocolate or coffee or if it's a bucket of like muddy water because that thing is humongous. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> <clears throat> See what we got, got going here over here from Uncle Drew. Uncle Drew, nice. Old desk Looks light like a stack of lamp papers. thing there. Yeah, that is a lamp. I, I feel like there's definitely some glowstone that you could probably throw in there. Maybe, maybe make it work. Uh, you know, a little bit better. Yeah, maybe like do a, you could do a light switch or something. Definitely do that. Like a lamp. Hmm. I do love a love a lamp. I love that lamp. Like it might yeah, what is a a, a <laughs> headset holder? You know, with a little hook on top. And Ooh. You, just, oh. you know what? You're right. So We're dumb. You're right. You're smart. <laughs> I listen. There, there, there's a 99 percent chance that, that I'm wrong, but I'm just trying to think. Like, <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It, it depends. I like the trash can, though. I still like the trash can. It's an interesting yep. uh, addendum to the uh, to the build. So we're about a little bit. Uh, you know, I think uh, roughly, if I if I'm my math. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a quick ad break. And when we come back, we're going to check in with our judges, see what they are seeing, see maybe what builds are looking real good to them. And we'll, uh, you know, just get on to the second half of this build battle for the, uh, you know, kind of part one. So when we come back, we'll be jumping back into that. This is, of course, the Asus Elite Games celebrating the Asus PC DIY day in our Minecraft challenge. We'll see you back here in a little bit. Leg. You need Elite Gamer. Cox.com slash gamer. Up to 32% less lag. See the difference for yourself. Put you in control. Elite Gamer is included with panoramic Wi-Fi at no extra cost. Download, sign in, launch. The ROG ScreenPad Plus is an expansive touchscreen that is seamlessly integrated into select gaming devices. It gives you all of the advantages of a second screen wherever you go, revolutionizing gameplay, content creation, and day-to-day -day productivity. To enhance your experience, ROG has also developed a suite of intuitive controls and apps that make using both screens together seamless. App Switcher allows you to quickly swap tasks from one screen to the other so you can shift gears and multitask faster on the fly. Add lets you put your favorite apps on the ScreenPad Plus Quick Launcher for faster access. Apps opened through the Quick Launcher will automatically open on the second display. The ViewMax function allows you to display content across both screens at once adding a new dimension to your full screen experience. Organizer divides your ScreenPad Plus into two or three zones to maximize your space. Apps dragged and dropped into the shaded blocks snap into position. You can also transfer your work from one screen to the other with Task Swap. Tap the Swap button on the ScreenPad Plus launcher to change your focus instantly. Set up Task Group to automatically open up to five apps on both screens at the same time. Take snapshots of apps you use together frequently 
and load them all at once with a single tap. Tap the App Navigator icon to manage all of your open apps in a scrollable list view. Finally, Quick Key lets you create custom hotkeys to trigger complex commands fast. These hotkeys adapt to any app you use, letting you create custom shortcuts for gaming, editing media, and producing streams. The ROG ScreenPad Plus gives you the flexibility and power to reimagine your workflow. Let us know how you'd use a second display to take your game to the next level.
All right, everybody, welcome back. Hope you going on here at Asus. Now we have, uh, you know, we're running into the end of the time. These builders have roughly about I don't know, seven or eight more minutes to finish up and wrap up their build. So we're going to be checking in well, across the uh, builds here, see what we have. And then we're going to be checking in with our judges to see, you know, hey, who's who's made, really making waves for them? Who's looking good? Oh, and then we're going to give them right some time to deliberate and we will figure out who is moving on. So let's start over here in this corner with Mr. Tyler Shanks. This is that amazing ROG logo that we saw earlier, this Minecraft chair. How's this, how, how's this looking like it's evolved for you guys? Aqua, you go first. <laughs> Absolutely. I was going to see who was going to take it, but yeah, loving what I'm seeing here. Just the simplicity of it, right? Ha having, having that ROG logo there on the desk, the custom chair here for Minecraft, and how quick he did it was actually kind of scary because that chair was up before we even got in game. And so he's just been able to kind of pick away at the, at the minute details here on uh, the desk and adding a Rubik's Cube, a, another massive, massively tall cup of water. Uh, and another overly sized pencil here that we got going on. Loving the uh, addition of the plant. You know, we're, we're seeing a lot of the, uh, similar things on the top of the desks. Uh, it's just how they implement them. Love the uh, originality of adding the Rubik's Cube, though, on his personal desk here. Uh, really clean so far here. Out of Tyler. So, you know, you know, in the olden days, they they had uh, they didn't have bathtubs. They had they carried around like buckets of water and like just like wash themselves and stood up and like just wash themselves. I don't think that's a cup of water. I think that's just like a portable bath because you're sitting gaming for so many hours. You just you got to take a quick bath while you're gaming there. You don't want to like leave the desk. You just do it right there. Just <laughs> is that a <laughs> sign on yourself. it? That is a sign water that says is water is hey! the best drink. <laughs> Nice. Let that, okay, well. Let that be a lesson to everyone watching today to stay hydrated. You know, if you're out here streaming at a desk like this for uh, a lot of hours a day, just remember to stay hydrated, hydrated, you know, get that water bot going. And uh, I think that that's the lesson that Tyler's trying to teach here. That's right. Mm. That's right. <clears throat> so something that um, I personally worry about with some of these builds is that people are going to start, you know, they're, they're going to be, you know, done with the base you know, model of their design or whatever. And then they're just going to start throwing stuff on left and right and maybe having too much stuff. I, I worry about too much clutter on the desk. And, you know, simplicity is beauty, in my opinion. So the more the more simple, I mean, I'm not a judge, obviously, but the more simple you can keep it as long as it's clean and, and it, you know, meets all the criteria and it's well done, I think that that should be the goal. But, you know, there's no hurt, harm in adding a couple things here and there, like that giant creeper on this desk right here. It looks, yeah, looks it looks great. Let's take a look at this that's uh right next uh to that one desk that we saw i am digging this i like the asus logo it's uh looking real great that creeper a little bit uh maybe a little bit off proportions but i think maybe we'll let it slide uh for uh you <laughs> know putting up this maybe it's a plushie can we see under see the desk under the because desk? this is someone that that, that I, I remember them putting a lot of work in uh oh. inside of it is there any kind of detail no just 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 one solid piece that's actually not what i, expe I was expecting from this one when, when we first saw so it i being think built. yeah this was the one that we had originally thought was gonna have a glass top but i think what we saw inside was this this red line around the desk and then the tops of these these legs that they have here that's what we saw inside yeah uh, and then they just yeah. covered it all up so it is is a very thick with like five c's desk you can see how thick that is <laughs> uh, but it definitely that's, has a lot of detail that is a it. strong strong desk right there it is <laughs> indestructible i was actually noticing that on the last build uh to the left here if you if you look at the chair the chair's uh little little center rod there is incredibly thick that is a that is a strong chair that we've got over here oh yeah, yeah it the, is i love the the wheels thing. on it <laughs> look at the wheels <laughs> wow this is a chair of the future dude three wheels per leg why not <laughs> and, and a, it's like it, an octopus <laughs> And a and a six inch in diameter, uh, you know, center piece there that's holding it all together. Very very strongly built uh, built chair here. I, I would like to see a little bit larger of a cushion for us big boys. You know, just just personally. Uh, uh, yeah. But love the attention to detail on this one. This is looking really, great. Really nice Let's chair continue uh, continue moving on. 
Go see what we got we, coming as we on got about, over here. Got about th three more minutes on the build as these are coming to life. And this is a lot more of a nature theme than over here. Even kind of being built into the ground even with the growth. This is cool looking. Wow. Oh, wow. This is actually pretty cool. Yeah. Like growing. That's clean. I like that. That's it's creative. It's clean. It's they wanted nice. theirs. They love it. It's out in the woods, this is something very relaxing that, that you're going to work at. And I think that just aesthetically, this is this is incredibly clean and has that that multi multi, you know, wood grain to it there on the main desk and just completely said, screw whatever he was building there and deleted it. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like, you know what? I've got a couple minutes. Left. Let's just uh, let's just go ahead and leave that off. And I it looks like he's he's done with it there. Apparently, lots of people play with rubik's cubes on desks i don't know do you guys do you guys ever play with a rubik's cube it's been one of those things no, i've but... always wanted to get good at but just never have taken the time to is that the tech to like getting better at minecraft too like should i start playing with a rubik's cube and we got you know and it, this is insanity over here that's a bowl of ramen whoa it... oh i had ramen the other day delish and that's a naruto <laughs> look how big that naruto is that, that is naruto and a giant bowl of ramen that is going to be some extra points right there that is and insane another another gallon of water that's just a clear gallon of water 99 cents from the local <laughs> store just dump eight it all over yourself while you're... yep yes. eight hour stream coming in hot <laughs> ready to go over here and you can see there that that Naruto symbol as well. I'm this is insane. This is looking really nice. And this was on top of the desk that we already really enjoyed that had just a different look to it mm. than any any other desk that we see here, which is that that metal mesh looks really clean. You know what the so coolest part about these the, is uh, is that they are like this is all basically impromptu. None of that they didn't plan any of this because because we released what like the design or like like the concept to them just before they started building so all this stuff is just impromptu so that a whole naruto thing is impromptu all of these designs are impromptu this is so impressive to me you can see here on this point the uh, uh, desk has this nice this little asus pc on it and a different uh eraser over there so you know strain away from the just pencil path get a couple extra accessories on here but yeah, this was this was this was the monster build right here of 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 trying to capture the scale of it all, you know, towering over every other desk before it and going for the big points quite literally. I like this uh I, this might be the best coffee mug we've seen yet, at least as far as form goes. You know, I would have loved to see, you know, maybe similar like you can see kind of in the background over there, the coffee mug that's steaming up. You know, I would love to see that in this cup. I think might have been the best coffee mug we saw. That's a nice handle on it. It looks like it's got some girth that you can really wrap your hand around it, really clutch up your coffee in the morning when you need it. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Let's keep on moving. Oh, boy. What do we got? Okay, so this right here caught my eye the moment we came back. Look at the, look at the detail on the desk, but can we talk about the plate of bacon and eggs? Oh, is that what that is? That was, wow. I was wondering what that was, too. And there's a, is that a fork right there? Okay. Yeah, yep. okay. I see it. I'm starting to see it. I could be wrong, but it's the first thing I saw. And I know that's my second Ron Swanson joke tonight, but I can't, I can't get away. <laughs> or maybe it's the heart of someone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he, I don't know either why we're doing your Minecraft listen, build house and you guys are like, way, this is the heart of their dead enemies. <laughs> either way, it's protein, okay? Let this be a, either way, it's oh protein. Oh my gosh. It's protein, okay. Let's see. This is uh, Vinny B's to the right over here. Let's go take a look at what we got going on. Looking pretty solid. Nice. That's what I was talking about with simplicity is beauty. It's just, you know, simple, but. High quality. I like the chair design. Looks good. The, good the chair, seat yeah. is a little short, but that's okay. That's one thing I've noticed like, on a couple of these is are, are the you know are the scalings of the chair where that back piece is might, might be a little bit too large in comparison to that base. Um, but hey, it's all about back support on these things too. What does this G Dude, this stand might... for? I don't. Oh, it looks like there's maybe a, a sign. That that looks like another gallon of water. Look, look, it's a handle energy and drink. Oh, energy, just G energy, drink. energy drink. Is it, is it <laughs> G drink? 
<laughs> is it a G ring? Is, <laughs> is it a disposed thing or is it just a giant a giant cup again? Well, the thing the thing I want to point out here is uh, like let's get this angle. This cup is about the same. It's, it reaches up to about the seat it's... of the chair. This is this is like a multiple Jeez. gallon uh, cup. That right. just we need to have an intervention with Vinny B. <laughs> we much. definitely need to get that looked at. That caffeine intake might be a little high for that thing. A little bit head. too, a <laughs> little bit too much. <laughs> oh my goodness! He just dunks his head in there and gets gets what he gets what he needs. I don't know. Yeah, time washes his hair. I, all, I don't know. I, did, I think this looks really good. Practicality on that one. Yeah, I don't know about practicality on that one, but hey, go crazy. And speaking of practicality, holy goodness, look Ooh. at the detail that is in this uh, sliding drawer here. That's that's going to stand out to the judges. And yeah, this is looking really, really nice. And it is 6.04. Oh. So I, I do believe that the builds are probably complete at this point. So I believe the builders have stopped. So let's uh, go ahead and give us a quick second as we bring in our judges. We get to hear maybe who is really impressing them so far. We'll give them uh, their time to deliberate a little bit. We want to talk to you guys about some Asus while they do that. And then we'll, uh, we'll do it. So let's go ahead and bring in our judges. How are you guys? Uh, how are you doing, judges? And our someone was sick. That's funny. Let's so they, what they put in chat, Simbi, was that since me and Zach are the only ones, okay. and the third judge I don't is know watching if they from can Butter Fieldy, they're like, try to, <laughs> oh, try to be uh, yeah. extra, extra nice to <laughs> Butter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's hey, why that guy, judges, that's how are you guys doing? Me, uh, gold. <laughs> Judges can hear us? Hello. Give me two seconds. I just need to mute all of Hi. your discords. Hi. Good. How are you? Twice. Hi, guys. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Great. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So here we are. We are ready to hear, uh, you know, what bills are really impressing you. We're going to ask each of you. We're just going to go right down the line, see uh, see who, uh, who you guys are looking at. So we'll start with you, Simbi. What two builds are really uh, looking uh, great for you so far? All right. Okay, so from the start, uh, we all love Daddy Mo. Um, he had a nice sturdy desk, and the aesthetics were there. Um, he put he started with a plant, which I'm all for. Um, there was a drawer that he made with a bunch of like maybe equipment in there, which is you know you need some storage space. Um, and then at the very bottom, there were gold details, um, which was really awesome. And there was a large like coffee mug, which is much needed for streaming. You need a lot of caffeine, so I like that de detail right there. And then, so yeah, he was one of our favorites. And another one that I liked was Tyler Shanks. Um, he had a really sturdy desk, and there was the ROG logo on there. And then on the chair, there was a creeper um, that he put in details in the chair. And then it was red and black. Um, and then, yeah, the color aesthetic was perfect for me. And then he gave butter, um, some butter, which is really awesome. <laughs> um, and really funny at the end there. But yeah. Those were two of my favorites. It was really hard to pick. Honestly, like I have so many notes written down. It's ridiculous. Um, I loved literally all of them, but those are my top two favorites. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for those butter. Who were your two picks uh, that we needed to maybe really impress you the most through the build process? Oh man, that's that's rough. These these all these builds were really good. Um, I'm very impressed. Uh, but like I said in the beginning, I want to look at the small details to see how close they resemble to like desks and what I know in uh, in, uh, in in real life. So first off, I'm gonna go with Grass Nick. He is the one in the middle with the the big white desk, which is kind of insane. Mm. It's very huge. Um, so the first detail I noticed was that on the on the bottom where it's holding the desk up, there are two buttons on both sides holding the desk together to rub to I'm assuming resemble a screw, which is kind of cool because you do need to screw the uh, the two bottom desks together so they don't fall apart. So that was a really cool detail with the button to represent the screw, which was nice. Um, and then it has the lower desk, the little pull thing that you could pull out of the desk, so you could put like a, a mouse pad or like some paper. And then on the top. He has a little tree, which is very nice, uh, kind of like the, the aesthetics, the pencil. And then he has this really cool light bridge going off. I don't know 
what it's supposed to be, but because I, I think I have to go with like an LED themed, and I really mm. like the sea lanterns. I think it's a great pick because it's like a, a nice blue glass, which makes it really pretty. Um, so that was my first one with grass snake. Um, so that was that was my favorite so far. And then my second one that I enjoyed a lot was also, uh, uh, I guess you could say tied in with the LED, was uh, Lava Man. He has a black desk with like, a red outline. And I like the rainbow glass that he has with the, the, redstone, la- the redstone lamps. Uh, I didn't see anybody else have like, a, a rainbow color to it. So it really uh, you know, drew my eyes out. And I really like the aesthetics to it, the coloring. The desk is small, which is okay. Uh, but I do like that the, the rainbow aesthetic was there. And then the red, white, and black is really clean with the cup. And then there's like a plate of food because, you know, having food on a table is normal. So uh, that's kind of funny <laughs> that he added that. Um, but those two are really good. The coloring was amazing. I, I respect the food, man. You know, bacon and eggs are a great meal. The fork is a fork. So that's nice. Um, <laughs> so everything else was great. Uh, the two desks, those are the ones that sent out. And then everybody else was amazing. Um, but just because of those small little details is what uh, drew me to them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for those picks. And last, but of course not least, Zach, what desks really uh, seem to impress you uh, through this build process? Well, like all the other judges, I would have to agree with them that all these builds were amazing and all had their own unique characteristics and so it's extremely hard to uh, you know, choose two, uh, at least from, from my side here. Uh, but uh, with that being said, I think the one that kind of came to mind right off the bat, uh, I think it's Cow Warriors, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to enter this plot. Uh, yep, Cow Warriors. So, yeah, I think right off the bat, I think the one thing that we notice as a group here is that, like, if you go and read the desk, you see that he's got this cool, realistic chain uh, chain design underneath, which actually makes it uh, more realistic. I don't know. I like I, I do like the design. He also took into consideration um, some gaps here, so I can see that helping out with some cable management. Um, and then if you go to the top of the desk, uh, I mean, he's obviously, you know, got his own theme and aesthetics going, which is the Naruto. You know, I'm not going to lie, I'm a Naruto fan. So I think that helped play into, mm-hmm. you know, the little decision here. But uh, I think overall it was, you know, well-built desk. And, uh, you know, I, I like the, uh, you know, his own little personal take and design on it as well. So I definitely stood out. Uh, but, yeah, for the second one, uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I, I think... I'm going to choose one here. I actually did really like, um, let me go over to the plot. I think it was Bullet. Uh, Speedy Bullet. Um, his design was kind of over the top. He took a little bit of everything in the, uh, into consideration here. Um, we have the PC uh, you know, desk that ha- has this nice little RGB uh, red effect going around it, so it definitely you know, stood out when the lights turned off. Uh, but also, you know, with the desk, he also took into consideration c- cable management. Uh, he put in kind of two two slots. Um, and, uh, and I really did, did like that. It kind of stood out um, as some of the contestants did really uh, you know, look at the cable management side of things. Um, and I think when you get on the top of the desk, the one thing that actually drew me in that I didn't notice at first was the, uh, the plant. So he actually has flowing water here. So it actually makes a nice aesthetically pleasing sound. Um, it just looks nice overall on, on top of his desk, and then um, has a lot of uh, you know shelving space, and you know, the pencil was a nice touch as well. So I think uh, yeah, yeah, he's pretty cool. He's got the, the second you know, second choice for me. Awesome, thank you so much, all of our judges. We are going to give you some time to deliberate amongst yourselves, see who uh, you know you think is going to be able to move on. That we do have, we had twelve builders here, the top six are gonna be the ones moving on to our uh, you know, second phase of this build challenge. So we're gonna leave the judges uh, by themselves to uh, go talk amongst themselves. And when we come back, we're going to, uh, when we can bring them back in, we'll figure out who is going to be uh, your six builders moving on. So judges, we'll come back to you here in a little bit, but we have some stuff that we'd like to be able to talk to you about the chat while they uh, have that going on. So we'll catch back up with you in a little bit, judges. All right. Well, now that they are over there, let's talk a little bit about yeah. why we're even here today. Uh, 
you know, uh, of course, today is the, the Asus PC DIY day. Uh, we've had an amazing day full of all kinds of great resources, materials, videos, everything to help you as an enthusiast uh, learn how, how you can build your own PC. And I'm going to let Excellion here tell you li a little bit more in depth about DIY day. All righty. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, let me talk to you real quick about the, the PC, Asus PC DIY. If you don't know what DIY, DIY stands for, it's do it yourself. Um, if you go navigate over to, we can get this link dropped into chat. It is the Asus PC DIY uh, official landing page, and it goes over everything that's going on today, and it talks about prep, uh, building, and then playing, and all the things that go into building your own PC. It's really, really robust. It talks. It has guides and uh, individual uh, components that you need for your computer, and it breaks it down into a really easy to understand uh, just explanation for you all. Motherboards, graphics cards, AIO, etc. Uh, but this event in particular is to encourage people to to, um, to use some of the, the amazing Asus products that are out there. Uh, some of their motherboards, they have graphics cards, coolers, they, they have everything that you need to build yourself a powerful and uh, reliable PC. I myself have the, the GA15 desktop PC, which came pre-built, but I took the liberty in, in honor of this DIY event to remove the motherboard and put in the B550F gaming motherboard and throw a capture card in there, and it's become like a, 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 a streaming machine. And so I've taken that and I've, I've turned it into something using some DIY elbow grease, if you will. Um, but if you guys have any questions about the PC DIY, uh, make sure you go come to this this site, the, the landing page. Uh, there are giveaways happening. Uh, make sure you check out the, the DIY hub there. Um, you can go and, and browse all of that and learn and and be rewarded with all kinds of cool prizes from this event. And uh, it's been an honor to be a, a part of it. And I encourage you guys to take advantage. And, and you know, I, I, I built my first PC when I was 14 years old. Uh, and I have loved hey. building PCs. I, I, I won't I won't buy pre-mades anymore, not because I don't want to support anything, but it's because I find it challenging, I find it fun, and I, I like to be more creative in my particular build. Maybe I want a, a certain component that might perform better than, uh, than another that the pre-built won't get for me, and so I will take the liberty to, to install that. And all of that can be learned on this site. Please go take advantage of this and learn for yourselves, guys. It's really cool. It's a really cool skill to have, and uh, it'll teach you a lot in the future as well. Yeah, I mean, one thing that you did bring up that it's going to kind of be a nice little segue into something else I want to bring up is that, you know, I'm a big fan of, of you know, building your own PCs. You know, I've been doing it since, okay. I mean, I think literally for 10 plus years now at this point, multiple number of mm -hmm. builds that I can probably that I would like to admit um, <laughs> that I've uh, put together. But, you know, you said something, you know, I'm with you. I always want to build, you know, everything myself, but sometimes you just can't always build everything by yourself. One of those things yep. you can't just build by yourself. Well, that's a laptop, right? And uh, yeah, thankfully, true. Asus has thought about that. Uh, and they have come out recently with the Zephyrus Duo laptop. And this is a laptop unlike any other thing you've seen before. So I don't know if maybe we can like run that video while I just kind of like talk about the Zephyrus Duo that we, we got here just to kind of show you guys. So you can see here, this has the ROG screen pad plus on it. And what the screen pad plus is, it's a 14 inch ultra HD 60 Hertz secondary display that tilts up at a 13 degree angle. And so you can open up apps, you can drag them down to that secondary screen. You can use them as you want. It's uh, it's gonna, it's really, really nice, but also that's really cool. The ROG screen Some pad plus game is developers uh to actually you know integrate with the game to give you additional information on the bottom which is really <laughs> insane honestly i i love it you'll see it here kind of throughout this uh this video that's playing but my favorite part actually about this laptop isn't this really uh ingenious you know screen pad plus that's on the bottom here it's actually that you can get this uh monitor the display that comes on the laptop in one of two different uh styles you can either get a full hd 1080p uh, you know, uh, a display there that goes up to 300 hertz. There are some gaming monitors that aren't even at that level yet. So if you want to be able to game on the go, that's going to be insane. Or if maybe you're a more creative type, you want to be able to edit on the fly, you can also get it in a 4K resolution that goes up to 60 hertz. So that's really, really insane, honestly. As a content creator and gamer myself, something like this is just 
honestly, you know, next level. And then on top of that, there's just all kinds of extra goodies on top of it, right? When that screen pad plus is up, you know, you're going to get all kinds of extra uh, cooling that goes in there, which makes the laptop actually even quieter. It has kind of like this really nice form factor to it. But more importantly, the thing is powerful and just capable for heavy loads, you know, both work and play, you know, powering the device is the 10th gen Intel Core i9 processor and NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super graphics card. And the unit can also be configured with a 10th gen Intel Core i7 processor instead of the i9. So even a little bit of a little, as we're talking about DIY, sure, maybe you can't swap stuff out as you want to. But what you can do is be able to kind of pick and choose and configure the app how you need it or the, the uh, laptop, how you need it to fit your uh, play style, to fit your lifestyle uh, and all that stuff. So the Zephyrus Duo, this thing is just an absolute monster. And uh, I'm really happy that Asus has been able to come out with, uh, honestly, just kind of the, what I like to consider like the next generation uh, of laptops, to be completely honest with you. But uh, I, think we're, uh, I think we're at about the time where I think our uh, judges are ready to tell us who they are. It's a place in this event fighting for. You just cut out for a second there, Dandro. What was that? I said, why don't you remind people what first place is, uh, <laughs> is fighting for tonight? Uh, <laughs> absolutely. I heard half of that sentence, and the other half went into the phantom zone here. As ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> right here, Asus Elite Games, Minecraft event, what you guys are watching, what you're about to see cut in half when it comes to builders here is uh, 14 builders competing for top three. And those top three placers are going to be getting some prize packages. First place going to get a massive prize package, including a lot of the Asus ROG products. You're going to get a power supply, graphics card, motherboard, and you're even going to get one of those liquid coolers uh, right there in the prize package. On top of that, you're going to get a merch pack from MetaThreads and a $200 or $250 gift card. And that is just first place here today. Second and third going to be going home with the DIY Day merch pack from MetaThreads, the hoodie, shirt, mask, and hat. And that is what is on the line here as we're going to narrow down from 12 builders to six. And then half of that field is going to be winning something here today in the Asus Elite Games. Absolutely. Did you ever think rising for yeah. events would include a mask? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Like, what a I'm world we live you, in. I didn't. But I like it. I do like it. Oh, because I, you don't know why I those, love it. Those MetaThreads masks are absolutely mint. They are so good. Yes. They're machine washable. Like they have sick designs. They're reversible. You can get the the little nose. Uh, you know, I, I forget what it's called. Like the nose bridge in them. The little wire that you mm -hmm. can go in. So you know, if you wear glasses, you know they're not going to fog up. They're they're super great. But we do have the names from our judges. So let's go ahead in and bring our judges back in. So that way we can talk about who they chose to move on to the second half of our build battle. Because there were uh, so many good on. builds. I, I, don't I don't know. I didn't want to be. Right. I hello, 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 judges. You know? So yeah. I tried to look at all of them. Hello. 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 <laughs> Paging judges. <laughs> Paging judges. Uh, all right. I'm just gonna. We're just gonna get to the chase. Uh, let's just go down the line. And each of you can tell us your uh, two picks for who is going to be moving on. We have six players that will be going on to our finals. So let's see who is it going to be. We'll start with you, Simbi. Who are your two people that you're picking to move on? All right. So I'm picking Daddy Mo and Tyler Shanks for my two. Ooh, okay, okay. They're all and amazing, I think those though. are nice. Yeah, I'll say, I think those are the two that you had picked uh, previously before we even came in here. So uh, uh, no surprise there uh, from us. Uh, yeah. Butters, who do you have as your two <laughs> moving on? Yeah. What up? Uh, so after careful consideration and looking at all of the builds, uh, all of them were amazing, I have decided that Grass Snake and Vinny B are my two that I pick. Uh, Grass Snake, just because of that amazing detail with the legs, I still think that was a great uh, design. The top, I love the the lighting with the sea lantern, and it was really great. Uh, and then with Vinny B, the colors was really great. The red, white, uh, and uh, black was awesome. 
Uh, I love the chair design because of how the bottom is, uh, the wheels are made. So it's very, it looks very uh, sturdy. And then the table or the desk, I should say, it has cabinets on the side that you could pull. So I think that was really smart. Uh, the very, the good detail to it. And then the uh, the energy drink that he has next to him is really, uh, really smart with the uh, the water. And it was pretty funny. So I thought it was really good. So those are my two. Yeah, I know we were talking about how absolutely gargantuan that energy drink was on the desk and how it's like half the size of the chair. That so G stands for it's gargantuan. With water. <laughs> yeah. And the label and yeah, maybe is like this. The label's like <laughs> yeah. this. Come on. <laughs> All right. And lastly, Zach, who are your two contestants that you would like to see moving on to the finals? All right. Well, I definitely think Speedy Bullet is going to be my number one there. Um, again, I, I think we just did a really good job of the aesthetics as well as taking consideration, um, you know, uh, the cable management. And, uh, you know, I just really, overall, just really like the design. Um, and then the second one was very tough. I, again, I, you know, before I think I called out Cow Warrior. Um, and I think another one was a seismic, but I think I'm going to have to give it to Cow Warrior for my second pick here. Um, but I did, I did want to uh, give an honorable mention uh, to a seismic as well. All right. So Cow so Warrior and cows. Speedy Bullet. Those are my two choices. All right. Awesome. Was Cow Warrior Very the nice. yeah? Cow Warrior was the one with the Naruto build, I believe. So uh, that was absolutely uh, really correct, ingenious. Correct. So. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, judges, uh, for your picks. We're going to be checking in with you guys uh, after the next phase of the build for some more uh, judgment coming from the three of you uh, to see who is going to be taking home that first place prize. So we'll let you folks uh, get back to it. I know, I know you guys are kind of flying around in world itself watching this uh, as it goes down, too. So we'll check back in with you in about roughly another hour. Have a, have a great little bit of an hour rest, guys. We're not resting. Thank you. We're, uh, That's great. Thank we're, we're, you. We're busy judging. We're taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, Very we're going to cool. go away. I was really surprised. Our... Oh, just... Yeah. What's up, guys? I was really surprised about um, the the picks. I mean, I mean, I, again, I'm not a judge. We're not judges for a reason. But there were some bills out there that I'm like, I, it had to have been a really tough choice because there's some bills. That I'm like, mm. man, this. This one right here, I really liked the jungle build where like the, the desk was like being grown into the ground. I really liked that. Um, and I was surprised I didn't make it, but I mean the judges, the judges have made their made their calls, and we gotta you know respect those results. So, no, we will respect them. So the uh, the builders are gonna start building at six thirty. It is currently uh, six twenty six. They got about four minutes, so we're gonna hang out here for a uh, for a little nice. bit. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to an ad break. I think that's actually what we're going to do. We're going to go to an ad break uh, before we guys okay. get these uh, builds, builds going. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about what they're building because uh, they're going to have to build a pawn. No, I guess it's not really a pawn, but they're going to have to build a pawn what they created in the first round in order to try and take home that win in the second. So depending on how fancy you got in this first round, it might actually hurt you a little bit. Uh, and you're going to have to figure right. out why here right after the break this is of course the asus elite games as a part of the asus pc diy days our minecraft build challenge when we come back we're going to be having our six competitors battle it out to see who's going to be taking home that amazing first place prize we'll see you back here in a little bit it's time time to win to take your shots with west lag for that you need elite gamer available right now on cox.com slash gamer improve your gameplay with up to 32 percent less lag experience a more predictable connection raise your game see the difference for yourself live in the moment with a real-time performance dashboard that optimizes and tracks your connection to put you in control Elite Gamer is included with panoramic Wi-Fi at no extra cost. Don't waste another millisecond. Download, sign in, launch. Go to cox.com slash gamer. Download and dominate. The ROG ScreenPad Plus is an expensive touchscreen 
that is seamlessly integrated into select gaming devices. It gives you all of the advantages of a second screen wherever you go. Revolutionizing gameplay, content creation, and day-to-day -day productivity. To enhance your experience, ROG has also developed a suite of intuitive controls and apps that make using both screens together seamless. App Switcher allows you to quickly swap tasks from one screen to the other so you can shift gears and multitask faster on the fly. Add lets you put your favorite apps on the ScreenPad Plus Quick Launcher for faster access. Apps opened through the Quick Launcher will automatically open on the second display. The View Max function allows you to display content across both screens at once, adding a new dimension to your full screen experience. Organizer divides your ScreenPad Plus into two or three zones to maximize your space. Apps dragged and dropped into the shaded blocks snap into position. You can also transfer your work from one screen to the other with Task Swap. Tap the Swap button on the ScreenPad Plus launcher to change your focus instantly. Set up Task Group to automatically open up to five apps on both screens at the same time. Take snapshots of apps you use together frequently and load them all at once with a single tap. Tap the App Navigator icon to manage all of your open apps in a scrollable list view. Finally, Quick Key lets you create custom hotkeys to trigger complex commands fast. These hotkeys adapt to any app you use, letting you create custom shortcuts for gaming, editing media, and producing streams. The ROG ScreenPad Plus gives you the flexibility and power to reimagine your workflow. Let us know how you'd use a second display to take your game to the next level.
All right, welcome back, friends. We are hey, hey, in hey. the second half of our Minecraft Build Battle Championship game <laughs> as part of uh, our Aces PC DIY days. Now, they have been given an additional challenge to have to uh, try and make it on for our six competitors. Uh, Aquaman, what, uh, what, what kind of, what are they going to have to do in this second half? All right, so in this second half, what we see before us is what these builders will have to build off of as they're going to be turning these into complete gaming setups now. We were talking about it during that first build session. If they were to turn this into an actual uh, you know, gamer setup, probably full PC and everything, we were thinking how some of these guys approached it, how they're going to do it. Uh, moving forward, we're not too sure, and that's what's going to make this so exciting, is that these guys have to turn what we have here into complete gaming units. Oh, goodness. I'm, Look uh, at what we've got already. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, Grass Snake. Snake, actually. want to make sure I pronounce that correctly. Grass Snake, uh, who uh, has seemingly created a an ultra-wide monitor. That's right here and is maybe starting on a keyboard. Do you think this keyboard is going to be mechanical? It better be. Definitely better be. <laughs> oh, there, here Ooh, comes like the RGB. Already. Yep, now we're talking. Fully customizable. Abs absolutely standard here. Is this going to be a 10 absolutely. key list? It looks like it might be. Ooh, it could be. I almost... Man, I was trying to think, like, how could you actually get, like, you know, the letters on the keys, maybe? And do you think maybe we're going to see some, oh. some signs go uh, go on top of these to, uh, you know? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe if they're or... wizards. Well, I mean, I think they are, man. Is he what's going for what's a going pad? on right here? What yep. is? Okay. Yep. I don't, yep, I don't think this is a 10 key probably... That's a numpad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that this is a, a special foreign uh, configuration of keys <laughs> that just does not look oh, wait a super wait, wait proportionate. A he, just, he just gave up entirely. Here we go. All right. Oh, yeah. He needed those arrow keys, insert home now. page up, etc. Yep. All right. Well, we'll leave, we'll leave Grassy Snack to be able Pretty to uh, get the that monitor. one. Let's Whoa. get on over here to look at that Daddy Mo. Who is starting on their tower? It looks like. Looks like we got some judge wood... inter intervention going on here too. <laughs> Seems like they're very interested in in what this is going to turn into—a wooden tower. I've seen it. I've seen it done before. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what I'm really curious about here is—I mean, obviously we have some nice RAM slotted in here. Some nice RGB RAM. Looks like we see. Uh, this is That's almost clean. looking like a. Uh, I'm looking over to my right here at my, uh, you know, uh, my ROG motherboard, and I'm like, the shroud looks very similar. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is almost looking like an RO ROG motherboard, and this is, looks like a custom water cooling loop that Daddy Mo is probably uh, oh, putting together to go nice. in this PC. Yeah, that's Definitely. true. That's looking like this is where the water is going to be held right here. Interesting. Here's Definitely my going, going for the detail here. And those judges, that's why, I think that's why the judges have their eyes over here right now because they're all about the little details and we're seeing them. You think this is enough clearance for a 3090 in here? Oh, for sure. Uh, nope. We get a, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that thing is a nope. monster. <laughs> all right. Well, maybe, maybe we'll be seeing a 3060 Ti in there or something. Who knows? There you go. There you go. That'll work. <laughs> Let's Whoa, go over here to we Vinny B. Ooh. Wow. Vinny B okay. rocking the 4x3 aspect resolution monitors over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the ratio. It's how you use it, okay? And True. he's doing it just <laughs> fine. Being one of the first to give us an actual detail on the screen as well. So, so giving us a little bit of a mm. view and a different Ooh. approach to the keyboard. Giving it an yeah, added yeah. three. I was gonna mention the the keyboard here and how like I kind of like this approach to the keyboard. It actually I feel like to me looks a little bit more like a keyboard. You can even see there it has uh, you know colored out the WASD of course as a as a gamer should and the space bar and then you and got the, the delete bar. key. Up there. 
as well. We I like it. I like board. it. Whoops. Button. Very nice. Give you a little bit of a action. So I, I feel like one of the things, like, let's talk a little bit about this, guys, where, you know, we kind of said that, you know, what you did in the first round could either help or hinder you coming into the second round. So, you know, these players had to build a full gaming setup. Vinny was one of those uh, those uh, players who, you know, hey, we can see that the, the Gargantua Cup is gone. So, mm -hmm. you know, had spent a lot of time building that and now it's just deleted. But I mean, obviously this chair is going to be really important because, you know, you can't have a complete gaming setup without a nice chair. Yeah, so that's right. Uh, obviously this coming in a clutch for Vinny after that first round, but you can already tell I had to make some modifications to the desk because, uh, well, I, I don't know. I feel like he could have kept the uh, could have kept the gamer cup, but maybe uh, maybe well, Vinny, he, he could have just rank. turned into a a PC. It was it was already the size of it. It was already the shape of it. You just take out the True. energy drink and you throw in a motherboard and you, and you get started. Oh, right wait, 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 from, from wait. You can't take up. out That's the energy drink. From Whoa, a streamer, did though. you see him? <laughs> wait, he is doing some wizardry over here, guys. I just saw him lay down the line. Wait a second, he's building some buttons. Ooh! Oh, is we gonna what see some we light up action? On? On. Oh boy! I don't. He, I don't we, know. If, we got some the red right is, now. That, is this just wires? Is this supposed to be like his way of making a wire? Uh, and yes, and that, you know, that, that is going to send it, a or... signal somewhere. It is, where is the signal going and what is it triggering? What if it triggers something well, on the I screen? I think it could just be for, for aesthetic purposes, maybe not for, for functional, but oh, yeah. if he does make it functional, that could be kind of cool. That would be some bonus points right there. It may have just been for the aesthetic of, of there being a line right there. I, we could have just been lied to. From me. Liar! Send <laughs> it over to Tyler Shanks. See what Tyler has going on over here in this build. Let's see. Let's see just how much he's going into this. Okay, he's looks like he has gotten up a couple of monitors and is starting a potential tower over here. Looks like that the tower may block be... the monitor view, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think exactly. it's going right in front of the monitor. Could be a design flaw here from Tyler. We'll see. We'll see how it unfolds. Yeah, I, I feel like you get, maybe maybe you needed to move the plant or your you know best drink ever mug. You just gotta sit over to here, be able to have in this the corner, put it on the ground. I don't I don't know. Or is, is this a dog? Is this a cat? Maybe this almost looks like an animal of some kind. This is his streamer bath. He's gonna put water in there. This is this is how streamers take baths. And gamers, they just. You know, fill it with water and soap, and you know you don't have to take a shower anymore. Just to bathe from that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. Don't wait. You Listen, guys don't do this. Wait a anything. <laughs> anything is possible here in the world of Minecraft. Okay, the, the only thing that you're limited to is your imagination. And let's see where Tyler's takes them on this build. I think that this could be a huge mistake, as that monitor has now become the most useless item on this desk. Mm-hmm. You know what? I bet I know what it is. I bet I bet you it's a cat because every gamer has a cat that gets up on your oh, desk and like walks all over your keyboard way. and your desk. Oh, True. I see it. Wait, we're seeing it. Maybe this could be the play. Maybe it's a. Uh, I mean, maybe it, it. Maybe to Tyler, his cat is part of the ultimate complete gaming setup, <laughs> which is which is valid. Who am I, I to tell is. you that your cat? I, I know mine is part is. of it or not. Yeah, same. <laughs> Oh man! All right. Well, we're gonna come back and see how Fluffy looks here, and maybe uh, maybe ten or fifteen <laughs> minutes. Uh, see where Tyler. Maybe it's maybe it's a new age computer case. Maybe it's gonna be a cat computer case. You know who knows? Okay. N okay. I think that I got lost again. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Who we'll knows? Decided here as as we move on to another Colossus. Hmm. On the screen, going with going with an interesting monitor. Is that a monitor and potentially I'm getting a vibe that that is actually hard read a light panel on the left and a monitor on the right. I can't tell so far or or he's he's adding multiple layers and then he's going to put the, the clear gas clear glass on top and form a monitor that way. Really interesting what what we're seeing here. Yeah, I have no it's idea. Smart. I mean, I just wonder at what point where where is the tower, you know? I mean, one thing about Speedy Bullet made these, uh, you know, cable management 
uh, holes here. And I'm going to be really disappointed if we see a keyboard and mouse on top here and we don't see the keyboard and mouse cables get routed down through this uh, <laughs> cable management holes. I feel like maybe what I hope we see is a PC underneath here, right? And then we get to maybe yeah. see some cables get run up uh you know towards the the top of the desk here i think that would be uh that would be pretty great to be honest with you spending a lot of time on those monitors oh. right now uh definitely gonna probably worry about pc last it looks like on the setup but he's got a couple Wait. of places he can put that pc too he's like underneath and in making... the corner as well and yeah th this is this is this is something Truly what? crazy! Is, oh, is, he, is he is he is he playing Minecraft behind the monitor? Is he building exactly Minecraft? Exactly what it is! Oh, oh. oh. big Jeez. wrinkly brain from this guy right here! Galaxy wow. brain right there! Oh my goodness, that is gorgeous! <laughs> Woo! All right, uh, I like it. I like it a lot. And you can see uh, with Speedy Bullet, one of the things, you know, yet again, taking the extra time and energy in that first round to create a gaming chair for the setup is going to just allow him to do things like this, like put Minecraft on the actual screen uh, as part of the build battle. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this uh, and, and excited to see what we got here. I'm, wait, what, if, what if he turned the flower pot into a PC case? So that also had a comment in chat. Absolutely. It was it was interesting that mentioned it could be an all in one. Um, it's not all in ones aren't in my opinion they're not typically like hardcore gamer rigs. You know, like you I guess it could be game on it. Minecraft is very lightweight, but um, you know I guess that could be what it is. We'll see. We'll see what happens with this. And <laughs> it's very cool so far. Yeah, we'll leave Speedy Bullet to that. Let's go and find some of our other uh, other builds that are going on yeah let's see what Ooh, let's okay. see how how we're making the approach over here and it looks like may have thought ahead a, a with that particular side only having the logo that that may have been a really hard read but able to make it work with what they already had built on the desk which is you know the naruto the massive massive glass of water uh and then the bowl of ramen and just having that logo over here kind of opened up a couple things we got the monitor uh we got the chair and could turn that into a mouse pad uh not too sure where we need a keyboard or anything like that and we do see the computer going on on the bottom right uh the, the rig underneath that massive desk we were wondering how they were going to implement that on the big desk when we get to that next uh builder as well a lot mm. going on here i think cow warriors could very easily turn this naruto logo into something maybe more of just like you know, an extra large, extra thick mouse pad. You know, I don't, I, I don't think that yeah. that would be anything too crazy to be able to do. And then just put a keyboard and mouse on top of it. Exactly. And it would probably yeah, be, just, yeah, you know, just continue with that layer of the out to both sides, square it off to the edge, and just count that as a massive mouse pad and stick stick whatever you want on top of it. Could work out beautifully. And we, I think that we made a a, a bank on that. He was going to put that uh, tower right there in the bottom corner, and I still think he's going to go there. Mm, you think right here got it where the, the uh, two sides here. meet? Yeah, right there in that corner. Hopefully. Yeah, we'll that's what we mentioned we'll before, for sure. Focused on the monitor right now. What? what uh, Another hmm. one that... Oh, this could be... Yeah, oh, we'll this could be come back and see. put Naruto on the monitor as well. That might be, that might be happening before our eyes. Ooh. Or Garfield. <laughs> or Garfield. <laughs> or Gar <laughs> Is this Five Nights? Uh, I, I, the I, the I, more I, you say I, that, I, I, the more it's kind of looking like Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of doing... Garfield. <laughs> Oh, this is like the uh, the uh, other dimension Garfield that loves ramen, maybe? Or, uh, <laughs> or maybe. something like that? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, He's just getting rid of it. We'll, we'll see what Whoa. it is when we come back. You mentioned it, uh, Aqua. Let's take a look at this PC that uh, Grassnick is building over here. And this is already looking uh, pretty nice. I'm, I'm digging what we have so far. Is he, he's inside there right now, building. And You want to turn your computers off before you start building, you guys. There's, this is he clearly actually, on right now. <laughs> this is part of the attraction here. Someone's in there, in your PC, working for you at all times. This is, this is just an epic. <laughs> This is, this is just a, there's a, a little wheel that he's running on, powering it. 
this is just a representation of what the Asus products can do for you. They're going to work for you, baby. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it very much. Yeah. Does not come with a tiny person in there actually working a nine to five. <laughs> now, but putting, in a lot, putting in a lot of detail to, to that motherboard right now. Well, so what, I, what I'm curious about, I don't know if this is supposed to be the RAM right here. I don't. That's think an odd so? placement for RAM. It's like it's like your motherboard is upside down almost is is yeah. what it almost looks like. Uh, yeah, motherboards maybe typically grass- face the other way. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know how that's uh, how that's looking, but grass- hey, you know what? Maybe yeah, yeah that, he, that looked an awful lot a, like a, a CPU of- block. So yeah. For someone that's been priding themselves on that attention to detail and what really attracted the judges from that first round, uh, you, you guys noticing that right there? We'll see if the judges will as well to to maybe go eh, the detail not not as accurate as 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 something like that bolt on on the cross on the legs of the table. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen some builds myself where I mean you do do this just for things like cable management and cable routing, so it's not entirely unheard of. You know, to be to be quite frank with you, but it definitely is not you know the average way that you would orient a uh, a PC there. So I'm a little uh, maybe who knows who knows, but we can see here that it looks like maybe we see some cabling that's running up uh, and in through the bottom for this cable management that is here. Goes up to the table. Is there anything added on the top? Up there, 16 miles north. Here we go. <laughs> We got okay. the money. Wow. Okay. okay. Yep. 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 Th- th- this is where we started, and that keyboard came along. Wow. Oh wow! And then we're doing that, the, the mouse that, though. That, that is some beautiful detail on the keyboard. That looks real. It does. That's cool. I'll be honest. It does look real. <laughs> that's that's the pretty mouse. nice right there. That. Yeah. That. The mouse is, is a little bit lacking, in my opinion. I do think that they could do some work on the mouse a little bit. I don't think I'm uh, I don't think I'm hitting any headshots with this uh, brick in my hand, but who knows? You know, maybe maybe just wants to come back and work on it. Is okay with it for now, but you know, can come back later on. It. I think quite literally, it is it is a brick. Like it's just made of stone, a stone mouse. <laughs> maybe it's the new it's the new model. I don't know. It's it's reliable and durable and. <laughs> It's it's got extra weight, you know, made of pure granite, so that you truly have full control over that mouse, because it's it, it's gonna be resisting you the whole time. <laughs> yeah, natural low DPI, natural grit. natural low DPI. Your right arm is gonna be so swole after an oh, you know, yeah. a session of gaming. And oh my goodness, did they turn that tower into? This was this was that yeah. wooden tower, and they re- are really going crazy over there. It's a it's a fort. This is actually wow. pretty nutty. Look at this custom loop that is in here. Hello, Daddy Mo. I Let's would like outside. to come Let's visit you. Oh. Whoa. Uh, he said, nope, not yet. It isn't done. Oops, sealed wow. it up. Just <laughs> locked out. What timing. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Well, we're going to dock some points though. for that one. <laughs> oh, gee. Just for that. Wow, the detail in there. Ooh, okay. On that look at that with the with the orange fluid uh, running through that and the pipe. That's gorgeous. That's really nice. And you can see there in this graphics card it has a little sign on it that says ROG. Has that Republic of Gamers. That's, oh, that's looking like a nice, uh, uh, I you don't know, know, ROG I Strix thirty eighty. I see some lava dripping there off of that pipe. I don't know how safe this is. Do you guys see that? <laughs> one Keep one power, drop, and that's going, th- that's going straight through the whole setup. That's liquid lava. Well, maybe this is a new form of liquid cooling where you uh, just let it. It's like a t- trickle down, right? It, it drips off of it's your condensation cool. to cool your other PC this is powered parts. by nuclear f- by nuclear fission, okay? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 10 but million you fps to, you do have to admire the creativity here on this one start top to bottom and again it was those little details that really caught the judge's eye and what caught my eye about this one was the fact that he had the drawer halfway out and had some things inside of it 
And uh, one thing I'm worried about, though, has this lamp right here. This lamp is going to have to maybe get removed. I mean, unless the screen can somehow go in front of it. Um, I almost would almost try and say uh, maybe Daddy Mo, if, if they're smart, one thing that they could do, maybe make this a uh, Zephyrus Duo laptop. I could I could see oh, that, which would make the entire uh, which would make the entire tower, you know, irrelevant. But um, I'm, right. just, I'm just trying to see <laughs> where could this monitor sit. You know, it's going to be really listen. weird. It's actually just a odd placement. Maybe he will build up a, a, a projector on the other side of his building block and shoot onto that one <laughs> lamp side and just project his screen right there. Mm. Very very smallly. I, I don't think that's, that's what's gonna that's happen, but I don't think so. Either. I think you know he's what? gonna have to remove it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm here to I'm here to, to make a hard read on, on what he's got there. <gasps> but for sure, definitely might have to move that. It looks like Naruto is about to get chopped in half in the head, invaders? though. Ooh. I thought it was a crab, like from Crab Rave. That that, that is Tony the Tiger, <laughs> like. <laughs> All right, chat. Well, I, mean, I don't know what you guys think it is yeah, out monitor, there in the chat, in Twitch oh, land. Okay, but. this is this is a Rorschach test. Chat, what do you guys see on this monitor? <laughs> this is this is a Rorschach I see space, test. I see space I invaders. I see a crab. <laughs> I see. I, 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 I see that, like a tiger. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see a tiger slash slash. Uh, was it calico cat? Mm hmm. Oh yeah. Or yeah, mm. kind of. Yeah, I guess I can kind of see that. Definitely mm. like Tony the Tiger for sure. What are some oh, more wild? Yeah, that's a good one. Hmm. It also could be All a right. crab. Yeah, that could be could Kingler. Be. I can't, could be Kingler. <laughs> that could. could be a wild Kingler. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Are there, are there hey, maybe, like maybe. a lot of crab <laughs> themes in Naruto? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm with you. We can see here. You called it out, Aquaman. Oh, here we see the is. PC there is starting is. to get built. And, uh, it is 6.57, so they have roughly about 15 minutes left. So it's uh, been about, uh, you know, two-thirds of the time. So we are getting to the, uh, the ending of this build battle. So uh, we're going to kind of take a swing back through all of these builds again to see where people are and maybe uh, where they're at, what they have to finish up. So let's uh, continue our journey over here. We'll start back way in the corner here with Mr. Tyler Shanks, who Whoa. looks like has uh, has some stuff. And uh, well, this is kind of Whoa. interesting. Oh, music, music production game. Hmm. What? Slash stream. And the cat so is did that definitely end up being a, blocking a cat? that. What is right. that over there? It looks like a koala. That's a koala. Is a domestic? Yeah. That is oh a my koala. gosh, it is. It's a koala. Why? What? No, Does he live in Australia? It, RGB the, the mouse. The mouse. Oh, it's a mouse. Oh my <laughs> goodness gracious. Could you? Uh, oh. <laughs> can we get some rim shot sound effects? I don't know. I don't know that if it's like to scale. Could be a that's could be a, a New York City. That that, that, that looks more like a koala. To Don't me. mice have tails though? I mean, a koala. It looks more like a koala to me. Yeah, where's the tail? That's why. Because I was like, there's no it's tail on there. it. It's a koala. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for for one for wireless. one little block there. I want one gray block in the top center on the back there to get that that little koala puff tail. All right, so <laughs> we're huge. confirming today that a wireless mouse is in fact a koala. If you really oh. think about it, just a big okay. wireless mouse, <laughs> no tail. I, I also just got it, and I'm ashamed. So it's supposed to be a mouse and a keyboard. Get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, 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 all right, I don't all right, know Tyler. if uh, hopefully the judges pick up on that one because I was about to say like I hope Tyler doesn't get docked points because they were supposed to be creating the ultimate gaming setup and not the ultimate music production setup. <laughs> so you have uh, to I appreciate you... puns. That's oh, right. Absolutely. He even has the uh, music That's block a... here too. That's a bold strategy, Danjo. Let's see if it pays off. <laughs> yeah. Does it work? Does it work? 
Well, anyway, and moving on. <laughs> oh, uh -oh, did you just destroy that? Oh, don't tell Tyler. Oh my uh, gosh. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Who <laughs> let me destroy it? What did you do? Get out of there. <laughs> oh, what did you well, do? it was just a music block. It wasn't anything. It wasn't like a, a delete. <laughs> I forgot I had my head oh off. Gosh. <laughs> you might want to let him know that we... <laughs> Guys didn't see anything. Well, he'll, he'll figure it out. Uh, you can see here it has his uh, PC, right? But it says 80s computer because I don't have a 3080 yet. Yet. I think well, I hate to break it to you, Tyler, but there's today. more parts to a PC than a 3080. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to win one, you may have to add a, add a tail to that mouse. That's all we're going to say yeah. here today. Oh. <laughs> You can look at it. He's over there like, where did my music box just go? He's just staring at it. Like, this makes no logical sense. He's like, what? Accidentally griefing. He's looking for it. Tyler, listen, Tyler's a smart guy. He'll he'll figure it out. We'll we'll leave him be. Let's head on over to Speedy Bullets. Uh setup that we have going on here let's take a look at it from this angle uh so far we still have that uh minecraft being played on there i don't know maybe the left hand side is like a a second monitor that just juts out 90 degrees so you can just like keep discord and whatever up yeah in, i don't know up in, on the screen looking really clean we don't see uh, a uh yeah don't see a key keyboard yet not too sure about the mouse either, but is is working on the uh, tower down below and might be feeding something up through those holes. That's what we're that's what we're hoping for anyway, right? We're yeah. we're, we're hoping. Okay, there, there's a tower. That's new. This is a monster. Which is a big boy. Which we wow. Very interesting position, like right at the feet. Oh. Okay. Ah. Okay. He's been hard at work. Pretty accurate. I'm. Yeah, and they've been they've been really detailed, and they've added a lot to this desk. You know, they got running water in that plant. You've got the monitor with artwork behind it, and you've got him adding so many different details right here to the tower. Just saw the base light up in there, doing those tiny little details. Gave himself the one little uh, one little exit there. So once that's sealed up, we'll know that that PC is done for. The one thing I hope that Speedy Bullet doesn't do, though, I mean this this PC definitely looks like it still needs some work. Right, we saw how there and you still need a keyboard and mouse up here. Uh, you know, they only have roughly about it was uh, what is it, 12 minutes or so remaining. So, I mean, hopefully, Someone... they can are able to, to do that in time. You know, I would just hate to see a lot of you know, a lot of effort put into the PC, but I mean, if you don't have a mouse or keyboard connected to the PC, that's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a bad time. All right, Dander, Absolutely. what are we gonna be breaking today? from this build? I don't. I don't want to break anything. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done clicking. Put if you put one hole in that pot, water is going everywhere. I'm just gonna point that out. I, I know. No, I, I, <laughs> just, I thought just about that. Hole. Um. Uh. We got Alex in chat that said that it, it it looks like Twitter feed on the left there on the left monitor. Hmm. Ooh. Possibly. I can see that. Yeah. Are you looking at some fleets. That are on screen there, so maybe? That, oh, I'm to the there, yeah. I've never seen oh, this kind of good. configuration of a screen before, though, so I'm I, I'm interested to hear an explanation, I guess. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just, uh, you know, when you don't have a lot of desk space, or, well, you, you make concessions where you can. Or maybe it's curved. Maybe that's one of them. I don't know. Ooh, maybe that is a curved monitor. You're right. That'd be kind of a weird... It's like Maybe a 90 degree curve, split, like you know? yeah. Yeah. Two, yeah. Yeah. A 270 I, I degree know. curvature. <laughs> this is actually uh, his pitch to to Asus for a new type of monitor. Before nice, <laughs> I dig it. I it's love the it. all right. It's, it's, Let's look at the chair real quick. Slightly bendy. Chair. It is like. I don't know. I don't know if I could sit in this. It looks like it would just break my back. Ooh, <laughs> I know those are pillows, that, but <laughs> that that might hurt. That might hurt the. What is that? The like base of your spine? What's that? 
What's that yeah. called? Like, and I know those are like the pillow, I like there's the you. lumbar pillow and the I neck see. pillow and stuff. I just, just visibly, just from first glance, you're like, oh man, this looks like it would really hurt. But I, I like the detail on it, how, how he has the pillows there. Yeah. A lot of detail in um, the upper part sticking out as well. Good detail in the base. And that's what's, been, that's what's been incredible about this entire build in particular is just the attention to detail and how much he's been able to do in the time allotted. Yeah, I think that's like my most impressive thing is even for a lot of these builds, I actually will say, I'll say this for everybody who's made it here to the second part is what they've been able to do with the time allotted is just absolutely insane. And uh, I would have the base see, of the chair oh, done by now. Like the X, hmm, yeah. I might have the X down so far. So, all right, let's head wow. on over to Ooh. Vinny B because it looks like Vinny has really, uh, right there, really made some amazing progress. Real quick, I think Whoa, that was the first check out those saw. lights. This is a streamer setup if I ever Whoa. saw one. Whoa. Ooh, I hope those lights turn on. <laughs> I doubt it, but that would be the dream, right? That I, I mean, I'm with you. This is that this is be, capturing uh, in you know, I think that we mentioned it earlier that this was someone that that got kind of the base build down so well in that first round of really just doing a nice desk. And that way he had all of all of this kind of room to play with creativity wise and room to play with here in the second round, being able to add on to it, but got that desk down really well. And now he's able to just kind of stick to the mission at hand, which is, I think, really pull off a nice gamer setup over here. I mean, this is really like looking full good. Gamer setup. We, got, we got lights, computer, <laughs> triple monitor setup, the mouse keyboard. We got, we got that microphone this there. The, the uh, yep, the microphone with the arm. Oh boy, this is looking good. I want to look at this PC. Do we have really any uh, nothing too crazy for your detail on the you inside? Can you can kind of see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me just smash it out. It'll be fine. Yeah, um, just, just <laughs> extra cooling. Just punch two of them out real quick. Yep. Yeah. This doesn't really have a lot of detail on the inside, but at least, you know, this does look like a PC, which is great. You can see it has those two lights at the top, has the webcam, the, the are those, mic. Are those CD ROM? Headphones? Are, are those CD? Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> I didn't need your CDs. <laughs> oh, oh really, nice really nice headset. Really nice headset bar here on the end. Oh, yeah, very nice. So clean. That, that has everything that you want as a streamer. That is a complete setup. Yep, yeah, Vinny B is also giant. a member of the ROG stream team, so I, I expected nothing less. You know, streamer setup is when I think gaming setup, I think streamer setup. So this is this is personally like what yeah, I probably is... would have built as well, something similar. And he has switches right so there clean. for yeah, for something. Just click it. All right, don't, don't click. It. I'm just kidding. Do not, uh, Dandro. I'm I'm, a, I'm not gonna click it for fear of accidentally <laughs> uh, breaking something again, <laughs> and then it's gone. But what I'm hoping is that maybe he's somehow rigged up some redstone to these that it will go you know, to these lights. Because if, if he can turn on the lights with a switch, I'm going to be blown away. That would be yeah, I think crazy. That's what it is. <laughs> and it may be actually the mouse keyboard as well. That might be what they I are. That because that's are the what the redstone's attached yeah. to. Maybe. Mm, true. Maybe the well. mouse and keyboard light up as well. The, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And he has Those that mixer glass, logo so... on the left monitor. <laughs> Rip mixer, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Maybe he knows to the two judges, judges a little bit. Two of the judges are former mixer cool partners. Though. He knows this. Um, so, yeah. And then Zach Butera also used to stream on mixer as well. We a lot of mixer influence here. Really good abstract art there in the middle as well. Could be anything, really. Hey, there's Vinny. <laughs> What's going on, Vinny? You. Confidence. <laughs> All right, let's let's continue on. Let's look at uh, our other build going on over here. Okay, so the lamp is gone. Oh God, I don't know what that sound is. And whoa, whoa, there's a there's a rave going on over there in that PC. What is that? <laughs> there's a rave going on I don't, what, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Or he was building really fast. I don't know if somebody's building something or it's like a, I don't know. I'm looking at a little rave no, going on over there. Every time it's you get close. Like, it's definitely some kind of music. Go over there. Take us in. Take us in. There's a rave going on in that PC. I'm telling you right now. <laughs>
That's exactly it. He is playing music on his on his stream setup. Wow, oh, that's man. definitely not annoying at all. <laughs> <laughs> come back over here we're gonna uh i like that i don't want to like that is such an interesting noise it's it's there's like thuds i think it's yeah i think it's just all the all the redstone uh getting triggered over and over and over again is is what it is but and Oof. we're also looking at right. someone who's building like a, i think that he's turning this into like a miniature tree fort as well the entire way through it's kind of cool and he has that fence going behind the keyboard going to the mouse too or are those wires? I guess those would be the I wires. I think those are wires. Those are supposed to be wires coming out of the tower, I think. Is that a sign? What, what does say? that sign say? The sign says colored pencils. Oh, oh. yes. Perfect. Oh. And then regular <laughs> pencils on the other side. Now we know. Someone in someone chat said Jumanji, and that might be the perfect thing I've ever heard as far as that sound acting. Those are, those no, are the drums Seismic right White, before you get stampeded. He's, he's the builder. <laughs> he is the builder. That's actually him. There it is. And he said Jumanji. I can't. This is, yeah. this, is, this, is, this is right before the stampede comes in, takes out every other desk, and he wins. <laughs> We're going to do something real quick here, friends. Hold on. <laughs> We're just going to. So you can see he did get rid of that lamp. Lamp is gone. Rip Put a monitor lamp. there. And this, look at this keyboard. This is a very interesting uh, style of keyboard. There's camera. some switches on the keyboard. Ooh, the ROG I, nice. And a Pong. He's playing, man's playing Pong on his He's monitor. Playing, oh, wow, I mean, dude. There is... On this beast? <laughs> yes. a He's rocking a 3090 to play Pong, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate advantage over his enemies. Seeing that in true 4K resolution. <laughs> the way Pong was meant to be played. The way Pong was meant to be played. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this this keyboard looks seen. a little bit interesting to me. Uh, you know, I guess I can see it. I will say, I, I am digging this keyboard. mouse, though. Well, I guess there's a keyboard. It looked like one of those music pad things it, as it well. It looks like an Akai MPC yeah. is what it does look like. You're correct, yeah. but... I'm going to assume that's a, that's it's a lot a better mouse. That's a lot better mouse than we saw on the other side that looked like it was made of concrete. That's that's pretty solid. True. Although although I'm definitely picking up like a different company's mouse with the keyboard. Like I would I would like that matching. Hmm. True. I think this is somebody who got that's like a, little, a, I, a Black Friday deal. Yeah. I, I think that that's uh... so. Oh, oh my goodness. On this setup in particular, <laughs> the only thing I don't like is is how much it clashes. You know, the mouse, the keyboard, and then kind of the nature theme of everything else. I think I think True. clashes so far. Yeah. Oh, but other than me, that, a nature I mouse. Love the. Well, here we go. But but what I do love is that that tower, the use of the lava to actually create uh, the liquid coolant system, beautifully executed there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna have uh... a connection <clears throat> error there. <laughs> Get get everything resumed back in just a minute, but I'm I'm thoroughly impressed so far with some of the stuff that we've been seeing. I liked the Jumanji drums. It was <laughs> it was a nice touch. A <laughs> little, little bit of a nice touch. We're we're back in. Uh so we're we're ready to keep looking. I think some of the players got kicked out as well. Uh, that's fine. They're gonna they're gonna be joining back in. They got uh, about roughly a minute or two. I think we'll probably extend a little bit, you know, maybe maybe give them another Another two minutes, you know, maybe past seven fifteen, just mm -hmm. just because of that little hiccup, because uh, it is getting close oh, yeah. to where they are trying to uh, wrap up these builds in order to yeah. uh, you know to try and to try yeah, and I move think, on. I think it was actually uh, we had a five minute warning about four minutes ago, so maybe we'll give them a couple more minutes or so for everyone to get back in, and then add a couple couple minutes of time to let them finish up some final touches. Uh, but if you guys are just joining us, welcome on into the stream. We this is the ASUS PC DIY event. We are just uh, wrapping things up with a Minecraft build battle between uh, our finalists, and uh, we've have some judges on hand ready to to pick and choose their winners. But um, before that, we're gonna just have everyone wrap up wrap up their builds and whatnot. So, yeah, they're they're gonna get a, like a, the a five minute extension here, and it's gonna go until okay. seven twenty Eastern. So five more minutes. Looks okay. like they're getting back into the server. We're going to jump back in. And it looked like most of the builders had wrapped up. The one I'm concerned about is right there in the dead center. The really big build saw that he only had the base of, of a yep. chair done. And that was it. 
with five minutes remaining, we'll see uh, if you can pull it off, as well as see how that how the computer went and connected towards the top and have that keyboard, because that's what he was working on as well last time we looked. That's that, that's my biggest concern let's, right let's now. Let's get back into the gameplay. They were pretty solidified in their builds. Minimalist mechanical. I like it. Looks like one of those one of those like Apple <laughs> Apple keyboards, just all white and just really low profile. Hmm. This mouse, a little interesting as well. You can see how we would see. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, say so we thought we thought we would see that build out around the logo for a keyboard and mouse, but they actually just decided to put in this this you know pull out drawer that you see on a lot of different desks. And uh, I think that I don't no, know what do you what do you think I about like that better. Aquaman? I tend to like this. Yeah, I think it's I think it was a really clean d decision to go for that, and the spacing of the chair was perfect too. It looks like uh, they saved the chair for last. Really smart stuff, and this is a perfect whoa. Some additions there, top uh, up top too with the light. We got the microphone here, Ooh. and man, everyone I it, I feel like has caught up to making a complete complete stream setup, which was the mission at hand. This is gonna be tough for the judges, I will say that. I want that microphone drop into the ramen. That'd be that'd be bad. <laughs> that would be awful. Let's take a look at the uh, would... the bottom here. Maybe some of the uh, what do we have going on? What do we what do we have here? Is this a, a, a trash can? What is what is this? Ooh, yep. I think so, maybe. Yep. Oh Actually, yeah, it's, have, it's uh, uh, you know what that is. Okay, you know how streamers sometimes have to go to the bathroom after for really long streams. It's, uh, you know, enough said. <laughs> Yikes! Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Very easily uh, done <laughs> when you're not on camera, like right now, for instance. That's right. Uh, what yeah. he's trying to do. Anyway, <laughs> uh, this, this PC comes with the new, uh, you know, uh, leaf custom water uh, piping Ooh. for the PC. And uh, well, sir. Well, you know, this one's this is this is the new future green PC right here. Okay, it runs off mm. photosynthesis. Those leaves in there. Once the sun interacts with those leaves, it then converts that sun energy into real energy, thus powering the PC. Which is how photosynthesis works. The sun and the green and the, and the thing and the transfer of power. And boom, you get a working PC. You know, I've seen some people put, you know, in their That's PCs, science. they'll put like a little like, Funko mean... Pop or something. And you know, that'll be in there. And uh, apparently oh, in the yeah. future, we're going to be putting in full terraria. All right. Nice. I love it. Let's get some fish in there, you know, swimming around. Hmm. Let's take a look. I've over actually here seen a couple the... of those. And th those are those are wild. The fish tank like builds. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Whoa, here we go. What's that on the side there? Is that an audio uh, mixer? Could be. Wouldn't be surprised. Granite He's heavy granite. mouse. You <laughs> <laughs> listen to us. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's on me. That's And he actually didn't make it, it out of granite. He went back and put gra granite. is actually my favorite one to use to build with so far in Minecraft. I love granite. You see soundboard 2.0 there. This nice. keyboard has gotten a little bit of work done to it. What's over? What is this? A, look, an LED bar. It looks like we have a speaker. Here, let me put the. Uh, Might be a soundboard. Let's put the sound Ooh. back on. Yep. Hit us with it. Oh, this is the Jumanji theme, right? You're a master volume solo. Yeah. Anything? I don't hear anything yet. It's your master volume. Master volume. Oh, is my master volume? Ah, oh, there you go. There we go. Wow, okay. Is I this... was expecting something way better, but <laughs> is this nope, what Minecraft is. sounds like? I don't I don't it know. Is, <laughs> it is back to the it's back to the thuds over here. But still <laughs> absolutely popping over here on this setup. But 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 what we were worried about was the chair. If you look underneath. Yeah, this is only has a stool. Huh. That's really, really low. Mm. So it looks like scaling that might come back to bite him. But look at the detail that he's put into the rest. I can definitely yeah, see. Oh, look at this. Uh, maybe that's like a stepping stool for little children to be reaching the top of the desk because that thing is way too tiny. It's like a headset there. <laughs> Heads might might have that's rushed nice. that headset a little bit. It looks it it it, it looks like it's not um. Even on both sides, if you come out, yeah. Come out to the true. right, scroll over. Nope. No, it is. Mm. Looks like it might be. No, no, that's <laughs> definitely off a little bit. No. A little bit off. 
but that's you okay. Know, I mean, you only have so much space on the right, but yeah, yeah, so much space, but so much time right now. This as time is expiring as we speak, it has officially reached seven twenty Eastern. Yeah, all yeah, well, right. I think time might be up, and judges are going to be making their final calls here in a second. Uh, I think we'll be bringing them on and and seeing kind of what they are most impressed with so far on these this finalists. So they'll be picking uh, one winner, two runner ups here. Oh my gosh, look at that mouse. <laughs> oh, finally added a tail, finally added a tail. Finally added a tail. Uh, here's what we are going to do, um, is we're kind of just slowly going around here. We're actually going to go to a quick ad break, and when we come back uh, after the ad break, we are going to be hearing from our judges, like Excelian just said, to see who is going to be our winner we're gonna give the judges some time to uh come up with who their winner is gonna be and, and their two runner-ups and uh, their reasoning for their choice uh we would like to hear from them so we're gonna go to a quick ad break and when we come back here you're going to be able to crown our winner to see who's taking home that amazing prize pack you've been watching the aces elite games as part of the aces pc diy day stick around because we want to be able to uh celebrate our best builder here in this Minecraft challenge. We'll see you right back here in a little bit. It's time. Time to win. To take your shots with West Lag. For that, you need Elite Gamer. Available right now on cox.com slash gamer. Improve your gameplay with up to 32% less lag. Experience a more predictable connection. Raise your game. See the difference for yourself. Live in the moment with a real-time performance dashboard that optimizes and tracks your connection to put you in control. Elite Gamer is included with panoramic Wi-Fi at no extra cost. Don't waste another millisecond. Download, sign in, launch. Go to cox.com slash gamer. Download and dominate. The ROG ScreenPad Plus is an expansive touchscreen that is seamlessly integrated into select gaming devices. It gives you all of the advantages of a second screen wherever you go, revolutionizing gameplay, content creation, and day-to-day -day productivity. To enhance your experience, ROG has also developed a suite of intuitive controls and apps that make using both screens together seamless. App Switcher allows you to quickly swap tasks from one screen to the other, so you can shift gears and multitask faster on the fly. Add lets you put your favorite apps on the ScreenPad Plus Quick Launcher for faster access. Apps opened through the Quick Launcher will automatically open on the second display. The View Max function allows you to display content across both screens at once adding a new dimension to your full screen experience. Organizer divides your ScreenPad Plus into two or three zones to maximize your space. Apps dragged and dropped into the shaded blocks snap into position. You can also transfer your work from one screen to the other with Task Swap. Tap the Swap button on the ScreenPad Plus launcher to change your focus instantly. Set up Task Group to automatically open up to five apps on both screens at the same time. Take snapshots of apps you use together frequently and load them all at once with a single tap. Tap the App Navigator icon to manage all of your open apps in a scrollable list view. Finally, Quick Key lets you create custom hotkeys to trigger complex commands fast. These hotkeys adapt to any app you use, letting you create custom shortcuts for gaming, editing media, and producing streams. The ROG ScreenPad Plus gives you the flexibility and power to reimagine your workflow. Let us know how you'd use a second display to take your game to the next level.
Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. We are just about ready to announce our two runners up and our winner of this Minecraft build challenge here as uh, you know, part of the Asus Elite Games and celebrating the Asus PC DIY day. We had some amazing competitors come in, build some phenomenal things, and we're really excited to be able to show them to you. But our judges, they're just a little bit indecisive. They're, uh, they're trying to, they're taking their sweet <laughs> time to figure out they who they want to, uh, who they want to take home this grand prize. Let's talk a little bit about that prizing pack again, before we announce our winners, let's go ahead and uh, pull up that slide and Aquaman break this down. What the winner of today's build battle is going to be getting. You know, those deliberations have been long and there is a lot on the line. So the anticipation right now is through the roof as there is a substantial difference in getting not just top three, but from first place to the tie for second and third, a massive difference as first place is going to go home with a huge Asus ROG package with a power supply, 3080 graphics card. 3080 graphics card, exclamation point Woo! it, bold it, underline it. You can just throw that on there. Uh, you've also got the motherboard and the uh, liquid coolant. CPU cooler in there in that package. And then you've got the Meta Threads uh, merch pack of a hoodie, shirt, mask, and hat on top of a $250 gift card and a $250 gift card on the Meta Threads website. Happy holidays. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> Quite literally, go get the good luck, have fun gear with that gift card. It's my favorite hoodie Ooh. currently in rotation. And that's just the first place. Second and third, also going to get that merch pack, hoodie, shirt, mask, and hat from Meta Threads. And that's what's on the line right here. And that's what these judges are going to be picking. They're going to they're, they're gonna be, you know, between the three of them, picking who's stands out amongst the rest. And then who's going to tie for second and third. Out of the six builders that made it to the second round, Dandro, that's what's going on here. And that is what's on the line. Thank you for that absolutely glorious breakdown, Aquaman. Uh, before we hop into uh, our judges still deliberating, let's talk a little bit. Excellion, uh, you know, we're all here because of the PC DIY day that's been going on all day. Uh, it's been the theme for our builders tonight uh, over and over and over right. again, you know, between their first and second round. Uh, it maybe explain to some of our viewers who are just coming in, what is the Asus PC DIY day and uh, what's going on? Well, uh, DIY is an acronym that means do it yourself, and PC is an acronym that means personal computer. <laughs> so you put them together, it's personal computer, do it yourself. Uh, Asus is not an acronym, actually, that's the name of the company. But wow. uh, the Asus PC DIY day is all about uh, you guys, the, the techies out there, or the potential techies who want to start creating and building your own PC builds. Um, uh, if you can drop a link into the chat of the Asus PC DIY landing page, it has all kinds of information that you need to know about how to, to go about building your very first PC if you haven't before, or maybe some tips to further improve your PC building experience. Um, there is a, a, some special giveaways going on. There's you know two RTX 3080s on the line as well. Ooh. And uh, if you want to go on their socials, go go follow uh, Asus ROGNA and, and all the Asus social media on Twitter and, and Instagram, et cetera, and they will have methods for you to enter these giveaways on those sites and uh but yeah check out the, the the landing page for the pc diy it has all kinds of cool stuff and i encourage you guys to do that and uh yeah that's what this this day is all about and minecraft is the perfect game for building uh, and building your own pc because you are quite literally building in minecraft and that's what this whole challenge has been about wow yeah i mean it's been awesome to be able to kind of check in all day see all the different things going on all the different resources and uh, i love to see asus being one of the uh companies that's really pushing forward and kind of showing people that i can't tell you the amount of people i've talked to who are like building a pc is hard and i'm like well it's probably not as hard as you think yeah. uh you know and thankfully asus is one of those companies that making sure that it is still uh very uh easy and, and one other product that we do yeah. want to talk about speaking of asus uh of, of helping out you know is is uh the Zephyrus Duo laptop they have. This thing is just an absolute beast. We're gonna show you this little video here while we talk about it. The big thing of this laptop is this screen pad plus here. That is that you see popping up right now. That's a 14 inch ultra HD 60 Hertz secondary display. Tilts up to a 13 degree angle. You can open up apps. 
You can drag them down there. And Asus has even worked with some game developers to allow that little uh, screen to be an extension and give you some information while in game. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, you can see here, this display is a 15 inch display that you can get in either a 4K Ultra HD at 60 Hertz for you know, maybe content creation, if you're a creative working in, in, in video uh, and animation editing, or you can do a full HD 300 Hertz for gaming. I have a monitor that I spent money on that doesn't even do 300 Hertz yet. And yet Asus is out here putting out laptops that can push 300 Hertz, which is absolutely mind blowing. To me, it's it's out here. They're just creating a new class of Ultrabook, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, and it's really, really nice. And another great feature of this is that when this screen pad plus is up, it's actually gonna give you more cooling into the computer as well. So it's gonna stay nice and quiet. It's gonna stay nice and cool. And it is going to just absolutely run beautifully because let me tell you what, this thing is powerful and capable for heavy loads, both work or play. Because powering this device is the 10th gen Intel Core i9 processor and NVIDIA RTX 2080S graphics card. And just as a little heads up, the unit can also be configured with a 10th gen Intel Core i7 processor instead of the i9. If maybe you don't need all of that power there, you can make that swap out yourself. So really great stuff coming out from Asus. Uh, you know, even in maybe this more, you know, out of the box laptop, you still have plenty of options that you can uh, you know, tinker and select to be able to really make this thing yours and be able to uh, have it, you know, have it run in the way you need to. So, you know, we love the, I love this thing. This, the Zephyrus Duo looks absolutely insane. And uh, it's definitely going to be good for any creative or content creator or gamer out there for you. So definitely go ahead, absolutely. go look at it, go check it out. I was gonna say, it actually is a perfect rig for streaming. And I, you know, streamers will have their gaming monitor and then they'll have their streaming monitor with all, you know, their chat and, and OBS and things like that. You can put all that stuff right there in that little panel below and have everything available to you. It's just what what a cool, like, like little techie feature for your laptop. And if let's say you're on the go, you have to go to a convention, maybe when 2022 comes around and conventions are a thing again <laughs> and you got to go to your hotel, but you can't stream because, you know, you, you're not at your home, but you could just, you know, pick up the, the Zephyrus Duo and, and that's your streaming rig. Like, that's it, man. It's fantastic. It's gonna be, it's it's super good, but it looks like our judges have made their decisions. So let's go ahead and let's bring in our judges to get them to tell us their decisions of, uh, you know, who our runners up are and who is gonna be taken home first place. Let's get us that way they can hear us. Hello, 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 judges. I hello. hope you all yeah. have a yeah, great time being, uh, being deliberative, making sure that you chose the, the best person out here. And I think we are, uh, we're ready to, to start rolling through on uh, who is going to be our two runner-ups and who is going to be our victor. Simbi, tell us who is going to be our first runner-up today. Okay, so first and foremost, I want to let you guys know, you guys all did, like, amazing. I don't play much Minecraft, just Minecraft Dungeons, but you guys make me want to jump into it after we're done here. Um, everything was, like, you guys did amazing, but the third runner-up is going to be Speedy Bullet, which yours was amazing. You have no idea how long it took us to pick a third because you guys were, you guys did really, really good. Um, the overall aesthetics just flow together in this setup. Um, in the PC, it has all the components. Um, the GPU is there. It was in some of the other ones, it was kind of hard to see what was inside of the PC. Um, but in this one, it was like clear what's inside. Um, and everything's visibly shown. You can see like the clear case outside. And you can see everything inside it. It's just, it's a really good build. And everything's just well lit up there. So that is our third, our third place. Awesome. Uh, you know, Butter or Zach, do you guys have uh, anything that you'd like to say about maybe why this uh, Speedy Bullet was uh, your choice for maybe this uh, third runner-up? Uh, I'll go uh, first. Uh, oh, sorry, Zach. Something... Thank you. Uh, something about Speedy that I enjoyed a lot was that um, the computer, like Simbi said, was really great. But also the very top of the computer, like looking at the wiring, 
So seeing the wire, like cable management from the computer on the top going upwards to the monitor and the mouse and all the lights was really smart. I really enjoyed that. Uh, the, the little light on the top was kind of cool to represent like a, a ring light. And then he has like, I think, Minecraft on the monitor because of the two people on there. Kind of gave us like a, a 2D vibe. Uh, so I like the aesthetics a lot. And it was very well done. I thought it was really well. for Because uh, there's a lot of good uh, builds. And I was very impressed. Uh, but mm -hmm. just the little small details just was over the top for me. And what about yeah, you, Zach? And I think I'm on my end. I think uh, for the most part, it's going to be... Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, for the, for the most part on my end, I would say what both judges already hit on is that, you know, the PC, he had a lot of the components in there. Aesthetically, it, it looked, uh, you know, the, the desk as well as the components he used inside the PC, they matched with the same color scheme. And uh, I think overall, just, you know, it came together really well. Um, but I think there was a few different items that he could have did uh, inside the build that would have made him stand out a little bit more than the other contestants, and ultimately um, you know, is what uh, made us decide third place for him. But overall, I think it was a great build, and it was very hard. It was very hard to choose here. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for that breakdown. Congratulations to Speedy Bullet for taking home that third runner-up spot. Now for number to our second runner up uh, i believe this is going to be zach breaking down uh, and telling us who is our second runner up and uh, kick us off in uh in why yeah so for for runner up as well uh grass sneaky or sneak grass sneak uh his build overall was insane uh he's got the rgb lighting going, uh, well, actually, he's got the RGB lighting in his build, uh, which was actually done really well. He also took into consideration the components that are inside the build there. Um, overall, the aesthetics of the build is um, you know, very pleasing as well. And then I like the fact that he added sound to his build, so I'm not sure if you guys could hear it on stream, but uh, he's got kind of like the beatboxing going with his aesthetics at the top, and then the RGB keyboard colorway, if you kind of go diagonal across it, the stone actually makes it give off kind of this wavy pattern effect. So I think overall it, it tied together really well and you know it's one of the reasons why we kind of you know, decided on choosing this as a, you know, a runner up in second place for, for in our eyes. Awesome. And uh Butter, why why did uh you know Grassy Snack here take uh the second runner up spot for you? Um, likewise, what Zach said, I think it was brilliant. I really love the, how I was able to use RNG, or it's RNG, uh, uh, LGB, or whatever, it, the coloring, the coloring of the, of the PC. I RGB. can't, you know, acronyms are hard. Thank you, thank you, uh, RGB. Uh, I think it was genius. The way he did it with the, uh, the redstone was really smart. The pattering was great. Uh, and then being able to connect that from the PC to the top with his computer and the monitor was really smart. I really enjoyed it. With the uh, the little red glow on the on the side, uh, but like uh, Zach said, the keyboard was really good with the uh, the I guess you could say the pressure plates on the uh, the keyboard it was really good. Uh, I think I like the little sound with the speaker was kind of cool, kind of showing like how he has audio coming through mm -hmm. as well, and uh, and the little stool next to it was kind of cool as well. Um, so all of that was really well done. I thought that was brilliant on how he was able to get all the colors correctly, and it just the aesthetic of it was really well done in my opinion. And finally, what about you, Simbi? Yeah, so they pretty much covered it all. Um, he had an overall, just like the aesthetics were there in his um, PC itself. It was just very well detailed. And I know when we were looking at everybody's, um, there were definitely a few that stood out and his was literally so good. Um, just all the details in the PC and the keyboard and the music, which... We couldn't hear, but Zach was freaking out about um, and how like the music notes were moving. That was just very creative. And again, I've played Minecraft a couple times and trying to get like a diamond pickaxe was difficult for me. So don't at me chat. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is like so impressive. There's just so many things I could say. It's, it's really, really good. Good job. Awesome. Well, Thank you guys so much for telling us about who our two runners up are. But now comes the moment of truth. 
I believe this is going to be Butter telling us who our winner of today's Minecraft build challenge is going to be. Butter, kick us off. Tell us who is taking home this grand prize pack. All right, so after insane consideration and all the time we spent uh, looking through all the builds, everybody did a great job. I'm very proud. Every build was unique. Uh, but one that caught all of our eyes, and I'm pretty sure Chad could agree on, was our first and our winner, Daddy Mo underscore. He did an insane job with the table, his desk, and the PC. Uh, as you can see, the PC, he did a tree nature uh, case, which was insane. And the reason why I thought this was insanely creative was that you could actually see inside the computer. And um, he did a little twist. Um, usually in computers, there's water cooling. But he did lava cooling, which is kind of cool because that has to relate with Minecraft. Because Minecraft, you could use lava as a power source, which is nice. And the way he was able to showcase... The lava getting transported into the computer was brilliant with the trap doors. It was very, very pleasing, and the colors was great. It was vibrant. I love how he has some uh, sticks of ram in the very back. Uh, you can see uh, towards the end where the, uh, the vines are showing, and you can see that there is a GPU card installed as well. I thought it was brilliant, and it was very well done. Uh, so the PC case was, just blew our minds. It was very, very clean, and I love that the parts were very... Uh, uh, I guess you could say popping out to us uh, and then with the keyboard and mouse connecting with the the, the buttons and the layout was insane I, I thought it was very 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 pretty and I think it was just very well done and I'm pretty sure uh, Simbi and Zach can give a better explanation as well on why they thought it was a uh, it was a really <laughs> good movie. yeah Zach uh, go for it tell yeah. us why uh, I guess uh, I go you know, first I, I thank you Yeah, I, I think uh, Butters hit the, the nail on the head there. But I think, you know, it's PC DIY day. To go along with that, I, I think this was truly, you know, a PC DIY in the full extent, taking into consideration of the aesthetics. You know, one for that kind of uh, tree build um, that really flowed was overall desk design. Also has, like, the custom liquid cooling inside there with the lava, which was absolutely amazing. You know, he was going for the RGB aesthetic inside there. I, I like the fact and what he did with the RAM, and the, the RAM actually in the back there is actually RGB, which is insane. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, overall, it's just really well put together aesthetic and, and design and follows, you know, what we want for PC DIY overall. So, you know, I'm super excited for him to win his surprises. And, uh, again, it was, a, it was a hard choice uh, across the board when we were judging. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, what about you, Simbi? What were yeah, your so reasons for, me, for uh, picking here? Yeah. <laughs> so um, just from the first round, um, right away, like he stood out to me and obviously all of us here, um, just from the desk and all the details right off the bat, I knew like when it came to building his PC, he was going to like be super extra with it. And yeah, he right when we saw him building like the water cooling system and then it turned into lava we're like wow like that right there just it's going to be hard to compete with that but we still like everybody else was impressing us too but just our eyes kept just staying with him and we kept just like looking at his pc the whole time um just so many components inside the pc just easily visible and just everything tied together so nicely um he did an amazing job and I'm very excited for him being the winner and congrats. Definitely, definitely deserved it. Awesome. Well, thank you huge so much for that explanation. Yeah, huge congrats uh, to Daddy Mo awesome. here for taking home the dub. We're, we're super thankful. Uh, but I want to say thank you guys real quick, our three judges, for coming in here and judging our competition all day. I you know, it sounds like you guys had a, a ton of fun. Uh, let's just go down the line. Simbi, you know, give me your thoughts overall uh, today on how you think the uh, the build challenge went and PC DIY day overall. And uh, maybe what was uh, some of your favorite parts of today? Yeah, so I think just the experience overall, again, makes me want to play Minecraft and gives me like so much respect for everybody, like putting in so much time and effort and 
the fact that they can build what they did in so little time is so mind blowing to me. Um, I think it was just really cool seeing them build like their setup and then just showing what they could inside the PC and really just expressing themselves there. Um, I think it was just really fun to be a part of. Thank you for having me be a part of this. Yeah, of course. And uh, what about you, Butters? Oh, man, this was a great event. Uh, so thank you guys for inviting mm -hmm. me. It had a blast. But I think that the build was insane. The, the way that Minecraft is, allows people to use their imagination to whatever extent they want is just a beautiful thing. And being able to see everybody's builds be unique in one type of way, whether they use a certain color or they have a certain idea, which is a great time. And I think everybody had a great creative voice here. And it was just a blast being able to see all these all these different perspectives of what their ideal uh, PC build is and how they could use, you know, Minecraft as a tool to build their own PC. That way in the future, they can make their own in real life. So I think that was a great opportunity for them to be able to build their own PC in Minecraft and use it uh, for the future and get a reference of it. And I had a great time. It was really fun being able to go back and forth seeing who had, you know, these builds going on who added, you know, this certain color or who didn't add this color and who was able to uh, rewrite around that. And it was just a great time. I had a, you know, a blast and uh, definitely looking forward to more of these. So thank you guys for having me. And uh, thank you to everybody in chat who was watching and those who have participated. It was a great time. Of course. And finally, Zach, obviously being from uh, Asus itself, how do you feel that today as a whole uh, went for you? Yeah, no, I think it went fantastic. We appreciate, uh, you know, my other two judges here, um, as well as you guys for, for casting event. But, you know, most importantly, we appreciate the community coming out and everyone that participated and interacted in chat and just watched the live stream all day today. Um, you know, we hope you guys took away, uh, you know, some lessons on how to build a PC, had, uh, you know, had some enjoyment, uh, you know, learning from our influencers. I just had fun uh, overall watching the community tournament here. So again, we, we appreciate it. And, you know, we hope you know we hope to see you guys for uh, you know some future tournaments and some uh, fun events throughout the year coming up here for 2021. Awesome. Well, thank you yet again. Thank you to our three judges for coming in here and and you know helping us determine who was the best builder today. We're gonna say goodbye to them as we get ready to wrap up this stream yet again. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for being here and for uh, helping us out. But for right now, let's bring it on out and let's uh, let's talk me, Excellion, and Aquaman uh, about what we got uh, going on here. Fellas, it's been a, a wild couple hours here as we've watched some amazing creations get created right in front of our eyes. Uh, Aquaman, I'm going to start with yeah. you. Give me your overall impression. Give me the, the hype. What were you absolutely digging today? You know, just to touch on a couple of things that our judges uh, said, which was what they were able to do with the time allotted was sensational. You know, given, given someone who's put a couple hundred hours into the game and still couldn't pull off a 20th of what they were able to today, and that's on a good day. <laughs> so that 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 should tell you, you know, it, it, how much respect, especially from the outside looking in, that you can have for people that play this game at that level and can do the things that were able to be done today. So shout outs to the builders today for putting on a show and for, you know, going into it, looking at some of those builds, getting inside the minds of those judges and, and outside looking in, seeing how, you know, it looked like the most creative person won today. And, and you know, some of those other builds, yeah, they were really good as far as capturing just kind of a, a normal streaming setup. But I think that that creativity is what separated the pack. And that's what Minecraft allows. So Minecraft allowed that creativity. Builders came in, put their imagination on the board and did some crazy things. So it was awesome. Thank you to Asus for putting this entire event together. I've been using their products in competitive gaming since I got in. I've been using an uh, ROG laptop right here. I've been using that for, for three years. I've had this monitor since 2013. I don't even know. It's been going back so Woo. long. But their products have been man. powering competitive gaming for a long time. Asus V... Oh, I, I bought like 30 of them. VH2 with V238H monitor is one that I used an awful lot. W wonderful fighting game monitor back in the day. One on this, really lightweight. I have it sitting right here. Asus, Asus thank you so much for, uh, for making these products. They've made competitions like this a whole lot easier. And those are my thoughts on the day. It's been awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, Excellion, as a member of the ROG stream team, 
you know, I know we had, you had some members uh, in the, in the uh, you know, competition today, as well as, you know, got to cast alongside some of your uh, team members here uh, for mm -hmm. the judging. Uh, give me your thoughts. Well, how did you feel today when, did you feel that this, the, our, you know, uh, competitors really got the, uh, got the feel of uh, PC DIY day and really took it to heart? I think so. I think that as you can, you can definitely tell when someone's a true gamer, when they can throw together a, a great setup. But you know, it's not even really about the fidelity of the setup itself. Uh, as Aquaman mentioned, it's a lot about the creativity here. And that's kind of what we're trying to foster is with with DIY and do it yourself. It's not just like, you know, like, yeah, you want the, you want the basics of how to build a PC, but at, at its core, Doing things by yourself is all about creativity and freedom of expression and things like that. And that's what ROG and I think Asus is trying to foster here in this environment. And so the, I'm glad that the winner was, in my opinion, also one of the more creative builds, having that foresty look and having the lava as the cooling source because lava is a source of power in Minecraft, as Butter had mentioned before. And I think that Asus putting this on is a really great example of how we should all try and seek to be more creative in our endeavors and not just, you know, follow a bullet pointed list boom 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 do this 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 and this and while that's exactly. not terrible to do especially when you're building your first pc i do recommend doing that but as you start to get the hang of it you you learn how to do things by yourself and be more creative with some of your methods and uh i encourage you guys to do that as well so thank you uh asus for inviting me to host alongside you dandro and also uh, aquaman it's been a pleasure and uh my rog stream team members Vinny b and Simbi, uh, and my good friend Butter, and obviously Zach, who is the brand marketing manager for Asus ROG. It's been a, a huge pleasure. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for uh, being here alongside me, uh, helping, uh, you know, talk about all these amazing builds that we saw. I know, I'm just, I'm going to reiterate that sentiment that everybody else has said. The, the, I did not expect to see this, you know, even fidelity or this amount of uh, of builds that we saw here in just this amount of time. This was insane. The fact that we saw some great gaming setups. I loved how everybody interpreted the theme a little bit differently. All like to add their own little touch to it. It was really, really nice to be able to see that. We had some very talented people. So number one, I want to thank everybody who came in and participated, obviously through our qualifier week and in through uh, this week. Uh, in our event today because uh you were all insanely talented nobody should feel ashamed this was really tough i know our judges uh for them to pick our top three uh to you know our two runner-ups and our eventual winner so uh huge shout out to everybody who participated also a huge shout out to everybody who tuned into our event today want to give a huge thank you to all of you uh because this is why we do this we want to be able to create create great entertainment uh, for you guys and especially be able to celebrate our uh, you know PC DIY day uh, today we couldn't think of a better way to wrap it up than with this build challenge uh, lastly or additionally I want to thank everybody in the back for helping make this run smoothly it's not easy to get Minecraft as well as like you know six of us all in here at once so uh, you know huge shout out to them for making this run smoothly and last but not least we want to thank Asus for putting on this event for uh, throwing in some of the uh, the prizes as well. Of course, our uh, also sponsor uh, Meta Threads as well for throwing in some stuff into that prize pack there uh, as well. But with that being said, that is all we have for you today for this Asus Elite Games and this Minecraft build challenge. Yet again, congratulations to Daddy Mo and all of our other contestants for participating today. But until next time, I'm Dandro, that's Excellion and Mr. Aquaman, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day. It's time, time to win, to take your shots with West Lag. For that, you need Elite Gamer, available right now on cox.com slash gamer. Improve your gameplay with up to 32% less lag. Experience a more predictable connection. Raise your game. See the difference for yourself. Live in the moment with a real-time performance dashboard that optimizes and tracks your connection to put you in control. Elite Gamer is included with panoramic Wi-Fi at no extra cost. Don't waste another millisecond. Download, sign in, launch. Go to cox.com slash gamer. Download and dominate.
It gives you all of the advantages of a second screen wherever you go. Revolutionizing gameplay, content creation, and day-to-day -day productivity. To enhance your experience, ROG has also developed a suite of intuitive controls and apps that make using both screens together seamless. App Switcher allows you to quickly swap tasks from one screen to the other so you can shift gears and multitask faster on the fly. Add lets you put your favorite apps on the ScreenPad Plus Quick Launcher for faster access. Apps opened through the Quick Launcher will automatically open on the second display. The View Max function allows you to display content across both screens at once, adding a new dimension to your full screen experience. Organizer divides your screen pad plus into two or three zones to maximize your space. Apps dragged and dropped into the shaded blocks snap into position. You can also transfer your work from one screen to the other with Task Swap. Tap the Swap button on the ScreenPad Plus launcher to change your focus instantly. Set up Task Group to automatically open up to five apps on both screens at the same time. Take snapshots of apps you use together frequently and load them all at once with a single tap. Tap the App Navigator icon to manage all of your open apps in a scrollable list view. Finally, Quick Key lets you create custom hotkeys to trigger complex commands fast. These hotkeys adapt to any app you use, letting you create custom shortcuts for gaming, editing media, and producing streams. The ROG ScreenPad Plus gives you the flexibility and power to reimagine your workflow. Let us know how you'd use a second display to take your game to the next level.